Or just come over If you ever feel like it's all so jover, just come over, hop into the stream at twitch.tv slash Hasanabi. Live almost every day from sunny West LA, I'll cover daily news. So tune in now, see what I have to say. Blast off, blast off. If you're unhinged, prepare to take. time boss makes a dollar and i only make a dime that's why i watch the stream when i'm on company time like now i'm probably in the chat right now get it hassan is streaming How unhinged can one chatter get? Don't ban him, mods, there are new pets. Show me the light and set me free from this black pill reality. Can I find hope? Can I debate for this top of the hour break? Boss makes a dollar and I only make a dime. That's why I watch the stream when I'm on company time. Boss makes a dollar and I only make a dime. That's why I watch the stream when I'm on company time like now. I'm probably in the chat right now. I hope everyone's having a fantastic evening, fantastic afternoon, fantastic pre noon. No matter where you are in the world, it was all biker. This is the broadcast coming to you live from sunny, not for too long, but sunny California, Los Angeles. Folks, we're live and alive, and I hope all the boys, girls, and MBs are having a fantastic one because today's a beautiful day. Today's a wonderful day. Today is Monday, Monday, Monday. That's right, folks. It's Monday News Day. And I am early, and I am right on time. That's right. We are early. Today, this actually literally 11 just now, and there's a reason why I'm early, and that reason is because it is the motherfucking eclipse, folks. It's already happening. It's unfortunately cucked out here because we don't get to see the total eclipse. Um, You know, living in uh, Los Angeles and all, it's a beautiful place to live in, 
but unfortunately we will not be able to see the total eclipse we are seeing a partial eclipse 50 percent eclipse here uh at uh approximately 11 16 but the rapture is upon us ladies and gentlemen make no mistake hallelujah the rapture is upon us ladies and gentlemen reporting from texas bro there is storms okay okay uh don't know what that is but anyway um texas is right at the peak but it's cloudy and we can't see shit yeah i heard insane eclipse takes tiktoks have been all over my for you page don't worry Sorry, i want you to save those i want you to save those because i want you to send them to me i want you to save those and send them to me which we will be going over in a second now of course um we got we got a pl eclipse watch but it's pretty funny because like we also have uh like the eclipse watch obviously while we're like fucking around with the eclipse like that shit doesn't change for uh you know everyday joes we got if you guys want to see we got currently landscaper watch going on in the backyard because monday morning is when uh the landscapers are there to like blow a couple leaves around and and you know because i don't really have real any real uh here you guys want to see what, lo what it looks like right now i have it i have the irl stream ready to go Is that real loud? I don't, I can't, I don't know. Is that hella loud? What the fuck was that? That's what's going on in the backyard right now, which is pretty funny. I got a, I, I got a homie coming over. Um, and he's bringing us glasses. And why did you set that up? That might be the funniest bit you've done on there. Was it loud? I don't know. I mean, it's fucking loud over here. Anyway, um, he's literally blowing three leaves around. Why do you pay for this? I'm rich, dude. That's how it works. Anyway, um, nah, you'll never breathe the grifter allegations. Yeah, I don't really give a shit. Whatever. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Bro, bro, spun the chair, dude. That's fucking awesome. The peak of the eclipse is at 11 11. No, it's at 11 16. Anyway, um, where the fuck is this guy, bro? All right. <laughs> Getting paid to walk around and play pretend. Dude, I'm not going to lie. Kind of. Because I don't have any real... I don't have any real landscaping needs. So the real landscaping needs that I do have, uh, homies out here don't actually fucking work on, if we're being honest. Um, you pause in the stream to go look at the eclipse. No, I have like, I'm going to walk up to the backyard. I have the IRL camera set up. Eclipse time. Brandon's America. The CERN machine is live. We're staring directly at the sun. Um, Trump talks abortion Israel Israel pulls out of certain parts of 
Gaza to get in to gear up for Rafa invasion and more news, more conspiracies like the red heifer shit I've seen. Drake apologizes number of days after dissing KDOT. And more. Get in now. Okay. Kai, okay. My buddy's here. What's up, Mo? Bro, are you ready to fucking look at the sun directly or what? Do you have your are, do you have a bathing suit on right now? No. Oh. Oh, you were just like, dude, you look yacked. Yo, come show, come show the come you can sit down if you want. Yeah, you're you're allowed. Way. Wait, hold on here. Go ahead. This is my second appearance. For the camera purpose in the chat, can you explain what you use for your setup, specifically the IRL camera? No. Um, Mo is the only motherfucker I know that like will literally. He just loves trends. Like he's just so trendy. I mean, he does this for his job. He does marketing. So like influencer marketing. Influencer marketing specifically. So he's like very <laughs> tapped into the trends. And I knew if there's one guy who will have the glasses, it's him. And I was right. You had one, an extra one yeah. for the ladies. And I was like, no, don't. don't. This is for the fellas. The eclipse is for the fellas. The eclipse is for the fellas. So fellas we're going to be so we're gonna be doing that. We're going to be... Dude, I can't see shit with this. This is just yeah, it's dark. Because like, it's actually blacked out. Like, think about it. You're staring right at the sun. You okay. That's very dark. Um, So we're going to do that right now. It's, a, it's already 11.05. We're like almost at the peak of the eclipse. Uh, uh, I have a camera set up in the backyard. Full exposure. Okay. Is at uh, eleven sixteen. I think eleven right? twelve to eleven forty nine. Oh wow! Yeah. Eleven forty nine. Really? We get we get forty eight point six percent coverage in Los Angeles. I saw that, and I feel like that's whack as hell. Honestly, like that's just so lame. But it will be kind of opium at least. Like I, because when I think of the eclipse, like first of all, here by the way, we blasted off already, chat. So. Uh, let the people know. Get the get the people in here. Get the people invested. Um, when I think of the when I think of the eclipse, I think of this. You know what I mean? Like I think of uh, what's the planet from fucking oh not uh, where they where the um where, not where the Harkonnens live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the yeah, Harkonnens yeah. live. I forget the name of the planet. Like I I just I want it to be this. Are you curious about the unique visual stones? Okay, I'm not curious about the unique visual stones, bro. You know, they shot it in the IR and in infrared. Yeah. Yeah, I want it to be like I, this is what I care about. You know what I mean? I I care about this. I care about like I I want it to be like like I, I, in my mind. I feel like <laughs> I feel like this is what like here. I'll just show it to you like this. Here, I'll just <laughs> like for me. This is what the 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 for me. I think like the eclipse is the most opium Earth gets. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like we turn into the fucking Dune Two planet. Like get it. And I feel like let's get the sun. Yeah, I feel like that's you know, like that's what I want. I want it to be as opium as possible because I feel like that's sick. Um, this is a we can make a fan edit with that track. Yeah, that's what I mean. We stare at the sun on Gady Prime. Is that what it is? Is yeah, that Gady Prime? By the way, in the book, this is my way of saying I read the book. Um, so sick. Once he kills those those guys, those three people, he cuts their heads off, which they didn't show in the movie, which would have been gone way harder. Dune two, the scene that makes people pass out. Why don't they just have like edits of Gady Prime? Like I'm so annoyed that there's just like, oh here, Gady Prime fan cut. No, this is the Harkonnen area slowed and yeah, because Gady Prime was one of the coolest parts of the entire movie. Like in a movie full of cool parts, I feel as though like in in the first Dune, the Sardaukar, like the uh, like yeah, the yeah. the yelling the was the coolest throat, part. The throat live Naza stream is happening live, so this is in Mazayan, Mexico, where oh, they're already fucking hitting it. Should we? All right, let's just go outside. Yeah. Let's, let's go, just go outside. Let's go goon at the sun. Sticking out 
Wow. So again, totality okay. here in Mazatlan, Mexico, the first community in North All right, America let's do it. to Wait, that's pretty the sick. moon completely I mean, that looks way sicker than what we're about to see. It's Mazatlan fucking right sunny now, outside. It's safe to remove your well, all right, hold on. I'm going to swap. I don't know. All right, we swapped it over. Okay, we're back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you're ready for this or not, but I feel like I'm ready for it. I mean, this is 1109 officially. First of all, I'm looking up at it. Uh -uh, Kaya, don't go over there. I'm looking up at it, and honestly, I'm, I'm raw dogging it right now with these glasses, and it don't do shit. Why did everybody, why does everybody always say, don't fucking look at the sun? Like, why do they always say that? It's, like, old, it's an old wise tale. Like, I feel like it's fine, bro. It's fine for my eyes. Like, it's good for my eyes. Like, I'm making it, my eyes stronger, yeah. I think. Andrew Huberman says it's okay to look at the sun. Yeah, well, for he... 10 minutes every and day. And he has, like, fucking eight girlfriends, so he obviously knows what's up. <laughs> okay, here. I'm gonna look up now with the fucking glasses. Oh, that's sick. Okay, that's actually cool as fuck. So, chat. I'm gonna show you guys this now. Apparently, I need to use, like... March was saying I need to use like a. Can you not fit? That won't fit over the lens, will it? No, it won't. Oh, it does. Hold on. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the lens over so you guys can take a We got to figure it as well. Okay. Do you, have, uh, do, you, do you have a streamline? Uh yeah, I'm gonna look it up right now. See if it's fine. It should be fine though. Fiend, fiend, fiend. Fiend, fiend, fiend. Yo, you should, you should play that. This is like, we need, we need, we need a soundtrack for this. You know what I mean? Are you ready, chat? Are you a copyright trick? That's fine. Uh, okay. Can you see? No, you can't see. They can't see you like this. Okay, wait, hold on. I'm gonna try. The chat has to have a solve. Um, I'm gonna fucking try it again. Oh, they say we can. Oh, they can? Yeah, yeah. Wait, you can see it? Yeah. So, okay, look at the sun. I don't think they can see it, bro. Are they saying that? Can they see it? Yeah, we see it. Bro, why is there an ad playing right now? That's crazy. Is it on my stream? Did you? Oh my god, bro! You're not even subscribed. That's crazy. Two ads? Yes, they can see when it's small, so they want to zoom in. Oh, you can see it. It's like a little dot. Yo, that's sick. It's like a tiny little dot. Yeah. Is there a way I, you can zoom at all? No, I don't think I can. Oh, okay. I don't think I can zoom in with the camera. I was worried that this was going to like, I mean, I can zoom in, but like, I don't have a telescopic lens. You know what I mean? I wonder if this will like burn a hole in the camera. Yeah, I think I probably just broke it. I mean, this is a fucking expensive ass lens. Like, we'll see. Oh yeah. There um, it is, chat. 
You can kind of tell. Wait, when you look up at it, does it look kind of like that? No, nah, I mean it's it's pretty. It's a little bit more visible. Yeah, you can You, we have. You can focus it at all. What's the focus? No, this is autofocus. Oh, it is. Yeah. Honestly, hold on. I just flipped it. I'm gonna look back at it again. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna, you, can, you can notice that it's. I'm gonna give it a little peek. The problem is, guys, we don't really have any fucking. We don't. It's not cool here. Like, it's not. We don't. We're blessed with like phenomenal weather and shit, but we're unfortunately not blessed with, with uh, the uh, good eclipse views. Oh, dude. But oh, yeah. Oh yeah, we're almost at full coverage. I mean, uh, full coverage from our perspective yeah, is forty-eight yeah, yeah. percent. So I'm when when I oh, look here, up yeah, at it, yeah. That's it. That's it. That's like that's it. Is the max? Yeah, that's the max. Yo, that's whack as fuck. That's not even a crescent, dude. It looks like Pac-Man. <laughs> it's just like it's a bit of a dud let me tell you chat a bit of a dud but here I gave it to you this is like very old school back in the day when we used to do like dumb shit like this every now and then you know what I mean obviously we're gonna do the news today don't you fucking worry about it I'm gonna talk about my personal news and everything just wanted to show you the eclipse real quick it is pretty funny because like people freak out about this stuff when they're like, oh my God, you know, uh, the rapture, there is a fucking earthquake. Joe Brandon did this. China, China's got them earthquake weapons. You know, they talk about this kind of stuff. And it's like, bro, they fucking figured out when eclipses were going to happen in medieval times. <laughs> okay. So like the average, the average TikTok brain addled conspiracy loving boomer who hates Brandon, you know, like an American patriot is literally stupider than a fucking medieval person okay like the average medieval peasant who at least like was a little bit tapped into the science i guess would have better understand better understanding of how the fuck a world works and how this shit happens yeah this is whack as fuck it's a bit of a dud uh you know what yeah what's your what's your take well look when i was little I got to see a full one. Full one. Yeah. When it's full, you get like, it actually gets 20 degrees colder, and it's dark. Yeah, it's just not as. Where'd you see the full one? When I was in Ohio. Ohio was yeah. blessed, dude. We're it's all, blessed. dude. It, the the eclipse only hits like the shittiest parts of this country. Whoa. It's like, it's like Texas, Ohio. What do you mean, <laughs> whoa, dude? Wait, yeah, go ahead, defend Ohio. Not even the TikTok zoomers defend Ohio. They say skibbity toilet. <laughs> they say skibbity. They say phantom tax. Like I'm, I'm gonna look at it with my regular glasses, bro. People that say don't look at the eclipse are wait, fucking. Wait, do it with regular glasses. Can you? No, you can't see. Oh, okay. But like, but like, it's just I don't. I never understood that. Wait, I always. Like this. Hold what? It, like hold it off your face a little bit. Wait, it, wait. It's actually a little bit clear. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's the same shit. Um, I was, I always thought that like during the eclipse, it's like scarier. Like yeah, the sun well, is no, more powerful you do or like something. Full, the full one, if you're in the path of totality, it's actually like freaky. It'll freak you out. No, no, no. I meant like, um, like I always heard, like Kaya doesn't even give a shit, bro. This is her first eclipse. She doesn't even care. She does not have that like animalistic instinct that. No, her cycle's off because of it. Is it? Yeah. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just fucking making shit up. All right. Well, that's that's uh that's what we got. That's the. That was the eclipse portion of the broadcast chat. That was a bit of an L. Uh, we'll go. Look at like I, I've lost the sauce. You have content. I don't. No, I. I mean, this is this is content, brain. I'm fucking streaming the eclipse. Kaya, come on. Let's go, baby. Wait, why are they saying F?
<laughs> dude, dude, okay. Here, this is the, this is, the, this is dude, this looks so yeah, much sicker. Wait, wait I want to see, like, like, if it's clouded over. But I want right. to see so the people's the view that we're getting right now, you won't be able to see that if it's clouded over, but you will have effects going on. In Sacramento, right? can't see it at all here, so thanks. So the temperature will drop. It'll still get darker as well. It's already getting dark here in Kerrville. I mean, if you look at the sun when it's covered, your eyes will be used to the dark. Then when the sun comes out, your eyes will take in all the light at once. I feel like this made up. I guess a sun gooner. Even if it's cloudy where you are. And Hi, uh, great follow up. You know, we've got place. Halloween Ghoul on YouTube who wants to Hi. know again will the temperature change during totality? Please. Which I know you mentioned that it will get a little bit cold, cooler. Yes. But do you know about how many degrees we can expect? Yeah, you know, it depends on the location, the humidity, multiple factors. But look at these nerds. Where, why do we get like a swarm of locusts? So, depending where you are, and like plays Holy fuck, from the there's 859,000 people watching the NASA stream right now. Bro. And Holy I mean, I'm just these nerds are popping the off of totality that we have. We don't even have 10K eyes. in here, so Chad. Get your fucking game up. Pick your game up right now in Torreon, Mexico. And again, I know folks said that this we'll is see my equipment to be able to operate it because it's going to get very, very that's dark. Right. That's right. And very so quickly. Oh, see that. Yeah, that's four what... minutes. We're going to be, be experiencing that. Yeah, I that'd hope be cool to see. that we can hear the environment around us. I yeah, want to see like how dark it gets. Start chirping and behaving differently. That happened when I was in Santa Fe with the annular eclipse. A little I bit. did blast off chat. Um, so I'm expecting more of that only amped up because of the Why totality are they so of high? today. Because right, we so got like, much, the, Dennis, like the preview version. We didn't get the full. Yeah, we got like we didn't get full it coverage. barely. The moon yeah. barely touched its ass, dude. It's fucked up. Why'd they go quiet? What's happening over here? Like I think this? it's like Niagara Falls. Yeah, it's like, I guess it's crazy out there. Oh, full coverage, full coverage, full coverage, full coverage. This is the time to do it. So let's watch that as we go through. I think you can look at it now when it's in full coverage. You can, you can now, if you're at, if you're at a full coverage place, you can literally look at it now without your glasses. And so Gina too, you know, how um, we're in a, we're in a higher cycle. Uh, solar cycle right now. How many years, you know, is that fluctuation? Right. Or can't so you? The solar cycle goes on for 11 years when it peaks you in can't? activity. I thought they said you can. The no, latest you can. predictions There's are, a period are that we where you will can. reach that wow. maximum like sometime this year. Do not do that. Okay, everyone is so funny. Dude, you're fucking ridiculous. I literally just and looked so, at the I've sun. I don't know why you guys, like, I think people greatly exaggerate, like, looking up at the sun. It's one of those things where, like, you do it, but you don't know why. Like, when your dad would yell at you if you turned a light on in the car and thought like, and like yeah it's dude just, oh my god those, like, that's such up, a yeah my things, dad did that yeah. all the time <clears throat> no one knows why you should do it yeah you can't have the light on in the car at night and yeah. it's like all right bro why why the fuck not you know what i mean it's time to start asking questions chat you know what i mean they tell you you can't look at the fucking sun and it's like i looked at it dude, you can fine. look at the sun because i think what people are afraid of is the power that one can gain from staring at the oh sun. here this is it when you look at the sun normally your eyes can't take the brightness so you avert your eyes almost immediately but when there is an eclipse there is brightness the brightness is lower making it possible to look at the sun mm. but the ring around this still emits light making it possible to burn your retinas your cornea will get irreparable damage it's overtime dog i've literally looked at the sun i just looked at the sun yeah i did too i don't understand why people say that you can't like look at the sun at all did, do I, did I fuck my eyes up now? Like, is that what happened? You shouldn't though, but it's fine. I think people exaggerated a little bit. Oh, you can view the eclipse directly without proper eye protection. Only when the moon completely obscures the sun's bright face. Thank you. During the brief and spectacular period known as totality, you'll know it's safe when you can no longer see any part of the sun. Thank you. It's from the NASA website. Yes. Yeah, suck right? my dick chat. chat. Turns out NASA fucking <laughs> on top, dude. NASA knows better than you, obviously. You will fuck up your eyes. It's not overblown. I think it's a little bit overblown. People in the Indianapolis <laughs> Motor Speedway. It doesn't even feel that dark out here. What is going on? America I don't think it's fully, looking up together to the pretty, sky. Absolutely. Like and tell window. me, is this your first eclipse? It's not my first eclipse, but it will be my first totality. Let's see how NMP Law is doing. Partial eclipses. 
but there's something Whoa, mystical that's opium and as hell, dude. and in some ways yes. unifying about a total eclipse. Yeah, see, they're in Texas. They're in Texas, they're they're in Texas and they still have really light, you know what I mean? Like, weather today. So as a former astronaut, we know that sun science and space weather are very important to keeping our astronauts Bro, safe. that's very... What is um, space weather and why do we care about it? What is NASA doing to study it? Yeah, that's right. It's actually very important. It is of concern for astronauts who are in space because they experience the radiation of the sun that comes from solar Didn't even wear Rick today? I, do, I am wearing Rick. But what do you mean? I'm literally wearing Rick Owens right now. Life here I got on Rick Earth. on. I got Rick it on. It impacts the upper reaches of our <laughs> atmosphere called the ionosphere, which is an electrified part of our atmosphere flex. that is a conduit for communications. Um, it's, it's critically important. It can even affect power grids. And of course, if you ever have seen the northern lights, you've seen the effect of solar weather. So, but really the focus for today is where that solar weather starts, and that's in the corona, the sun's oh, yeah. atmosphere. It's very unusual, and we don't exactly know what's it's happening because chat. the sun's atmosphere is millions of degrees hotter than the surface of the sun. So we are hoping to learn today more about how that happens and why yeah, they that say happens corona, baby. so that we can that's better right. predict those it's solar happening. flares and those things that impact us here on earth yeah that's all extremely important and something that we're learning a lot today too yeah the Pam, sun's got covid now it's fucked up it's today. all kinds thank of you. fucked up brandon did As this we've learned solar eclipses are very important to learn for many many reasons we have radio telescope operators who are studying the eclipse today for this very reason let's take a what? look at that oh. work when the moon blocks the sun during a solar eclipse, there is a noticeable impact on the sun right now? atmosphere, known as the ionosphere. These changes can affect radio communication, including amateur radio, also known as ham radio. Ham radio is a way you can talk to people all around the world. I agree, bro. Look at this. This is it. Look, look, look. There's basically no difference between these two pictures. I refuse to be a sheep. <laughs> Up to the sky, it bounces off of the electrified layer of the sky back down to Earth, where you can talk to the person on the other side. During the 2024 Fact Total check, Solo it is always eclipse, okay to stare directly into the sun. Source, thank you. Radio <laughs> to transmit it's so radio funny signals. that everybody, like, I, myself included, I was definitely many... more libbed up back then, but, like, I fucking was like, I can't believe how stupid he is for staring at the sun. And now I realize, like, be, becoming <clears throat> an adult is recognizing the bravery Trump demonstrated on that day. He was a brave boy. Yeah. He was such a brave boy. He, does, he did what My we eyes all... do hurt a little bit. Maybe I shouldn't have looked at yeah. the sun. I'm going to be honest. I have, actually haven't been able to see for the last 12 minutes. I, I probably fucked up a little bit because yeah. my eyesight does hurt a little bit. And I am still seeing like a spot uh, where the sun was, I Find think. really magical. To learn how you can participate, follow Do NASA Science on X. But like, honestly, it's kind of cool. It's like I have a sun with me at every given mo any given moment. You know what I mean? It's almost like uh, I have a bright spot in my eyeball. Look at this production. This is impressive. I like things that happen every once in like 20 years, and there's one guy who's been waiting his whole career just to have his like moment of fame. Yeah. It makes me happy. There's Daryl. I mean, because of Murat, I, I follow the latest, uh, you know, a lot of the launches and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's always funny when we look at like, like a massive rocket that they uh, successfully launched after working on it for like 20 years. And I like to judge their celebrations because, like, I'm like, bro, getting dark. You don't even have like a like a sick ass celebration that you that you prepped yeah. for this occasion. Like, yeah, it's like, this like you knew, like effort. You knew this shit was gonna happen. Yeah. No, they're just chill like that. Like, they don't need the fanfare. It's all in the day's work at NASA. Here's a TikTok explaining why you shouldn't look the at it. The problem is that not only will it be darker, so you could. Yeah, I'm really sick of the anti-sun agenda. Yeah, people just like, don't want you to fucking get the power. The for longer. Because it's darker, your pupil will be larger, and so it's going to let more UV into the back of your eye. So even if you only stare at it for a second, it'll still be more damaging than staring at the sun on a regular day because your pupil will not shrink down and block out some of the rays. So just yeah, these are the, don't these look, are the same people who don't look like at you it. can't own a monkey. Yeah, and you're like, why? And you're like, well, yeah. because because they're, they're too cool. Yeah, they're crazy. That's what it is. Like, it's like having a little guy with you yeah. at all times. It's you know, it's the same. There's just there exists lore of people who don't want you to have fun. 
Yeah, no, no, actually. No, it's like the same people that say don't drunk drive. It's like, bro, Come I on. drive better. Like, I need... I need a little bit of alcohol. Yeah, cigarettes I get, don't make you look cool. Yeah, Come I on. get I get anxious <clears throat> when I'm driving. So like that alcohol helps me. You know what I mean? It it helps me focus. And also because like I'm inebriated, I have to focus more. Yeah, you lock in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I can't be on my phone, for example. Like otherwise I'm yeah, gonna again, be on my this phone. Is all a part of the anti fun yeah, agenda. Yeah, only did you know only twenty percent of the crashes that happen. Are drunk drivers so it's actually the sober drivers that we should be focusing on i think it's people on their damn phones yeah is what it is especially yeah. here in la a little road soda for the nerves nothing wrong with that that's what i'm talking about like it's fucked up most accidents are sober drivers they don't fucking talk about sober <laughs> drivers at all they're always trying to stop our fun there's a amazing video on the internet of a <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that was quick dude <laughs> There's an amazing video on the internet of like a small town, I forget where it is, um, reacting to a ban on drunk driving. I, I, it's on YouTube, but it's incredible. And they're like, Oh, yeah, I've like, seen it. We don't we understand watched it. why we can't just drink beer and drive. Yeah, no, like, I, I've, I've watched it. What about my ride? On stream. Look at Gaia. She's such a beautiful girl. She is. She's Apparently, she's gotten bigger. That's what. Most dogs, I can't tell just by looking at them if they're a girl. Kaya, I can tell. An eclipse is worth marveling at, but don't be silly, folks. Play it safe and wear protective Enjoy eyewear. Enjoy eclipse, but play it safe. Don't be silly. Every Joe Biden video I, I see, I'm like, that is the 30th cut they had to make take of that video. Because yeah. you know they had to edit it 500 times. It's just, uh, okay, Joe Biden is a motherfucker who shouldn't be looking at the sun. I feel like a, a lot of the elements uh, can take him out at any given moment. Yeah. So, like... It is valid for him not to look at the sun because I think he will die if he does look at the sun. I am a little disappointed. I I didn't see like full blown darkness anywhere. Well, I thought in my mind, I legit thought it was gonna be like <laughs> it's just too cloudy in yeah. Eagle Pass. I I thought it was going to be like like Dune Two. You know, all of a sudden it's going to be infrared. Yeah. Wherever the fuck people are, they're just going to, it's going to, it's going to look like infrared shot. When I was, Sarda cars. when I was younger, I, up until like age five, I thought that Canada was black and white. So like everything in Canada was just black and white and only the U.S. had color. Why did you think that? I don't know. It was just a thought. I was like, and then I went to Canada and I was like, oh, they have color. That's crazy. That's an insane. That that is insane. You were a dumbass. You were Sorry, a dumbass baby. You were a dumb baby, bro. That's a big ass L as a child. All right, what are they looking at? They're still see. This is what I mean. I'm I'm watching them. American. I'm watching them watch it, and it's like it's buddy, too Kevin, bright, hey, bro. Come on, buddy. I, you can't be out here. You're come on. Get you look straight at the sun because you're dumb. Are come on. These, people? The these are my friends in oh, Texas. Gotcha. Okay. This is uh, Nick, Malena, Peaches, Streamers Sweer. watching Streamers. Wait, yeah. my, boomer, my boomer brain is like, oh, we're so fucked. But they look so wild. Drake. No, Drake. That's, that's so fucked up. Give him like 10 minutes. The totality isn't here yet. Yes, it is. No, it passed. Wait, have we reached totality? No, we did. Okay. Oh my God. I'm pretty sure we did. Is it good now, chat? I keep on just looking at the Five screen. minutes, the guys. Prime's in the chat. It's like, you only have five minutes left. It's like opening up. Now you're not going to need them in the afterlife. I will take them all. I will take them all. Bro. I thought, yep. I thought the totality check. happened already. It depends yeah. on location. Oh, How yeah, the right. fuck is Thank Eagle Pass at full blown? And, and like they yep, are not cool, that guys. far away from Eagle Pass, and they're at like one. this level. Primes and harvest time. That's all I want to see wow. is harvest time and primes. Oh, God, That's it. That's it. Yeah, we're gonna harvest the primes. Let's go. It's gonna be covering the whole ass sun. It's about to break once this is dead. Run the hey guys, for the prime Juco. In you. four minutes, I can't wait to see because I want to see if it gets like dark over there. You, you know what I mean? Faster spam, spam it. Is six minutes in Texas? Yeah. I've heard full totality is a myth, and the yeah, sun just go. fakes it. Oh shit. Probably feels we're good as like fuck for the moon though. Guys, the yeah. you, spam, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like um, buddy, when you're cold, you get like a warm. Yeah. Like your booty hole is just straight up, right on your Just getting caked with fucking sunlight. Crazy. Or whatever you feel. It feels a little wild. Wow. Dark right now for CNN for Kerrville, yeah, Texas. Nice fake. Yeah, that's CNN though. It's probably fake news. Is that what the fuck is this? 
Three minutes, 45 seconds. I don't know if I can look at this, M. Hud. What did you send me? Three minutes, 45 seconds. If you're having fun, please hit the follow button. Would appreciate that. Who's your friend on stream? Just some guy. <coughs> this is my street twink. Bro, the eclipse is just a lie. The sun turns off because he's too shy with so many people watching him. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, do you not feel the still air? Oh. Yeah. It is still in the air. Yeah. Does it feel? It doesn't feel weird here at all. No. Did it feel weird at all? It just kind of feels like it just kind of feels overcast. I feel like stronger. What? Yeah. Wow. I don't. I feel weaker. I feel, Three no, I, feel no like, I get my power because I get my power from the sun. You get your power from the moon. It's true. You're more feminine right that way. That is true. That's what it is. And I'm locked in with the moon. Mods, delete the clips. Eagle Pass 220 oh, months. It's like oh, yeah, it is getting darker. Yeah. yeah. Whoa, that is kind of sick. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God. And there's still three minutes. Oh my God. That's sick. Yeah. That's okay. That's actually fucking cool. That's yeah. actually cool. So is it gonna be completely pitch black? Or maybe we're just so used to it being like. No, I, no, it it no it's changed. definitely getting dark. Uh, yeah. Oh my god. Look how dark it is. Oh my god. It's definitely not getting opium though. I will admit. I I thought that it was gonna be like infrared camera style. It's not opium at all. It's just kind of dark. Wait, is it opium so. like oh, all the kids the who defend Kanye in those comments? Is that opium like is like King Carson is is Cardi. Playboy uh, Cardi. Okay. Some of them do defend Kanye though, because like gotcha. Cardi still oh uh, collaborates like with them. When people dress like gay vampires. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, vamp life. Yeah, exactly. It's going away. We have like two Why minutes. It's so dark here. Wait, Nick, you have to go full cam with that. Wait, what the fuck? Are they memeing or is it that dark right now? No, that's real. Okay, that's getting kind of opium. Okay, fair. I'm smoking that kiss. Oh my god. That's way cooler than what we had. Oh my god. Oh my god. Dude, some people in Texas gotta be pissed. Like, they gotta be dying. I would be like, am I dying? I'm dead. Oh. Oh. Bro, it's dark as hell. They need night vision. Is there, um, are any of those other streams showing it like that? Nick, look. Nick. Not really. They just, they always got like. Guys, look. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god, god. it's pitch black! black. No. Look at it! It's fucking it. pitch no, black, look bro! No, oh my god, you're, you're still not supposed to look at it. That's crazy! Oh, that's look at Carl! I wanted to take this moment and say okay, that this moment that's was so brought to you by White Claw. I wish we had that, bro. What the fuck? We got Eclipse Edged. We didn't even get the full experience. I'm recording video on my iPhone. You're hashtag adding my iPhone. <laughs> Nick, I let Nick, I let the camera eat it for that a second. There is wild. one. Do it, do it, do it. Do it. <laughs> are, you, are you willing to make this tech sacrifice? Yes. Is All right, this is, this is validated by Nick. Oh! I don't feel that shit popped, popped off, dude. I myself than watch any more innocent children die in the name of my dreams. Sia! Sia, put it back on! Watch your phone, make sure you don't show it. Put it back on, it's flying it! Bro, what the fuck are you doing? I'm playing Griffith's Dream, all for one theme music. Wait, it's okay, it's okay, take it off. Okay. They're freaking out, Jesus Christ. Yo! Hey, what if the sun just exploded? This is so That'd weird. be sick. I mean, we'd all die, I think, but <laughs> yeah, we would. Yeah. if you are in somewhere without totality, amazing. you can look at the Don't shadow of a tree and see moon-shaped shadows. It's the same yeah. principle as how amazing. a pinhole camera works. Dude, who is this, like, as dude, Aztec you know in your this chat? <laughs> just fucking like nerds, dude. We got a lot of nerds <laughs> in here. <laughs> who's, this, who's this guy in your chat who, like, lives off the land and knows this? Uh, dude, this is wait, wait, I see a star. No. Wait, is that that? Yeah, no, they're he, no, they're doing that. That's Seer. That's definitely Seer doing that. One hundred percent. Someone in your chat has an abacus right now. Well, my name left. Copernicus. Co Copernicus is in the chat. The end times are here. The eclipse will decide the next god hand. It's over. Good shot.
Uh, yeah. Dude, Kerrville is still dark as hell, man. Oh, Texas. It's getting dark in Texas. No, uh, Mesquite, it was, I think it's no longer as dark. It's like getting light again. I don't understand why they are so dark. They're in like total darkness right now. Wow. Which is kind of crazy. I can try and make it a little easier for me. Imagine peasants in medieval times watching this. I mean, I think they probably figured it out pretty quickly. No, I think they just like killed themselves. I mean, I, yeah, if I was like, if I had no idea what the fuck no was going was on, yeah, if I had no idea what the fuck was going on, I'd be like, this is the scariest thing yeah. that's ever happened. Oh my God, like right. life as I know it is ending. Me lord! <laughs> me lord. The grain harvest was not worthy of a king's bounty, me lord. I apologize. Please fuck my daughter. <laughs> that's what I would do. It's freaking out. Do you hear it? <laughs> <laughs> Chinese know about the eclipses this so, so yeah Chinese are nerds bro they fucking figured out like gasoline 5000 years ago okay give me a goddamn break we don't we don't care right now we're talking about dumb westerners okay yes bro they were literally doing fucking like light posts and shit before Americans before westerners in general before the anglo saxons could figure out how to wipe their asses okay I don't see it they had gunpowder and shit. I don't see it though. Bro, they were able to predict eclipses since Egypt. This is known, even the Roman. No, I know. That's why I said like. I mean, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty easy to figure out. Yeah, it, that's why I said like uh, the the average TikTok, uh, like the average TikTok brain holes that are that uh, that like the average American has yeah. makes them dumber than a fucking ancient Egyptian peasant you, you know, know what you i mean can, you can predict the cycles of a two-body system which is what we live in with the with uh the sun but you can't in a three-body system which is what the three-body problem is based off of oh wow you are such a nerd bro and i, I god damn yeah. you read books and you read books, yeah, I do and read books. You are, i'm reading lord of the rings right now this is this is like the, here's this is what happens when i have someone way gayer than austin on you know what i mean yeah, he's like reads a a book a month or some shit. Or no, do you read a book a week, bro? Come on now, a book a month? That's light work. Chat. A guy called me in tech support and asked if eclipses mess with his electronics. That's so funny. Twenty twenty six Iceland or Spain eclipse stream. Books. Did you see that book? Daytime. Yikes, ban him. I agree. Technically, the Earth and Sun is an N-body wow, system. It's just time. that the Sun is far away and the dominant wow. gravitational source for the Earth. That's wild. That was so cool that your solar lights turned on. This was solar MX. Wow. Oh, that's sick. That's kind of creepy. That? Do that again. That was fun. No, How about no. that? Ladies, that was way inside? better than your eclipse? Yeah, it was. We, bro, we literally, I told you guys, so I showed you the trajectory. Two books in four days? That's insane. Like, I have a full-time job. No. Well, guys, I don't know if I could make mix that in, unless you're just a really fast reader. That was a great. Uh, Man, these people have cra they have. That was a great stream, oh, dude. Forty nine thousand viewers. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, they're in the heart of it. Shout out to Damn. Sierra for fixing the camera and SN for showing up and the ladies for cooking and shout out to me for the great original yeah, idea that only I had. Um, <clears throat> if you're new, please Enjoy follow. Everyone then MP7. Thank you. Everyone follow the stream. The uh, appreciate that. Hey, Damn. Is he ending is well. stream? Thank you. Glad to see the whole crew back really together. Yeah, I'm gonna thank everyone remember Twitch Prime. Thank you. Shout out to the no. best wife in the world, Stinnabean. Yep. We love Stinnabean. You look hot. Uh, feel Me? free to pause it there. No. Uh, NMP law. Um, Not you, bro. Yeah, yeah, pause the eclipse. Right Does he have uh, remember, makeup? Guys, White Claw 0% alcohol. Check it out. Everyone, if you can do me the favor, just click in the link. Oh the damn, chat, he has a fucking out. White Claw sponsorship? Uh, Hassan, How come you never get me fucking sick ass sponsorships like this, bro? Hassan, everybody say hello to Hassan. Hello, I've gotten you great hello. deals. I've gotten you hello, a deal you before. Hello, too, buddy. Appreciate that. Follow if you're yes. new. Yes, it was a really uh, good deal. Yeah, what happened to my eyes? Uh, when you look at the sun too long, this happens to your eyes. You get these uh, these rings around. Look at S-Fan 2. So be careful. Check check the mirror here. Wait, what? No, Wait. no. he 100p <laughs> put fucking yeah. eyeliner on. See, see anything you want to say? Um, guys, on Friday, fine dining with NMP and Sear. Yes. Going to another nice restaurant. Um, Why don't you do cool stuff like that? I do. Lifetime. It's just that when I do cool stuff like that, nobody gives a shit. You guys just like watching Hassan sit in his chair then? Yeah, no, they like, uh, no, my, my, my chat only likes it when I'm in pain and angry and they are always in pain and angry as well. Hell yeah. 
Like there was a point in time when we were a community when we would do like fun yeah, shit. Yeah, that's the reason I, I can't get Hassan to come out. Yeah, when we would we would do like dumb shit all the time. Mm -hmm. We would do like dumb silly shit. Like today, what I just did is like peak. I used to do this kind of stuff all the time. Yeah. I would just be like, oh, something cool what is about happening. Coachella? No, Speaking I'm of, not. That was I'm fun. not gonna go to fucking Coachella. There ain't no fucking. Did they like way. when you went and you're like streaming and shit? I couldn't even stream it really. Um, I I couldn't really I couldn't really stream it at all. It was like hard to stream. Plus, it was it just wasn't worth it. I mean, there are things that I could do that are cool and worth it. Damn, this kind of looks fire. What the hell? Well, that is sick. Um, I feel like the secret to being a big Twitch streamer is just like screaming really loud. I think that definitely plays a role in it for sure. Screaming nonstop. It's not even a joke. That's like a big, that, that is definitely a. And having like kind of a shitty mic or just like. Yeah. When you scream. That's my problem. My mic is too good. Yeah. And I don't fucking <laughs> yell as much anymore. IRL streaming is hard because the connection makes it genuinely painful to watch. Yeah, I know. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, <laughs> But is Mo going to Coachella this year? Are you going to Coachella? I might. Oh I my might. God. You're um, fucking whack, bro. For some events. I got to shake hands with all of my content creator friends. Okay. Okay. Your bitch too bad. It's on your mic too good. Yeah. But, um, I, dude, I was just in fucking, I was just in Australia. I was in Australia for like oh, yeah, a, a, a week. You know true. what I mean? And I did some. That's cool. That you like traveling. You curse yourself for 30 years doing that. You're fuck brother. What do you mean? Um, I, I, yeah, I get to travel. I do some fun shit every now and then, but honestly, it's just like. Yeah, people don't um people don't fuck with that. They don't really they don't really like it that much. There are things that pop off though. There are definitely things that you do like that's a lock. Like for example, if I were to collaborate with like another content creator, right? Another like big content creator. Mm -hmm. If I was to do something like Miskiff on Twitch, that's better for Twitch uh viewership. Like people like that more on Twitch than if I were to like bring a cool guest on that isn't on Twitch at all. You know what I mean? Right. Me, for example. Yeah. You're probably losing viewers. Um All right. But I'm gonna I'm gonna get back into yeah. the news now. Do your thing. Thank you, Maul, for coming on. Bye, chat. Great seeing you all. Yeah, this was fun. Um, we're gonna we're gonna move on to the news. Thank you. Do you want your do you want your glasses back? Keep one of you can keep those. Okay, I'm keep gonna them. keep this is a little memento. There's a little memento from the North American eclipse. Yeah. Get your trendy coffee going. Mo is my my um like my insight into what's going on in the world. He's the one. He's the one who knows all the trends. He's an, he's the one that knows like what's popping. Can you close that gate. Just like yeah, you can shut it off like that. That's fine. Pull it by pulling the the circles on both sides, and then pull it up. There you go. Did you see Axel Speed get put through a table by Randy Orton on WrestleMania last night? No, I, I didn't. Speaking of IRL, please watch this. Streamer fucked around and found out. Dude, it's insane how stupid these channels are. NASA was doing 110 screen eclipse and 910 the fucking reporters. Like, anyone cares about seeing the reporters, Lamau? I mean, people do care about seeing, like, what it looks like. In the world anyway y'all missed it are we doing politics today like shut the fuck up dude take a day off okay yes we're doing politics today man it's fucking monday god damn it i hate so many fucking dumb fucks in this goddamn community it makes me so fucking mad it makes me lose my mind dude y'all fucking suck dick oh my god oh my god dude Fuck! Are you gonna crash out again? Yeah, dude, I'm gonna crash out. I'm gonna crash my penis into your mother's pussy again, dumb fuck. Yeah. Why do you fixate on these people? Because they're fucking annoying, okay? They're fucking annoying. Shut up. All right. Um, okay. 
All right, we're getting into it. No pauses, play hell. Shut the fuck up. All right, um, we're not doing that. We're. I'll look at the. Uh, I haven't seen uh, the the exclusive Hamas interview that HuffPo did. Uh, I think that's great. We'll look at I Show Speed and Logan Paul at WWE. I felt bad that I banned that one street, uh, one chatter for like a week. Uh, when he was in the chat being like WWE, WWE WrestleMania is tonight. WrestleMania is tonight. WrestleMania is tonight. WrestleMania is tonight. And I fucking banned them for a week. And then I felt bad about it. I thought about it a lot afterwards. Um, but yeah. Oh no, I, I got the playlist, I think, or maybe not. I didn't get the playlist. But yeah, I want to, I want you guys to send me your favorite conspiracy TikToks from uh, the Eclipse, which we will take a look at later. Okay. Like this. We'll be starting up their particle accelerator on the same day as this total solar eclipse. Now, mind you that this demon face syndrome has just become a thing and people are talking about it. But me personally, I think all of this is tying into each other because the solar eclipse is already a spiritual significant day of these two celestial bodies doing what they're doing. And we both know the sun and the moon has a spiritual effect on our emotions and who we are as a whole. I'm pretty sure that night. So on top of that, you'll also have the particle accelerator and them trying to create. Yeah, you get on time at the WWE chatter, Weeby. A portal to see or whatever they do. They're trying to see how this universe was made. They're trying to figure out the building blocks of how this universe was made. And they're going to be starting that up again on the same day of this spiritual significance total solar eclipse now i'm gonna always call it how i see it i'm telling you right now this person is unironically dumber than a medieval peasant okay this person who has all of the tools all of the access like the bounties of the internet so much information he could go to the local library and read he could ask questions to people okay you could ask a knowledgeable person to learn what's going on. And yet, here he is, unironically dumber than a medieval peasant. I'm talking Neanderthal level, okay? We are operating at a level that Neanderthals operated at in 2020 fucking four. How is this possible? He probably has more information than you about this topic. <laughs> yeah, the demon face topic. People might start seeing demon faces on people after this solar eclipse, after CERN starts up their particle accelerator and get into what they're getting into, trying to figure out the building blocks of how this universe was made. So, yeah, logically, I'm going to think that, yeah, people might start seeing people for who they yeah, are. Yeah, logically, he's he's thinking logically, chat. I don't think you understand. This is actually logic at play. That's it. Actually are. People <laughs> might start seeing demon faces on people. And before you say like drugs are wild, bro, this dude is not on drugs. Okay. This dude is just on TikTok. That's it. This dude is just on modern American existence. It's so much more powerful than just like consuming drugs. Because when you take drugs, unless you already have like some kind of uh, a condition ahead of time, like early stages of like uh, schizophrenia or whatever developing in your mind, the thing is like you're going to do the drug, you're going to fucking pop off for a little bit, and then it's going to be gone. It's going to be done. Okay? That's usually how it works for many people. Unless you have like, I don't know, unless you unlock like a schizophrenic episode or something. Maybe you combined like weed uh, with Adderall and you already had that uh, uh, genetically, you were predisposed or whatever, okay? <laughs> this dude is hallucinating despite the fact that he's lucid, okay? 
or uh, not schizophrenic mania. Yeah. So <laughs> that's the thing. I, I don't think, I don't think these guys are, I don't think these guys are operating on uh, drugs. I think they're sober. Why am I yawning this early? Oh my God. My brain thinks the sun went down. Um, my circadian, my circadian rhythm is fucked up. I think it's the, I think it's nighttime. It's bed by time. It, it, it only makes sense and that's their excuse. Their excuse is, oh, it's a syndrome now and people are experiencing this. No, it's things are getting a lot more spiritual and things are becoming a lot more clear and the veil is lifting. So they're going to come out with some excuse of why people are seeing the truth. Things have been getting a lot more spiritual since 2020 lockdown, and they're trying to gain full control of this natural occurrence and put their own spin to it. Because why is why is CERN starting up their particle accelerator on the same day? Dude, oh my God. Oh my God. I love that they talk about a CERN too. Rare disorder makes people think they're seeing demonic faces like a creature from a horror movie. It's called... Prosopometamorphopsia. Fuck, that's hard to read. Holy shit. Prosopometamorphopsia. And it causes people's, uh, people's faces to be, appear grossly stretched out in demon-like ways. Very rare disorder. People watch too much grim. It's just, that's it, I guess. It just makes people, makes people look demon-like. I don't know. The patient had a history of bipolar affective disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder. Additionally, had a significant head injury at the age of 43. Uh, at the age of 43 years, that led to hospitalization. He also had possible carbon monoxide poisoning at the age of 55 years, which occurred four months prior to the onset of the distortion symptoms. Bro, when, when in doubt... Assume that it's carbon monoxide poisoning, actually. When in doubt, always assume it's carbon monoxide poisoning. Because like a lot, <laughs> so many, so many of these like ghost sightings and like paranormal activity shit is, is just straight up carbon monoxide poisoning. <laughs> There's a YouTuber who had a brain disorder that causes to happen. It happens when your brain is damaged and you no longer recognize human faces. This is why I keep spamming Science Sunday, Science Saturday. Like, I want this chat to not only be politically literate, but scientifically literate. Science is so fucking sweet and awe-inspiring. And it will bring, it will be what brings humanity together. Oh, shut up, nerd. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Oh, let's do science. Lame. No, thank you. Not interested. I'm going to do this thing instead. As this solar eclipse. <laughs> Why? It sounds like some sci-fi shit. It sounds like something out of a movie. Like they're trying. Bro, I'm an actual scientist and that was lame as fuck. Thank you. This is what they don't. Oh my god, bro, there's so many of these. It's so good. It's so good. Uh, go extra measures <laughs> until they fuck around and find out. And then we all doomed. And then and then they mess up the harmonic balance of this world. And that's why people might start seeing demon faces on people and people faces shape shifting and shit. This is just my thoughts. And it's very well logically put, but I'm not gonna say this is this is a solid thing. I'm just articulating my thoughts in the way that I see it and the way that I'm connecting dots. Let me know what y'all think about this in the comments. If you haven't heard about the demon face syndrome, it's going around on TikTok. You can search it. Bro, it's the cra the craziest part is like once people hear about this, they're going to be like, oh, I have it. I feel like we are infinitely more susceptible to idiotic like uh mass mass episodes like this you know what i mean like mass psychosis due to social media than we think we are like mass hysteria is is honestly 
so much more common. You make me feel like a Harvard graduate. This new demon face syndrome is a cover for what's coming. <laughs> if your spiritual eyes are open, you will see demons in people all the time. That's why I can't look at people in the eyes too long because as seer, I see the soul, not the face. Bro, you just described being like socially kind of anxious. It's normal. Most people can't look at people in the eyes for too long. You know what I mean? Everybody's got a little bit of that. Everybody's got a little bit of that dog in them. You know what I mean? If you can't look at them at all, it's like, I assume it's like a little bit more autistic than, than if you can look at them uh, uh, a, a little bit. Right? Isn't that normal? Who can just look into the eyes of another person for like, you know, extended periods of time? That's like kind of weird. Is this where I find out I have autism? No, like, I don't think it's autistic trait to just be like, I can't look into someone's eyes for, you know, an incredibly long period of time. It's weird, bro. It's a weird ass thing. There's also a need to be special. It's like the whole empath thing. <laughs> I think it's weird as hell to constantly look into the eyes of a person. That's weird, man. That's a weird ass thing to do. Anyway, all right. Asking Chad if he's normal. I don't. Yeah, that's a dumb question. You're right. It up. And um, you can also search up CERN is starting their Hadron Collider on this specific day of this spiritual significance. So um, something's going on. Something's and, and going on, guys. Most likely the energies will shift on this realm. Yeah. Let me know what y'all think about this in the comments. Oh, my God. Something's going on, guys. All right, let's do this Don't one. want you to know about manifesting on the solar eclipse. So, one, this is the most powerful portal for change that you will... They don't want you to know about manifesting on the solar eclipse, okay? They don't want you to know about this. This is a secret. I love the presentation. It's always like... It's always like, I got something going on. I got something secret that like nobody wants you to know about. Okay. This is a big secret. It's a big fucking deal. You didn't know about it. You didn't hear about it. They don't want you to know about it, but I'm going to tell you. Ever having your lifetime. And that is because we are splitting into the new earth. Now the rules here are a little bit different. They are not like they were on the old earth. This new earth is about spiritual development and merging with your highest version of yourself. This new earth is all about spiritual growth, spirituality, and knowing thyself. So long story short, we're going into a whole parallel earth. And the reason they aren't telling what? you any of this is because each version of earth has a different version of you on it. And while most of us in a spiritual community, we can handle that. But most people, they lose their minds. This is why this is the most yeah, important. We can handle it. Like this is a, this is a earth shattering truth that will fuck up people's lives. Like normal people's lives, but we can handle it. You know what I mean? Yeah, Earth DLC, dude. Important time that you will ever have in your life because this is the time that you have to merge on with your highest version. If you want to get on the highest version of Earth, the easiest way to do that is to identity shift. And I'm going to tell you how to do it really quick in this video. So the first thing you're going to want to do is find your highest desire or your highest excitement. That is because your highest self lives on that frequency. So even though it's a desire, it's just a carrot on a stick. Then you're going to ask yourself, who would I have to become in order to feel worthy or to have that? And when I say that, I mean, what habits are going to have to change? Which standards are going to have to change? What things don't you accept as that new version of you that you accept right now? Then last, just to keep you on track and to keep your spirits up while you're doing this transition, you have to ask yourself, what does this version of me wear? How does she wear her hair? How much is this genuine delusion on the part of the creators versus painting the 14 year olds who rule the algorithm? No, it's genuine delusion. I don't think, first of all, I don't think 14 year olds are like really excited about new earth. This is a wonderful narrative if you are already an adult and life is shit and you want like desperately for things to get better and you want to believe in a higher power that will change everything 14 year olds don't care about this stuff as much as they care about like i don't know tiktok riz party this is like this is uh this comes from a place of desperation it comes from a place of desperation that only adults have okay when they are like literally desperately looking for an anti-materialist out basically like think about it this way 
Okay, think about it this way. You're an adult. You go to work every fucking day. You're working. You had these dreams when you were younger. They did not get real. You did not materialize them at all. And now you just do this fucking pattern of behavior and you want a coping mechanism because you know that you don't have enough disposable income to buy a $5 a month subscription or a free one in the form of a Twitch Prime at the top of the hour at the Hasanabi broadcast, which means you're going to see a three-minute ad break. So what do you do? You start looking for a spirit bomb. You're like, please, someone give me a fucking sub. Jesus Christ, I need a W in a sequence of L's that have strung along. And sometimes that W comes for you. Like Weasley Little Liar just gifted five gifted subs, allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour, right? And it's just like, that. that is where this kind of thinking comes from. Where you're just like, I really desperately hope that there is better out here that I won't see the three minute ad break at the top of the hour. You know what I mean? Hasanabi had Eclipse talk. You guys know that this whole Eclipse business is just a giant hoax, <laughs> right? Why does he call himself Dark Biden? Because he's going to turn off the sun. Here's Why? The break now, by to the way. distract you. As soon as everybody's looking up and as soon as those lights go out, that's when they're going to sneak in the illegals. That's when they're going to. Okay, dude, this is like, uh, this is a meme. Hassan Abihead Eclipse Talk. How How is this a Hassan Abihead? He didn't even follow me on TikTok, bro. What do you mean he's a Hassan Abihead? Don't open your eyes when looking at the sun, please. Bro, just, just stop, okay? Stop with this like, oh, I'm so scared. Don't look at the sun. Okay, I did it. And yeah, sure. Right now it feels like my, my cornea has a sunspot in it, but that's kind of cool because guess what? Guess what? It's like I have the sun. He stole Hank Pecker jokes. Yeah, there's a really big spot in my vision. It's fine. It's a cool thing. It's like I have the sun with me at all times. Okay? It's, it's not a big problem. Yeah. It's like I'm carrying the eclipse with me everywhere I go. It's like I'm carrying the sun with me everywhere I go. People are so dumb. One of the most watched Eclipse live streams on YouTube is a fake SpaceX stream featuring deepfake Elon Musk promoting a crypto scam, promising 2x return. Currently, currently at 164,000 live viewers. Um, I think this probably is... Uh, this probably has... A, it's probably botted. Honestly. Like, I, I don't think these, like, fake... Uh, streams get that many real viewers i'm sure that there are a lot of real viewers in it too but like look at the live ch Okay, we're back. We should be. 
Yeah, we're back. Fucking Christ, that's so annoying, dude. This is what you get for looking at the sun. I just, I hate this shit so much. Um, yeah, it, it went away for a little bit. It's, dude, look at my upload. You want to see my upload on that? Look at my upload, chat. That was my upload. That's awesome. I love American ISPs. Nothing wrong with it, you know? Just great stuff. Get your eyes checked. Yeah, this is uh, New Earth Me. New Me, New Earth. Upload speed isn't even above the legal limit for drunk driving. Yeah, if I fucking had a couple beers, I could drive like that. Totally legal, above board. That's us, whenever you pose your nips. Funny how these once in a generation eclipses keep happening every five to 10 years. I, 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 bro. I, 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 people are so fucking goofy with it. People are so nutty with it, dude. They're freaking goofballs, son. All right, what is this? 99% of Americans don't know that the upcoming solar eclipse will be the realization of a prophecy from the Bible dating back over 2,000 years. On April 8th, a rare total solar eclipse will plunge parts of. This is AI, right? There's, this isn't even like actually Andrew Tate. I'm pretty sure this sound, this sounds like AI voice. God, it's like hard to fucking figure it out too. Hold on, I gotta pee. into darkness in the middle of the day. The shocking part is this eclipse will pass over eight towns called Nineveh, which is the same city in the Bible where the prophet Jonah warned of God's wrath. Additionally, the constellation Cetus, symbolizing a whale, will be visible during the eclipse, echoing the biblical narrative where Jonah is ingested by a whale before he admonishes Nineveh for its sins. Jesus also mentioned Jonah's sign in the scriptures. In Matthew 16, 4, Jesus draws upon this story. Historically, right before Nineveh repented in the story, there was a solar eclipse called the Bersagale Eclipse. This astronomical event was said to have caused the pagan city to turn away from false gods and back to the truth. Records of this eclipse were also found in ancient Assyrian artifacts, verifying it happened. America has strayed from God and embraced secular values. This solar eclipse very well may be a sign from the heavens that the door for repentance or closing just as in the story of Nineveh in the Bible after the astronomical event occurred. Uh. Okay, it, it it is obviously AI. Andrew Tate doesn't know enough about the fucking Bible to even make a fucking uh, assessment like that, okay? Obviously, it's stupid, but it's also definitely AI. <laughs> the fuck? Am I, am I crazy? I feel like this pick goes hard, dude. Like, I kind of want to fucking post this. Two thousand four GFX is my GFX design is my passion. Serving straight cunt today. This is without the fake chroma added. I like it with the fake chroma. It's kind of mid, not gonna lie. Okay, shut up. Album cover for your new bedroom pop solo project. All right. Um 
we are we're we'll go back to like some of these dumbass conspiracies in a moment but before we continue with these dumbass conspiracies let's get to the real news okay donald trump donald trump says abortion rights should be decided by individual u.s states that's right he came out of the gates swinging after donald trump or at least his team leaked uh a a possible federal abortion ban uh at uh what was it 12 weeks uh he has now gone back on that and has come out with a different approach uh that i assume was a little bit of a test to see how the public would uh see how the public would react i guess they didn't like the reactions of the public so now trump is trying to hit this whole like states rights for abortion argument again which is really fucking stupid but to be fair there's not really anything he can do about it. He's just desperately trying to, uh, m you know, massage the narrative as uh, he, he has these two conflicting forces within the party, within the Republican Party. Two conflicting forces within the Republican Party, the 30% uh, evangelical Protestant base that is like really excited about criminalizing abortion unconditionally. And then the rest of the fucking country that says that that is unhinged and insane. Huh. Everybody understands that obviously this is a deeply unpopular and undesirable agenda. And that uh, everyone also knows that it is entirely the fault of the Republican Party. So they have no out for it. Let's take a look. Well, Trump has said that abortion rights expected to be a key issue in November's presidential election should be decided by individual states. Mr. Trump said he was responsible for the 2022 Supreme Court decision ending a federal right to the procedure, adding that in his view, abortion was now where everybody wanted it to be from a legal standpoint. He, this is also my favorite take because it's such a fucking stupid lie. It is such a funny and such a dumb fucking lie uh, where he was like, every legal scholar wanted me to overturn Roe v. Wade. Every legal scholar from both sides, which absolutely not, okay? <laughs> All the way from every part of the Federalist Society. There's some woke ones in there, folks, and they all wanted it. He doesn't specify a gestational week at which he would ban abortion, but he said he supported exceptions for rape, incest, and to protect the life <coughs> of the mother. Many people have asked me what my position is on abortion and abortion rights, especially since I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, that's so funny. All legal scholars, both sides, they all wanted it. Bro, he looks so fucking bad, by the way. God damn, son. What the fuck happened? He looks like he looks like he burnt a little too hard. He is now officially looking like the rotisserie chicken. He has never looked more like the rotisserie chicken that's been out too long under that fucking lamp. Possibly at Mar-a-Lago. They're serving it in this very moment god damn dude it's too much it's way too much act demanded be ended roe v wade they wanted it ended it must be remembered that the democrats are the radical ones on this position because they support abortion up to and even beyond the ninth month the concept of having an abortion in the later months and even execution after birth and that's exactly what it is the baby is born, the baby is executed after birth, <laughs> is unacceptable, and almost everyone agrees with that. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal... They're, they're killing the baby beyond abortion, post-birth abortion, folks. It's called execution, but the Democrats call it post-birth abortion. It's like, no, that's called a murder. That's a different word for that. Um, he's still running this line. It ain't going to work, big dog. Okay. This whole, look, this whole idea of like, hypothetically, Democrats want to kill your children only works before you actually take legislative action. 
Once people take legislative action, everyone is going to hyper-focus on the action and the impact of said legislative action, right? Republicans can always get away with having incredibly cool, cruel policy prescriptions as long as they don't actually act out on them. When we are living in the post-Roe v. Wade abolition uh, or post-Roe v. Wade decision overturning a, pros, uh, overturning a Roe v. Wade, everybody understands what the fuck's going on. Everybody understands who's responsible for it. Okay, if you live in a red state, if you live in like Texas, for example, and you hear stories about, you know, mothers who are, uh, uh, who wanted to have a, a, a third child, let's say, and they have an ectopic pregnancy and they cannot, uh, they do not have a viable fetus and they can't get this life saving medical procedure. Everybody sees that. Everybody recognizes exactly what's going on there. And nobody cares about, like, possibly the, the fact that Democrats want to execute babies or whatever. Okay? And when I say everybody, I'm incorporating Republicans into the equation as well. Because while many Republicans before the Roe v. Wade overturning would have possibly fantasized about, like, how far the Democrats were going. <coughs> 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 how far the, the Democratic Party was uh, wanting to go with, like, forcible abortions for every woman or whatever, now they have to deal with the very likely reality that, like, their daughters might have to get an abortion, and they can't get an abortion now. From standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both, and whatever they decide must be the law of the land. In this case... The law of the state. Many states... Laugh as much as you want. Nobody really cares about women unless they think it will quite literally affect their close ones. No, for sure. That's precisely what I'm saying, as a matter of fact. Republicans did not care about this issue or cared about it in the opposite direction until it became a reality. And now they're recognizing like, oh shit, maybe this wasn't a great idea. And by that, I mean... People who historically voted Republican, let's say, white college-educated voters in the suburbs that historically voted for the Republican Party that never really considered how devastating it may be to shut off access to a medical procedure that is safe, that is a decision that should be left up to the doctor and the patient, uh, putting the state in between that, all of a sudden made this theoretical reality a very real one that will impact them their loved ones possibly in the future or even now that's it by the way you basically just described conservative thinking it's like kind of sad but it is exactly how conservatives operate the way they operate is, it doesn't matter to me unless it directly impacts me, okay? That's why Dick Cheney was fine with LGBT rights to a certain degree because his daughter is a lesbian. Oftentimes, when you have a loved one, when you're a Republican, you do not demonstrate the capacity for, for sympathy or empathy until... until it personally impacts you, okay? There are plenty, depending on how stupid they are, that will still demonstrate cognitive dissonance. That's why you have a lot of second-generation Latino voters who vote Republican and advocate for staunch, strict, white nativist immigration policies, not realizing that they are the sons and daughters of undocumented migrants, for example, okay? That's why you have a lot of as as long as it as long as you can mystify the impact of specific types of legislation, you will still have a lot of Republicans that vote for policies that hurt them. As long as there's a dream, for example, that you can uh, you, you can massage into the minds of many Americans. What do I mean by this? Plenty of middle class and below working class Americans that vote for the Republican Party do so with the underlying assumption, okay, that they think they are going to make it. 
that they are they too will be millionaires one day. That's why they need the tax cuts. Okay? They don't realize that those tax cuts are not beneficial for them. Those tax cuts are beneficial for the wealthy, which they will never be. Okay? It is one of the most prescient takes of all time from uh, the author of Grapes of Wrath. The idea that uh, socialism will never work in America. I mean, he, he uh, wrote about the, the Great Depression extensively. Um, uh, Joseph Steinbeck. The, the idea that uh, socialism will never work in America because the working class in the United States of America do not see themselves as an exploited proletariat, but temporarily embarrassed millionaires. John Steinbeck? Oh, it's not Joseph Steinbeck. I, I'm so used to calling everybody Joseph Robinette. Joseph Steinbeck. Joseph Robinette Steinbeck. See, I fuck up sometimes, okay? Anyway. This will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks, or some will have more conservative than others, and that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. You must follow your heart or, in many cases, your religion or your faith. Do what's right for your family and do what's right for yourself. Do what's right for your children. Do what's right for our country and vote. So important to vote. At the end of the day, it's all about... This is kind of fucking... This is kind of lame, too, by the way. Just vote. Go out and vote. Folks, please go out and vote. Okay, bro. Okay, Democrat. Kind of sounding like Hillary Clinton a little bit, huh? What's happening there? But will of the people. That's where we are right now, and that's what we want, the will of the people. Well, Michael Scherer, national political reporter with The Washington Post, gave me his reaction. Well, he's definitely been leaning in that direction for a number of months. There were a couple kerfuffles during the primary in which he said similar things about not wanting a federal ban or his campaign did, about... Uh, of Republican voters needing to respect the will of the people. And then he would back off of that because he was in a Republican primary. This is really a political move. He's got an enormous headwind. And actually, you know, Republicans running statewide for Senate have an enormous headwind. Abortion has really motivated Democratic voters. And he's trying to uh, dampen down that issue. He knows it's something that, uh, you know, really threatens to defeat him in November. And he's trying to take away the idea that as president, he would push for a federal ban, even though during his term as president, he did push for a 20 week ban. Uh, and, and members of his party are going to continue to push for a ban. And he's previously said he would work something out. Um, this won't change what the Biden campaign's doing. They're going to spend, you know, 200, 300 million dollars on advertising, uh, you know, saying that the reason in a lot of these key swing states you no longer have the same access to abortion is uh is president trump and roe and probably uh, surfacing some of his old comments in which he did call for basically a ban on abortion i mean at one point and he took this back he even called for um prosecution of of women who had abortions um so th this doesn't take the issue off the table but he's hoping it will reduce the severity of it for himself and I, I know it's very early because this statement has only just come out, but is it likely to... So the reason why he's doing the is a states' rights issue is because he is trying to at least secure, like, win back some of the voters that he lost to the Democratic Party because of the abortion stuff uh, in purple states. Because, like, red states, they're, like, uh, they have their their they have their own uh, you know they have their own perspective on the matter, and he's trying to say like to the blue states you know you can keep your abortion if you want it. He's trying to desperately massage out of this uh, this this devastating predicament for the future prospects of the Republican Party. This is something that I have uh, brought up quite a bit as soon as Roe v. Wade was overturned. And this is at the heart of, this is at the heart of the, the Republican Party's major, uh, major issue to begin with. It's like, it's one that transcends beyond Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a manifestation of it though. He, he is a perfect human representation of like this genuine problem because Republicans have gotten so successful at 
uh, meeting their agendas uh, and, and genuinely pushing forward with their ideology that is oftentimes incredibly restrictive, that they are a victim to their own success. Yes, the dog caught the car, if you will. Dog chases the car, but what happens when the dog catches the car? You know what I mean? Huh. So there, there is a there is a real problem within the Republican Party, and they are trying to desperately either move away from this issue, never really talk about it at all, or or try to, you know, reframe the narrative that like, no, 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 people wanted this actually. Enough people actually wanted this. That's not the case. The overwhelming majority of Americans, as a matter of fact, did not want this. So much so that they fucking despise the Supreme Court because they recognize how undemocratic it is. This is not the will of the people at all. There will be political punishments. Those political punishments have come down already in the, uh, you know, ineffective midterm election that happened for the Republican Party. They still obviously took over the... Uh, they still obviously took over the House of Representatives, but even then, there's another party within the uh, there's another issue within the House of Representatives, which is another Republican uh, principle, the principle of obstruction, um, the perma obstructionist attitude that many factions within the Republican Party are cooking their own agendas in in some ways and making them look very stupid and in a state of disarray permanently. That's why you had the speaker drama that occurred. That's why Mike Johnson personally is still experiencing some of those issues as well, given the way that the, the, the Republican Party is structured. Hard to win those voters back when their middle-class kids can't even buy Plan B safely over the counter. Yes. You know, reduce opposition from potential supporters. So... I, I think it's a complicated question. I don't think we know the answer. Uh, you know, the, the, there is going to be some backlash from the right, from his conservative evangelical supporters who have long supported federal. Uh, I don't think there will be. I'm going to be honest. I don't think there will be a major backlash from the evangelicals. I think they're like pretty happy. Legislation restricting abortion. He's basically ruling that out here. He has previously supported federal legislation. Now, whether those people stay home or vote third party is, is you know, an open question. They probably don't. Um, I don't think this has, you know, it, it, like it, it's a matter of degree. It doesn't change completely the conversation. If you look at a lot of the states where this presidential election is going to be decided, Georgia, North Carolina, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, abortion is very much a live issue on the state level. The only reason it's a live issue on the state level is uh, that Roe v. Wade was overturned, and, and President Trump is claiming credit for overturning Roe v. Wade. So it's, it doesn't take him out of the conversation about abortion. And I think uh, Biden will be able to go to voters and say, look, the reason you're concerned that you or your daughter or your wife are going to have trouble getting uh, abortion access uh, right now is, is that President Trump did this, and, and President Biden is running on a platform of restoring Roe v. Wade uh, uh, on the federal level. This is what Donald Trump said this morning about the thorny issue of abortion. So um, here's also a little bit of clapback from Donalde. Okay. Here's also another, here is also another clapback from Donalde against Lindsey Graham and others in the party. Trump on tr True Social takes a swipe. This is from Jill Coven, the national political reporter for the Associated Press. Associated Press covering uh, Donald Trump's latest uh, Truth Social post, says Trump on Truth Social takes a swipe at Lindsey Graham, South Carolina, and others who have been pushing for a national abortion ban. People like Lindsey Graham that are unrelenting are handing the Democrats their dream of the House, Senate, and perhaps even the presidency, he writes. Senator Lindsey Graham is doing a great disservice to the Republican Party and to our country, he wrote, adding, we cannot let our country suffer any further damage by losing elections on an issue that should have always been decided by the states and now will be. Okay. That's what's going on here. He is reading the room, recognizing that the room fucking stinks. Okay. Seeing how bad it looks and trying to retriangulate the message 
But I don't think it's a salvageable message. I don't think there is a way you can message out of this because <sighs> Americans are not very, Americans are not very smart, as you all know. Okay? Americans are very fucking dumb. And because they're very fucking dumb, there are moments of clarity where they can't be swayed away from their opinion with complex thinking. Okay? What do I mean by this? What I mean is, what you see is what you get. They know that abortion is restricted in red states. They know some of the complications that come from that. They fear that their loved ones might be impacted by it. So it doesn't really matter when you go with this theoretical states' rights approach. Because it already happened. <laughs> if it hadn't happened, then you could you know, massage the narrative. You can fucking say stuff like, oh yeah, Democrats want to kill your children. Democrats want to come to your house and like abort your baby. Okay. But when it, when something does happen, well, they're focused on the thing that's happening in front of their eyes, right? We are no longer at hypotheticals at this point. We've moved beyond the hypotheticals at this point, right? Here's Lindsey Graham replying to him. I respectfully disagree. This is what I think sparked the uh, Trump drama the girls are fighting. I respectfully disagree with President Trump's statement that abortion is a state's right issue. Dobbs does not require that conclusion legally, and the pro-life movement has always been about the well-being of the unborn child, not geography. Now, Lindsey Graham is, is at least somewhat logically consistent here, which is a weird string of words that I never thought I would say. But he's technically right. If you think it's murder, then it's not about states' rights. You want to stop murder. Why the fuck would you be like, yeah, you can do as many murders as you want in California. However, there is an extent to the logic that these guys apply. Because the real ones, the real rabid, psychopathic, Christo-fascist weirdos, the evangelical Protestants that think abortion is definitely murder because life begins at conception— also want to stop in vitro fertilization. They are the ones who also want to stop abortion permanently. They want to make sure that you, that you criminalize abortion, even in instances of incest, incest, even in instances of rape, even in instances of pedophilic rape, right? Because guess what? A life is still a life. That's still a fucking murder. That's still a murder. You're still killing a child. Now, of course, in many Republican states, all of a sudden... They created carve-outs. So maybe, so, so I guess it's not always murder? How did that happen? Why is it not murder if life begins at conception? When the sperm fertilizes the egg. If the sperm fertilizes the egg and that equals life, as is the operational logic for many of these weird Christians, okay, then all of a sudden, why are you building carve-outs for rape and incest? Because if you were logical, if you did truly believe it, you would have no carve-outs because a life is a life, no matter what. But it seems like they're re-triangulating their messaging because they recognize how bad it looks. Okay? Okay. They see how bad it looks. They know how bad it is. Lindsey Graham is trying to, uh, trying to defend this position, but Trump is the correct person in this, uh, in this situation. Trump is actually reading the room and recognizing that like, we need a new way to signal to the crowds that we are not going to be as restrictive. You guys are fucking this up. The state's rights only rationale today runs contrary to the American consensus that would limit light term abortions and will age about as well as the Dred Scott decision. The science is clear. A child of 15 weeks is well developed and capable of feeling pain. I will continue to advocate that there should be a national minimum standard limiting abortion at 15 weeks because the child is capable of feeling pain with exceptions of rape, incest life or the mother. See? I didn't even fucking read down to this point, but here, here, there you go. He's still inconsistent. He's still inconsistent. Okay. 
I'm going to quote tweet this. If life begins at conception and abortion is murder, why are people like Lindsay some murders are okay? It's because they don't actually believe it. <laughs> They just want to limit medical <sighs> of course he thinks some murders are okay school shootings specifically no dude no that's not it of course some murders are okay just look at the hair uh, they're just look at their record on the death penalty. No, but there is no... No, this is an innocent life, though, okay? That's different. It's because they don't actually believe it. They just want to limit medical decisions women can make. And they... Full-blown ban. Um, doesn't have enough support. All right, that's it. You can... See them try to hit the specific, it can feel pain aspect, even if it's bullshit. They lost the religious philosophical debate against abortion and are trying to appeal on the facts and logic now. No, they, they knew that they had lost the religious uh, uh, aspect. That's why Ben Shapiro, a religious person, even though obviously Judaism uh, allows abortion, encourages abortion, right? Uh, ben Shapiro, being a Christian lapdog... Uh, was advocating for abortion, not on religious grounds, even though he is a very religious conservative. He was always advocating for abortion from a logical ground, right? Because they realized that that actually tests much better, that actually focus groups much better with a broader audience than just being like, life begins at conception, I'm a religious nutter, and I want to enforce rules upon you uh, at the federal level, at the state level, I want the state to enforce my standards of, of uh, existing upon you. I think it goes beyond limiting women. I really think it goes to the conservative ideology about who's allowed to have sex and why. Sex is only for procreation and that's it. Yes, it is that. And a lot of these people don't actually care about abortion rights. Either way, they can afford to pay their way out of the bind. Yes. Okay. Anyway. Um, however, until we achieve this goal, the least we can do is provide anesthesia to an unborn child facing abortion at 15 weeks because they can feel pain. Therefore, I will be introducing new legislation requiring abortion providers to administer anesthesia to an unborn child of 15 weeks because they're capable. Bro, he's trying to murder the people that are getting abortions, okay? He's like, if a mother wants to get an abortion, we will murder you by pumping you full of anesthesia, even if you don't need it. Okay? I care more about, I care more about, about the life of the hypothetical child that might be born, it's a 50-50 chance anyway, than the life of the carrier. It is common medical practice to administer anesthesia to operate on an unborn child at 15 weeks to save their life. This is further red tape. This is like a trap law, okay? Trying to pass legislation that will register anesthesia at every fucking abortion 
is just another way to try and further restrict abortion. Okay? That's it. Now you need an anesthesiologist at the abortion clinic. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous bill. Forty-seven or 50 European nations have national limits on abortion between 12 and 15 weeks. This is the civilized world's position. That's funny. What else do they got in 47 of the 50 European nations? But they got a lot more. They, I like that he's recognizing that that's the civilized world. The only time he's ever bringing up Europe. In every single one of those European countries, in every single one of those European countries, they also have socialized medicine. They are civilized in that front. In every single one of those European countries, if you were to get a, uh, an abortion beyond those limits, beyond the 12 to 15 weeks limits, okay, you can still get it when it's a medical necessity, which is the only way that you can get an abortion po uh, after the first trimester in America anyway. There are no third trimester abortions that are recreational, okay? That's not a real thing. It's just a made-up fantasy by Republicans. And as I repeat, oftentimes, the unfortunate reality is that a big chunk of American political commentary revolves around something that a guy just made up. And now we have to deal with it. Sorry, I made up this thing that is not a real problem. I've decided that it is a real problem and it's really scary because it scares me, this thing that I made up in my mind. And now you have to act like it's actually happening and now you have to address the fear that I have. That's it. It's so many things, so many issues that drive political discourse in this country are just issues that a guy made up okay immigrants are fucking doing mass rapes is not a real thing there is no empirical evidence for this the only empirical evidence actually suggests that immigrants undocumented migrants are responsible for less crime per capita than natural born u.s citizens but a guy made that up and it feels like it could be real to a lot of people so now we have to legislate against that fear what the fuck? Abortion is no different. Okay? Holy moly. Let's hear what Sky News has to say. Under my leadership, the Republican Party will always support the creation of strong, thriving, and healthy American families. We want to make it easier for... A few states technically do allow abortion up until birth. New Jersey and Michigan are two of them. There is no state in the continental United States of America where you can get a no-holds-barred abortion up to the, the third trimester. You are wrong. In those states, you still need a medical reason for it. Okay? You are wrong. I already factored this in when I said you cannot get an abortion in the third trimester in any state without a medical reason. It is a medical reason that you need to be able to get it. Okay? When you say technically allowed, you are describing what is normal. Okay? When people say legal at any stage, okay, elective abortion in the United States, that does not mention the medical necessity. Okay? That's it. There is no state in the United States of America where you can literally just fucking go, hey man, I kind of want to aborabo. Seems pretty pog. I love getting abortions. It feels good as fuck. It feels good as fuck for my ovaries. To get a fucking third trimester of Borobo. Okay. There is not a human being on the planet. That is like. 
Yeah, I loved carrying this fetus to full blown viability. And now I am getting a fucking funsies abortion. That's why Republicans have to either make it up or find like an extreme edge case. People do not understand how difficult it is to be pregnant. People do not understand that. Many men definitely do not understand the complications that come along with being pregnant. Not just being pregnant, but also, not, uh, like, when I talk about complications in this regard, I'm not just talking about, like, oh, it feels bad because, like, I'm gaining weight or my belly grew and I don't like that. I'm talking, like, it, it can be a life or death situation. Unfortunately, unfortunately, for the United States of America, especially, where our healthcare is absolutely dog shit across the board specifically when it comes to maternal mortality, mortality during pregnancy, pregnancies can be a life or death situation. Like we're still fucking living in ancient Rome or something. You know what I mean? It's crazy. It's awesome. It's great. How many women did you endanger yet? What do you mean endanger? What the fuck are you saying? You are being transphobic? What? Oh, oh stop, please. Wrong. Trans men do ass? What? Stop. Stop. I know you're memeing, but like people do take this shit. The people do legitimately believe this, okay? Yeah. Here's the other part. Only two to three percent of all U.S. abortions happen after the second trimester, and typically those are really fucking sad situations where the parents have to make an impossible call. I saw that shit firsthand when I shadowed an antepartum unit for pregnancy with complications, and every time a termination call had to be made in the third trimester, it was heartbreaking and traumatizing. Exactly. By the third trimester, you've, like, bought a crib, okay? You've bought clothes for the baby. You're excited to have the baby. You've like picked out a name, you know, the gender of the child, you know what I mean? You're excited at the prospect of having a child. It's a really. Decision made infinitely worse by the fact that you, you can't even do this medical procedure now. It's insane. Insane. My trans friend got an abortion. Wait, what? You are being transphobic. I'm not. Trans men get abortion. My trans friend got an abortion. Dude, I'm sorry. Oh my god, am I effing again? What the fuck? I I I hope I hope I get fucking raptured during this process, okay? My stream got effed during this process, and it's objectively a good thing because I'm going to lose my mind. Guys, guys, gals, embies. Shut the fuck up. Okay, Jesus Christ, if you think it's transphobic of me not to consistently, not to consistently fucking factor in the very, very, like the eight cases historically of trans men getting abortions, okay, because in order for a trans man to be able to be pregnant, not saying that they can't, okay, but in order for a trans man to be pregnant, they have to stop taking HRT. Okay, so shut the fuck up. It is such a phenomenally, phenomenally unique set of circumstances that like constantly being like, no, 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 you have to talk about this. You have to talk about this. 
and not the fucking tens of millions of people that we're talking about right now, but the one person, the one guy that gets a fucking Rolling Stones article written about him, you're out of your fucking mind. Okay? Shut up! Jesus Christ! Yes, I'm fucking transphobic, I guess. If that's what makes me transphobic. Fuck! It's insane, brother. Or sister. This is a boomer take, babe. No, it's not. It is not a boomer take. God damn. Some of you need to fucking just get out of your, your fucking Discord servers. Holy shit. It's like, no, you have to have this conversation centering it around me and my own personal uh, situation here. Like, just shut up. Shut up. <laughs> shut the fuck up. You're just too fucking permanently online to think that this is like prescient. It is a complete derailment. You will win zero people with this take. You are not advocating for... It. Trans, cis, doesn't fucking matter. You are not advocating for trans rights when you hyper-focus on trans men getting abortions, okay? I'm sorry. You're not. You are not advocating for trans rights when you fucking spear dick that narrative into this conversation shut your fucking ass up okay jesus christ it's so fucking niche dude calm down no you just want to be fucking heard you you want to be like me 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 you're not what do you think is this a, is this a really big issue is this a genuinely massive issue in the trans community? Are trans men constantly getting pregnant and getting abortions? Is that what's going on? And they're like, we have to, we have to be, uh, we have to be incorporated into the fucking abortion rights uh, conversation. Because I've never met a trans man that's been like, no, li listen, like this is a massive problem. Actually, we have to fucking talk about this. You are wrong. I don't think you are transphobic, but pre-HRT trans men get abortions. Wait, what? Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm going to die. Oh. It's not niche. Just admit that that was a transphobic take. If that's a transphobic take, I'm transphobic. Okay? I'm transphobic. It is niche. You're fucking delusional for thinking it's not niche. The problem... The problem is, given the numbers, okay? Given the numbers, because there aren't that many trans people, a lot of trans issues are niche to begin with. But, we, but there are issues that directly pertain to trans people that are written specifically to exclude trans people from living in society, okay? Being like, no, you have to talk about like pre-HRT trans men or pre-HRT or, or just like pe trans men that do take HRT or whatever the fuck. And like how important this is to the fucking abortion conversation is delusional, okay? Jesus Christ, shut the fuck up. I will argue this take. Yes, you fucking dumbass. I can't go to the OBGYN. I have to go to the women's health clinic. I desperately want to have a kid, but I'm scared of how the medical system treats me already. Wait, what? Oh. Oh my God. I think a lot of people genuinely genuinely think that when i'm talking about issues i'm talking to them and them only okay they think that like i'm speaking only to their fucking needs and only to their desires and not 
the massive amount of people that are not only never thinking about trans people, trans men, trans women, whatever, but like specifically also when they do think about trans people, they have really bad thoughts, okay? You have to remove yourself from this fucking conversation. You're talking to a trans man. I don't care. I know. God damn it. Just take the L. Oh my God. I hate how fucking hyper online this argument is. There is a reason why. Oh my God. I'm going to die. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. We're not, we're not getting stun locked here. Okay. Take a day off. Fucking take a deep breath. Come back when your fucking brain is like. Mm. Holy fuck. Just take the L. When I win the debate with the streamer as a trans man, I will be able to, I will, I will advance uh, trans rights in, in the most pro trans community online. When one of the largest pro trans communities online, this is how we fucking fix it. Okay. You already accounted for this in your take originally because it says most men don't understand, meaning there's already a carve out for trans men slash uterus havers in this convo. Exactly. Nobody is saying that trans men can't get fucking pregnant, okay? I, I literally understand that. I have explained it before. But it is a very niche part of this discussion. Okay. I hate this. I have also been incredibly consistent on this issue. Okay. I've said I've been incredibly fucking consistent on this issue. Like when Anna Kasparian brings this point up and like loses her mind about like birthing persons or whatever the fuck discourse. I say it's a simple distraction from the broader anti-trans legislation that's being passed. This is not a real issue at all. This is not a fucking serious. Uh, it is not a serious part of the conversation. It might be serious to you. Okay. But like advocacy for uh, uh, not restricting abortion access to anyone that needs it is going to already fix your problem to a certain degree. Okay? Stop being fucking weird. Policing people who have the same beliefs as you over mining, phrasing, slash issues, not including one group in your people and language at one time is so ridiculous. I know. It's really fucking annoying. And especially when you're a 42-month subscriber, it's like additionally fucking annoying because you're missing the forest for the trees. It is inherently a reactionary way to, to, to approach the subject matter. It's coming from a place of entitlement. What the fuck is this? Hello? Hold on one second. Hi, hi, hi. Let's continue. Mothers and families have babies, not harder. That includes supporting the availability of fertility treatments like IVF in every state in America, like the overwhelming majority of Americans, including the vast majority of Republicans, conservatives, Christians, and pro-life Americans. I strongly support the availability of IVF for couples who are trying to have a precious baby. What could be more beautiful or better than that? Today, I'm pleased that the Alabama legislature has acted very quickly.
They're beautiful babies, and that's what we are. IVF is an important part of that, and our great Republican. What the fuck is going on today, man? What is happening today? What is happening? So fucking annoying. Especially at the top of the hour when there's a three-minute ad break. The party will always be with you in your quest for the ultimate joy in life. Many people have asked me what my position is on abortion and abortion rights, especially since I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. They wanted it ended. It must be remembered that the Democrats are the radical ones on this position because they support abortion up to and even beyond the ninth month. The concept of having an abortion in the later months and even execution after birth, and that's exactly what it is. The baby is born, the baby is executed after birth is unacceptable, and almost everyone agrees with that. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both, and whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks, or some will have more conservative than others, and that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. You must follow your heart or, in many cases, your religion or your faith. Do what's right for your family and do what's right for yourself. Do what's right for your children. Do what's right for our country and vote. So important to vote. At the end of the day, it's all about will of the people. That's where we are right now, and that's what we want, the will of the people. I want to thank the six justices, Chief Justice John Roberts, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett, and Neil Gorsuch, incredible people, for having the courage to allow this long-term, hard-fought battle to finally end. This 50-year battle over Roe v. Wade took it out of the federal hands and brought it into the hearts, minds, and vote of the people in each state. It was really something. Now it's up to the states to do the right thing. Like Ronald Reagan, I am strongly in favor of exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother. You must follow your heart on this issue, but remember, you must also win elections to restore our culture and, in fact, to save our country, which is currently, and very sadly, a nation. He does sound like he's AI. Am I wrong? He is definitely on Ozempic. In decline. Our nation needs help. It needs unity. It needs us all to work closely together. Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, everyone. We have to work together. We have to bring our nation back from the brink. And that's where it is. It's at the brink. And we will. We will do it. I promise you, we will do it. Always go by your heart. But we must win. We have to win. We are a failing nation, but we can be a failing nation no longer. We will make our nation great. We will make our nation greater than ever before. Thank you very much. So this is one of our willow boxes. This is just filled with some of the things that we had started gathering for her while I was pregnant. Yep. There's her little baby book. This is the outfit that she was gonna maybe wear home from the hospital. All of these. Um, This is the blanket that she was in. And these are her little footprints. Okay. 
I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. President Biden said to announce a new student debt relief plan that will impact millions of Americans if it goes into effect. Supreme Court struck down a previous plan. Chief White House correspondent Mary Bruce has the details. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, George. Well, during a trip to the key battleground state of Wisconsin today, President Biden will unveil his new sweeping student loan plan, which could erase or lower debt for tens of millions of Americans. So here is what we can expect. The plan targets runaway interest, canceling up to $20,000 for the 25 million borrowers who now owe more than they borrow. And those making $120,000 or less a year would be eligible to have all of their interest wiped out. The plan would also eliminate debt for borrowers with at least 20-year-old loans. Now, the rollout of this is set to begin this fall, and the White House says that combined with its previous efforts, this means that more than 30 million Americans could see relief. This is the president's most significant attempt to address this since the Supreme Court struck down his plan last year. But guys, it comes as the president is eager to show voters he can make good on this pledge as we head into the November election. Hi, everyone. George Stephan. <sighs> this, is a, this is not a bad thing. This is a good thing overall. It's overall a good thing. Okay? It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Dude is taking tax money and giving it straight to loan sharks. I mean, it's not... It's not the worst thing. No more interest for 120k less. It's saving so much money. It is... They are... They're, are, they're basically looking for... Any way to fucking salvage the situation. Here's Biden talking about it. Please have a seat if there's, you have one. <laughs> Gov, thank you. Thank you for that nice introduction. Thank you, Ashley, for introducing me and sharing your story. I, like an awful lot of people in this audience, uh, had was the first in my family to go to college and watch my dad struggle to help me get there. And, get all the kids there, and it wasn't easy. But, you know, uh, I asked the rhetorical question, how can we be the leading country in the world without the best education system in the world and access to it? You and Sam are from rural Wisconsin, first in your families to go to college. Life partners, business partners, hardworking, paying off your loans, only to see your dreams being crushed by student debt. But now, Thanks to what we're doing, that student debt is no longer holding you back. With this new freedom, you started your own business. It helps women and minority-owned businesses right here in Wisconsin. That's what this is all about. I think we all in this room share one goal. Give everybody a fair shot, just a shot. Freedom to chase their dreams. You know, you've got some of the great leaders in Wisconsin here as well, and I mean that sincerely. I think Tony knows this. Your governor, I think he's one of the best governors in the United States. And not just that, you really are, Tony. And what progress we've made, and we made a lot, is no small part because of Tony. And the bad news for Tony is, we become friends. <laughs> and Mark, thank you, Representative. Thanks for the passport to get into the district. I appreciate it. You're doing a hell of a job. And Madison Mayor, thank you. Where is she? There you go. Stand up. I get instructions from my wife, who's a school teacher. She said, make sure you say hello to the mayor. I really like being with her. Thank you, Mayor, for taking care of me. And the state and local tribal leaders here today, thanks for making it available. Where are you? There you can stand up, Chief. Thank you. And by the way, it's Indian Nations. And while she couldn't be here, I'm always grateful for one of the best state senators, Tammy Baldwin. She really is. She's a great partner in education, infrastructure, Buy America, and so much more. She's done so much. And when uh, Kamala and I ran uh, this led uh, in the, in this lead county, we made a commitment to fix our broken student loan system. Because while college degree still is a ticket to the middle class, that ticket's becoming much too expensive, much too expensive. In fact, 
Things are a lot different from when college tuition was more affordable and borrowing for college was repaying those loans was re more reasonable. Today, too many Americans, especially young people, are saddled with unsustainable debts in exchange for a college degree. The ability for working and middle-class folks to repay their student loans has become so burdensome that a lot can't repay it for even decades after being in school. And I mean that sincerely. Many of you know that sitting in front of me. Even when they have worked hard and pay their student loans, their debt increases, not diminishes. Too many people feel the strain and stress, wondering if they're going to can get married, have their first child, start a family, because even if they get by, they still have this crushing, crushing debt. That's not the, you know, it's not just a drag on them. It's a drag on our local economies. It's a drag on, no, it really is. It's a drag on the economies. When you can't afford to buy a home, Start that small business. Chase that career that you've been dreaming about for a long time. That's why earlier in my term, I announced a major plan to provide more than 40 million working and middle-class Americans student debt relief. Tens of millions. <clears throat> Tens of millions of people's debt was literally about to get canceled. But then some of my Republican friends and elected officials and special interests sued us. And the Supreme Court blocked us. But that didn't, well, that didn't stop us. No, I mean it sincerely. We continue to find alternatives passed to reduce student debt payments <clears throat> that are not challengeable. And altogether, my administration has taken the most significant action to provide student debt relief ever in the history of this country. We started by fixing two existing programs to get more people student debt relief than they're, uh, that they were entitled to. First, we fixed what was called the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, which was designed to make sure those in public service, school teachers, police officers, firefighters, social workers, faith leaders, public servants, could get the student loan forgiven in 10 years if they've made their payments for those first 10 years. And after 10 years in the student, in public service, they would have their loan forgiven. When I took office, 7,000 public service had their debt, 7,000 had their debts forgiven. The program wasn't r working very well. So I called in the Department of Education and other departments and said, we've got to fix this and fix it now. Thanks to our reforms, nearly 900,000 have had their debts forgiven, including 16,400 right here in Wisconsin. Right here in Wisconsin. Second, we turn to what's called an income-driven repayment program, which I've renamed the SAVE program, the most affordable repayment plan ever. Before I took office, student borrowers had to pay 10 percent of their discretionary income on a monthly basis for what they borrowed, 10 percent discretionary income. That's income after you pay necessities like housing and food. A lot of people didn't have the means to pay 10 percent. So I was able to, my, my authority, have the department cut that to 5 percent for undergraduate loans. Now, that means no one with undergraduate loans, whether a community college or four-year college, have to pay more than 5 percent of the discretionary income to repay those loans starting in July, starting in July of this year. And for millions of borrowers who make less than $32,000 a year now after they're out, their monthly student payments will be dropped to zero as long as they're that. Really. And already, close to 8 million Americans have enrolled in the SAVE plan, including 135,000 here in Wisconsin. Because of our reforms, 25,000 people a month nationwide have been receiving letters from me about their debt they had for four years. For, for all those years is finally going to be forgiven. But I'm not stopping here. Today, I'm proud to announce five major actions to continue to relieve student debt for more than 30 million Americans since this, I started my administration. First, my administration will propose a new rule to cancel up to $20,000 in runaway interest for any borrower that owes more now, owes more now than when they started paying the loan. That make, that's a big difference. And for low- and middle-class families enrolled in my SAVE program, we'll cancel all of your interest, all of your interest. And second, 
They plan to cancel student debt for borrowers who still owe student loans, even though they started repaying them more than two decades ago. Folks, third, we plan to cancel debt for about 2 million borrowers who would be eligible for debt forgiveness through the SAVE program, public service loan forgiveness, or other debt canceling program, but are not enrolled in these programs. Some of you are only finding out after the fact, you're, as you're a teacher, a firefighter, a cop, that you qualify, but you just didn't know about it before. And now people are, but you're eligible no matter how long it's been, you've been out of the program. Fourth, we plan to cancel debt for borrowers who the Department of Education determines were cheated by universities that left students on unaffordable loans and delivered little in benefits to students. And you know, you know one of those, you know one of those colleges was closed. I won't mention it. And finally, the Department of Education will propose a new rule to cancel student debt for Americans facing financial hardships, from child care to health care, to prevent them from paying back their loans. And over the coming months, the Department of Education will propose and then implement these plans. And starting this fall, we plan to deliver up to $20,000 in interest relief to over 20 million borrowers and full forgiveness for millions more. I can tell by the looks on some of your faces, this relief this is not news to you all, because this relief can be life-changing, life-changing, just as you heard from Ashley. Folks, I will never stop to deliver student debt relief on hardworking Americans, and it's only in the interest of America that we do it. And again, it's for the good of our economy that's growing stronger and stronger, and it is. By freeing millions of Americans from this crushing debt of student debt, it means they can finally get on with their lives instead of being put, their lives being put on hold. That's why every American makes as someone who works in federal politics, I find it a bummer that it's a fall rollout that begins in election time. Still great news, though, but friends are frustrated or waiting. I fuck with DA marijuana registration by Kamala for election strategy, though. I'm, I'm fine with politicians doing shit specifically for elections. As long as they're doing shit. It is frustrating to have it be so obviously political, but that's politics in general. It's just like... It's not the best possible outcome, but it's still good. This is complete horseshit. Don't be duped again. <laughs> I think given the circumstances or the setbacks... If we are to be, if we are to look at it from uh, the institutional hurdles created, oftentimes created specifically so that people can go, oh, fuck, we can't do anything. Um, this is still, this is still a step in the right direction. It's just that it's still far from what was originally promised. I think the best possible outcome would have been to say fuck you to the Supreme Court and to say that he has full power over the Department of Education. Of course, only Republicans get to do stuff like that. You know what I mean? Or stack the court, you know? destroy the sacred institution as it existed. The SAVE program has been incredible for me because I get denied for disability, but I can't work. But now I don't gain any interest and my monthly payments is zero, so I don't have to worry about my student debt. Hopefully I'll be able to find a job I can do soon. This is exactly how the old heads felt when Obamacare passed. Yeah, I mean, this is just, this is the best you're going to get with the Democratic Party. Let's be real. Making a student loan payment should go to studentaid.gov. Studentaid.gov to learn more about these plans and see if you're at any fit for you. 
Look, that's not all. People say to me, it's great you're helping people into college. How about all those hardworking people who grew up and had no opportunity to go to college? I get it. That's the neighborhood I come from. What has been promised? That's what was promised is student loan debt relief across the board. <laughs> now, Biden is, and Biden has done some uh, piecemeal student loan debt relief uh, here and there throughout the entire four years of the administration. But what was promised was obviously uh, just yeeting most of the student loan, uh, student loan debts. Uh, so during an appearance of Wisconsin, President Biden said 10 million borrowers could see debt relief for, uh, of at least $5,000, and the plan could help rally support among young voters is what the, the uh, New York Times uh, byline is on this. Um, obviously, it's still, it's still too little. It's definitely too late. Um, I don't know how else to, I don't know how else to describe it, but the point is, or the plan would potentially reduce the amount that 25 million borrowers still owe on their undergraduate and graduate loans. It would wipe away the entire amount for more than 4 million Americans. Although altogether, the White House official said 10 million borrowers could see debt relief for $5,000 or more. <laughs> Um, this is a way to, I guess, sidestep the Supreme Court somehow. He announced it here in front of you guys in Madison, Wisconsin. The reason for why he did that, of course, is because it is a college town and it also is a very important swing state that he is desperately trying to hold on to in spite of the ongoing genocide that has uh, made it more difficult for him to hold on to. This article from the Forbes will explain to you what he had originally promised. This is, of course, from October 7, 2020. Biden, I will eliminate your student debt. Reaffirming his commitment to broad student loan forgiveness at a town hall in Miami on Tuesday, Biden, in a response to a question from a young person concerned about student loan debt and lack of economic opportunity, responded with, you get all these degrees and you get all this debt and you get in a position where you can't get a job because no one is hiring or they're hiring at very low wages. I'm going to eliminate your student debt if you come from a family making less than $125,000 and went to a public university. Biden also said, I'm going to make sure everyone gets $10,000 knocked off of their student debt in response to economic hardships caused by the pandemic. Biden further proposed giving young people a $15,000 credit towards a down payment on their first home. This is how people accumulate wealth, he said. This is how people get started. We have to recognize you and advance you. You are the future. I am not the type of person who will ever criticize trying to buy votes. I think it's a very cynical attitude that goes against the very nature of representative democracy. The entire purpose of the democratic process is to buy votes. Oftentimes, the only votes that our legislators are looking to buy is the votes, or rather the outsized political power, social capital that you gain from corporations and the wealthy. Okay? Rich people do not even ask to have their votes be bought. They demand it. They demand it through legislation. They demand it through lobbying. So when someone is seeking to buy your vote, when you're the average citizen, we have this like weird, we, we take offense to it almost. I find that to be odd. I don't think we should take offense to it. We should welcome it. Okay? <laughs> Now, of course, it'd be much nicer if he actually followed through on his promises to buy your vote and did not rely on the unconditional support that he will get from you because the other side is much worse. This, is, this hinges on the Democratic Party's modus operandi. This is how the Democratic Party operates because they know that the other side is much, much worse. Now, of course, um, the promise that he had made, this one right here, he failed to achieve. Uh, one, because it was a broad promise. It was a big promise. It was one within his legal uh, purview. It was one within his legal rights. He does control the Department of Education. They have 
abolished student loan debt before. They have put a pause on student loan debt repayments. If you guys recall, many of you have student loans. You probably noticed when your student loans, you did not have to pay them anymore. That was during COVID. Technically, because he has that promise, he could extend it permanently. Technically, he has that power. Okay? Oh, my God. Here we go. PolitiFact. Biden promise tracker. Where is it? Let's see. Where is the student loan one? Forgive student loan debt from public and college public colleges and universities in the works. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Legal challenges were amounted by Republicans uh, across the country, attorneys generals like uh, that are representing the interests of uh, like financial tools, for example, like debt repayment, uh, like loan repayment companies and whatnot immediately opened up legal challenges to gum up the works as best as possible. Um, it was ridiculous because they just kept suing and suing and suing even if the the companies themselves were not looking to sue, the attorney general would sue them without the company's prior no uh, like prior knowledge. They claimed that this was unlawful, an unlawful use of executive authority to enact the costly transfer of wealth from taxpayers who have not taken out federal student loans to those who have. They also said that this would hurt the bottom line of uh, you know, debt refinancing institutions, which is true, but fuck them. Okay. Ridiculous. But regardless, if you look at the New York Times article, and I'm looking at it right now, Mr. Biden's announcement was a presidential do-over. The New York Times says in the summer of 2022, we put into motion a plan to wipe out 400 billion in student debt for about 43 million borrowers. That was blocked by the Supreme Court, which said he exceeded his authority. In the months since, Biden has waived small amounts of debt using existing programs. But now he's attempting a larger effort to clo uh, closer to the scale of his first try. The original plan relied on a law called HEROES Act, which the administration argued allowed the government to waive student debt during a national emergency like the COVID pandemic. The justices disagreed after Republican attorneys general and other challenged the debt waiver plan. The new approach is different. For most, Mr. Biden's education department has been developing regulations using long process authorized by the Higher Education Act. Instead of an across-the-board waiver of debt, the new approach targets five groups of borrowers, those whose loans have ballooned because of interest, borrowers who have been paying for decades, those who have economic hardship, and those who qualify for existing debt relief programs but have not applied, and people whose loans come from schools that have since been denied certification or have lost eligibility for federal student aid programs which is ridiculous. They shouldn't have to pay anyway. That's like, uh, that last part is, is fucking crazy. Administration officials said because the new approach is based on a different law, it is more likely to survive the expected challenges. They said lawyers for the White House and the Education Department have studied the Supreme Court ruling and have designed new programs to make sure it does not violate the principles laid out by the justices. What? I did cover the uh, local elections in Turkey chatter. Please cover some global issues at least sometimes. A small 5 to 10% wouldn't hurt anybody, and you can go back to your American obsession. Oh, I'm an American political commentator covering American politics. I did talk about the local elections in Turkey, and I cover global politics almost every single fucking day. I talk about Israel-Palestine every single day for the past fucking six months. What the fuck are you talking about? It is not an obsession. It is my job. And not only that, but I also did cover the local elections in Turkey.
There are entire days where I only cover foreign politics and not even any domestic issues. Calm down. Okay. Anyway. Also, American politics uh, obviously impacts your life in ways that you recognize or don't recognize, regardless of your recognition. But lawyers for those who oppose the approach are likely to argue that waiving the debt is unfair to those who already paid back their loans or never took out college loans in the first place. That argument helps sway the justice in the last case. It's a bullshit fucking argument. And the justices are not looking to be swayed, even though they have an honest opinion on this, an honest approach on this. The justices are operating on the boundaries of political, uh, uh, on their political interest. They are there to operate as a vestige of the Republican Party. That is what the reactionary justices are there to do. This argument is an idiotic argument on its face regardless. The notion that, oh, well, what about the people that paid for it? It's unfair to them is fucking insane. Okay? That is insane. That is not uh, the American way, or it should not be the theoretical American way. The notion that, like, if there was, for example, a cure for cancer, that, like, former cancer patients or the friends and family members of like those who have fallen to cancer would not advocate against that cancer uh, treatment being opened up to every single person. It's so dumb. I had cancer. I fixed it the right way. You can't get this cure. I suffered this injustice. So others must suffer as well is idiotic. Also the notion that Americans ever have cared or the Supreme Court has ever cared about fairness is really silly. They do not care. Capitalism is an inherently unfair system. Ridiculous. Fairness only is used or rather weaponized as a counter argument when you are helping a broad swath of the society that is normally not helped. Neil McCluskey, the director of the Center for Educational Freedom at Cato Institute, called the new plan dangerous policy that is unfair to taxpayers and would cause colleges and universities to raise their prices. The Constitution gives Congress, not the president, the authority. Like, see, this is how you know they're throwing shit at a wall. Because they're trying to cover it from every angle. They're like, oh, well, colleges are really expensive, and they'll get even more expensive because they'll get, um, they'll get comfortable. It's a dangerous policy. Oh, it's unfair. It's unfair to those who paid. Well, as someone who has not only been fortunate enough to achieve financial security that I can pay my own student loans, my parents' student loans, my brother's student loans, I say no one else should have to suffer. This is ridiculous. What a bullshit fucking argument. But even silly bullshit fucking arguments can be utilized by the United States Supreme Court of Justice like, for example, when Antonin Scalia very famously advocated for the use of torture, nay, enhanced interrogation, by bringing up the fictional television series with Kiefer Sutherland starring called 24, where he brought up a hypothetical where Jack Bauer had to torture a terrorist to figure out plans and thwart a possible nuclear attack on Washington, D.C. or New York or one of the fucking major cities. I don't remember which one. That is not an argument that withstands the test of time or just, I don't know, pure reasoning by anyone. It was Los Angeles. Never mind. Sorry. The one fucking city that I did not bring up. That is a ridiculous argument. And yet it was valid for the Supreme Court. The Constitution gives Congress, not the president, the authority to enact law, and the Supreme Court has already struck down a unilateral mass student debt cancellation scheme by Biden administration. It would stick taxpayers with bills for debts other people choose uh, chose for their own financial advancement. Uh, we never have this kind of smoke for any kind of uh, any kind of executive action in uh, any other direction. This is within the legal purview of the ex, uh, the executive authority the the 
executive office. The Department of Education is controlled by the White House. We have already exercised this control. Where'd you go to school? Do you have any debt? I did. I used to have debt. Yes. Every dude, it is impossible to go to American college and not have debt. Okay. It's virtually impossible. You have to be really, really, and I mean really fucking rich. You have to be, you know, what my haters imagine my lifestyle is like. Uh, a, a son of a multi-billionaire Turkish oligarch with a major fucking trust fund to be able to go to American college without any loans whatsoever. And I say this as someone who got a shit ton of scholarships as well. There was still a lot of shit to pay for. It is also one of the major principles behind throwing endless bodies at the American military machine. College is the only viable solution for upward, upward social mobility. It's not even that viable as it once was. It is now a requirement. And because of how costly college is, the Department of Defense uses that as an opportunity to engage in a poverty draft. The legal challenges will take months to resolve, and that could leave the debt relief plan in limbo as voters go to the polls in November to choose between Mr. Biden and former President Donald Trump. Members of Mr. Biden's administration fa uh, fanned out across the country on Monday to talk about the new plan, betting that it will rally support among voters who were disappointed that the court blocked the first one, which would have eliminated up to $20,000 in debts for tens of millions of borrowers. An objectively good thing, if you recall, which I was very much on board with, which I fucking rode for Biden on. There have been a couple moments of clarity and a couple really awesome moments in the Brandon administration. Um, full, fully facilitating the withdrawal from Afghanistan was one of those moments which everybody yelled at him over. This was another one which everybody also yelled at him over because it does seem like the entirety of American mainstream media, all of our corporations, all of our wealthy are just undesirable, incredibly reactionary monsters when it comes to doing good things and doing right by those who have been fucked over by the systems. There's never a moment where we can, God forbid, help those who need it. There was never this level of discourse over PPP loan relief. Never. It was a given. Those loans had conditions. None of those conditions are met. None of those conditions were met. Those loans were given for a purpose. The purpose was to continue paying workers that weren't going into work to help facilitate that payment because we did not have like a unilateral, federally controlled labor structure where every single person or some kind of federal banking uh, structure. So we had to do it in the most American way possible with cash infusions to corporations. Those corporations, small businesses, large businesses alike, never took those PPP loans and then met the conditions, such as paying their fucking workforce, but it did not matter. That was a tremendous amount of loans, tremendous, massive, massive number. I don't remember the exact, I don't recall the exact uh, size of the PPP loans in general. But notice how nobody fucking made a big stink about it. Why? Because that was a that was a cash transfer to corporations. Does that not strike you as odd? That when corporations get a cash transfer from the federal government with conditions and nobody meets those fucking conditions at all. Yeah. Here's uh, the PPP loans that cost nearly double what Biden's student debt forgiveness would have. Here's how the programs compare. Almost every single person 
that is a small business owner, big business owner that took a PPP loan, which includes members of Congress, mind you, had no issues with the $785 billion that was forgiven. $790 billion in PPP loans. Out of the $790 billion, $757 billion was forgiven. Wow. Nobody chirped about that shit, though. God forbid. God forbid you bring that shit up. And it wasn't even utilized appropriately. I don't want to hear about the fact that the PPP loan relief came from congressional authorization, whereas student loan debt restructuring or student loan debt relief actually comes from the executive office. I don't give a shit, okay? I care about the impact of the legislation. I care about the impact of the actions. I don't give a shit about how, it, how the sausage was made in this regard. This kind of structural hurdle is only talked about when it's actually simply a conversation about helping the poor. Okay? That's it. Structural hurdles are only a problem when you want to pass uh, legislation through uh, budget reconciliation, for example, and the Senate parliamentarian decides that a $15 minimum wage does not impact the budget. Uh, does not impact the deficit, and therefore it cannot be a part of the budget reconciliation conversation. And then the Democrats go, oh, what can we do? It's bullshit. They do this every fucking time. These conversations are incredibly silly. And even on the, the institutional hurdles conversation, there are ways out of it, and yet... People choose not to take them. Okay? <sighs> How are they able to forgive PPP loans easily? Brother, what do you mean? Welcome to the United States of America. A corporation, uh, no matter what size, has more rights than the average citizen here. This is a country designed to churn out outcomes such as this one. Okay? That's it. And that's why increasing taxes is uh, almost a political impossibility, whereas decreasing taxes is a given, is expected, is promoted, is celebrated by both the Democratic Party and the Republican Party alike in many instances. They're both unnecessary bailouts. Don't put one against the other. Go work for a nonprofit for 10 years and have your sub, unsub federal loans forgiven. That's what I did. Yeah, you're a fucking idiot, dude. I'm sorry to say this, okay? But you're a fucking dumbass. What do you mean? Everybody needs to go work for a fucking nonprofit for 10 years? This is not only the dumbest fucking argument you could make, but it's also one that just completely is oblivious to the reality elsewhere. The reason why you go and get a college education is not because, oh, it's so much fun. I mean, you can surely have fun there as well. But the reason why this is reactionary peasant mindset, okay, is cucked, is because it fails to capture broader thinking. You are not looking at other countries and trying to understand why other countries have college for free. College education is good for making a more productive labor force in an increasingly global planet. We need to have competitive labor. This is why other countries actually make it so that it is not only free to go to college, but in some nations they will pay you, especially if you are taking on a specific role that the government has decided we need more of. That's the normal way to do it. That's the good way to do it. Okay? That's the smart way to do it. Why do they do it? Is it because they're stupid? 
Is it because countries like Germany are fucking dumb? They just don't understand it? Is it because they're communist? They're not. This is positive overall, even for capitalism. Having a more educated workforce is a good thing. Objectively so. Paywalling education, higher education, is stupid. I don't understand how someone can look to this and go, I suffered. I worked for a nonprofit for 10 years. And that's the only way that through indentured servitude, I was able to, uh, you know, destroy my student loans with that shouldn't even exist to begin with. Free college, but country in debt. Brother, free college, but country in unpayable debt. We are the United States of America. That is idiotic. If countries that do not have their own currency can engage in programs such as this one, then the United States of America certainly can. Debt to who is the question you must ask. Yeah, also, you are correct on this, not or smoke time. Um, the executive authority for student loan forgiveness was specifically granted by Congress in the Higher Ed and Heroes Act. So Congress having, I mean, sorry, the president having executive authority over student loan debt relief was already given to the executive by Congress. But of course, as is the case of Roe v. Wade, we know now, I think, or many Americans know the reality that I've been chirping about for many, many years, which is that the Supreme Court of the United States does not operate with real legal considerations. Okay? Constitutional law is not what is, uh, what is at play here. It's more so just whatever, whatever suits the needs and interests of capital owners. The court interpretation is bullshit. That's my point. The court interprets things in a way that suits their needs. In a way that suits the needs of their corporate benefactors. America doesn't do regular capitalism that other European social democracies engage in. America does extra capitalism. Okay, extra, extra capitalism. It is hyper exploitative because in the short term, it offers great benefits to a select few. It is our greed that will lead to our demise. It is operating in the way that capitalism is supposed to operate by, mind you, without any kind of fucking state restrictions or state regulation on it. No checks, no balances whatsoever the only time the state interferes in capitalism is once again to suit the needs of corporations this is neoliberalism not a true free market mind you okay but a market where the government only steps in to favor corporations over the interests of the workers to favor capital owners in the interests of the workers Obamacare is a great example of this, and even that was fought against. Obamacare is a right-wing policy. It was designed by the Heritage Foundation in 1992 as a way to counter true socialized medicine, true public health care. It was implemented first by a Republican by the name of Mitt Romney, when he was the governor of the state of Massachusetts. It is yet again a cash transfer to private health care providers. That's what Obamacare does. Now, were there good provisions in Obamacare? Absolutely. Like the uh, abolition of, of 
pre uh, 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 of, of refusing to offer health care by health care providers to those with pre-existing conditions. That was a good thing. That is what they wanted to destroy the, the capital owners. The real question is, does this on care? The only good thing in Germany is free education and healthcare across Europe, I guess. The real question is, does this on care? I, I do care very much so. It's a painful, solemn homecoming. Let's get to the other um, story here. Israel, Palestine. One area where Biden has, of course, demonstrated competency in the most incompetent way possible. Competency, if you believe that his goal overall is to wipe out Gaza, which I do believe that's his overarching goal. Whatever fucking Israel says goes. Okay. Gazans are returning to the devastation in Han Yunus as Israeli forces are withdrawing. Now, you might think, wow, that's good. That's progress, right? Well, the suspicion is that uh, the Israeli forces are only withdrawing from Han Yunus so they can, um, so they can turn around and uh, uh, mount a siege on Rafah. For a potential invasion of Rafah. However, yesterday was uh, the lowest death toll, as far as I understand, in Gaza since October 7. Only 32 Palestinians were ruthlessly and mercilessly slaughtered in Gaza. Only 32. This is progress. That's how bad the situation is that we say only 32 people were murdered yesterday. Israel is also, even though they had no control over the Gaza Strip, according to many Zionists and many defenders of Israel, although they had no control over Gaza whatsoever, that, they, that Gaza was uh, not an open-air prison, Israel somehow has found some control over Gaza, it seems, northern Gaza specifically, where now... They are allowing uh, more aid to reach northern Gaza. They're allowing the bakeries to be open in northern Gaza. They're allowing water into northern Gaza. It's very odd that a country that does not have control over this territory that it occupies is able to allow these things to to happen in a territory that it doesn't certainly occupy 400 trucks entered today record since october 7 interesting palestinians who fled the city of khan yunis returned to its ruins after israeli forces pull out some pick through the debris of their shattered lives looking for whatever can still be salvaged. Around 15 billion pounds worth of damage has been inflicted to Gaza's infrastructure, according to the World Bank. How to measure the suffering of its inhabitants? No words can describe my pain. I have no words to express my feelings. Our memories, our dreams, our childhood, and our family are all gone. I couldn't find anything under the rubble. The conflict is far from over, but six months after the war began, following Hamas's October the 7th attacks, Israel has withdrawn the vast bulk of its ground forces in Gaza. Han Yunis in southern Gaza was the scene of Israel's last major ground offensive. Troop numbers had already been drawn down. Now, only one brigade is left, guarding a corridor, splitting the territory in two. Though the possibility of an Israeli assault on Rafa, where so many Gazans fled seeking safety, remains a possibility, despite international opposition to it. 
Israel will maintain the freedom to act as it does uh, actually in the West Bank, to act for its own security based on intelligence in raids and short term raids that uh, uh, do not entail remaining on the ground for uh, long periods of time. Now, there's, of course, the question of Rafa. And, and in my mind, the question of Rafa has to do more with sealing off the border between the Gaza Strip and the Sinai Desert so Hamas cannot reinforce itself through there as it did before October 7th, much more than with the remaining four battalions of Hamas. Those battalions can be contained, they can be uh, dismantled over time. Last month, the Israeli army launched a huge raid on the Al-Shifa hospital complex in northern Gaza, despite previously having declared the area free from Hamas. The move was widely criticized abroad, but Israel is holding it up as a model of how it plans to act in the future. Inside Israel, frustration with the government's handling of the war is rising at a huge rally in Jerusalem last night. In solidarity with the hostages held in Gaza, the relatives of some accused Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of not doing enough. They're placing their hopes on talks around a ceasefire deal in Egypt. But this evening, a Hamas official said the group had rejected the latest proposals put forward. In a video today, Netanyahu claimed securing the hostages' release was the primary objective of the war, and following criticism from right-wing allies, also said a date for an invasion of Rafa has been set in order to, in his words, secure victory over Hamas. Hamas has been severely weakened, but it's already been re-emerging in the north. Israel's reduced much of Gaza to rubble, but has no clear plan on what comes next. For ordinary families, back in what's left of their homes in Han Yunis, who've already lost so much, a bleak future of further violence and instability lies ahead. Well, I'm joined now by Sam Rhodes, Director of Planning at UNRWA, the UN Agency for Palestinians that provides the backbone of humanitarian support in Gaza, who, and he was in Gaza until 10 days ago. I mean, when you look at a place like Khan Yunus, what can any aid agency do there? I mean, it's rubble. It's complete rubble, and the Israelis pulled out today after an operation going on for five to six weeks. We've continued to provide some services in part of of, of Khan Yunus, the parts of Khan Yunus that have been accessible towards the coast, but this idea that life will go back there to normal, that we can operate as normal, is is not realistic. But we, what, what do people do when they move into these areas? I mean, do they do they live in tents or, I mean, because they can't live. People, the, uh, the, the Israelis pulled out overnight, and some people go back as we would in these situations to inspect what's left of of your home. So a lot of people, we would expect to see movement from Rafa as people go back to have a look to at, see if at there's what's left, but there's it. very little. If, if what's left of Khan Yunus is similar to what's left of, of northern Gaza and Gaza City, there'll be very little for people to go back to for, for months, if not, if not years. What is UNRWA doing now? Because, you know, the Israelis have been systematically attacking your organisation, undermining it, saying you're biased. Um, you know, are, are you functioning as an, as an organisation? We are functioning as an organisation in many ways, not as we would normally function outside of a war, but we are distributing flour to tens of thousands of peop people every day. Since October, we've provided flour to 1.8 million people in Gaza, almost 1.9 million people. So we're providing medical consultations to over 20,000 people a day, refugees and non-refugees. In times of conflict in times of crisis, UNRWA's mandate actually extends beyond serving and assisting Palestine refugees to support the population at large because we are the entity with the footprint, with the capacity, with the, uh, the understanding of conditions on the ground. And what about getting aid around, well, in? For Not flowers, man. Flour, like for food. Flour. To make bread. Jesus. Chat really needs to fucking clean out their ears, I think. <sighs> anyway.
Thank you for your coverage of Israel. I live in Israel and your coverage has been a huge help in seeing through the collective mind fog here. It's fucking nuts here. I feel like I'm losing my mind every day. I live in the settlements. I hate it here. I wish I could move. Weren't your ears clogged as fuck? It was. It was. And I unclogged it. Problem requires solution. Okay? Just like top of the hour ad break requires the solution of subscribing. This video claimed what Netanyahu said was the primary object, object is returning hostages. It left out that he said the primary objectives are returning the hostages and destroying Hamas. I don't want it to seem like he's making a softening of rhetoric when in reality he's been blocking lots of attempts to compromise in the negotiations under pressure from Ben Gvir and Smotrich. Bezalel Smotrich. Um, yeah. Sent you a message on Instagram about maybe having a board member of the PCRF on your show. Let me know. That seems good. Will Stansel is still being a spineless little liar about Israel? What? What is this? Once again, Netanyahu follows orders from American presidents. Israel is a subsidiary of the United States. We will we end this war with a stroke of a pen. Is the core conspiracy theory driving the left bonkers? Since the corollary is Biden must want this all to happen. Now, Will Stansel in and of himself is a fucking weirdo loser who gives a shit what he thinks. But this was the common sentiment from liberals in November. And it still kind of is to this day. The notion that Israel is a separate entity, the notion that Israel can do, like, do whatever the fuck it wants and America can just like simply sit back and not do anything was really stupid back then. And it really stupid. It's really stupid now. Now, of course, did Will Stansel recognize that he was wrong about that take? No, he still says it's still correct. Of course, this would require you to, you know, close your ears and close your eyes and refuse to reckon with the reality that like, the United States of America does have pressure power and Biden hasn't been using that pressure power until recently. And even now the pressure power that Biden is using is still very marginal. Okay. Very, very, very marginal. It's weaponized ignorance. Okay. Here's the other side of this coin. The Biden administration is now effectively preparing to make aid to Israel contingent on dot, 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 unspecified changes to Israeli policy, which means that Israel can do little or nothing to appease the White House. Hamas is now in control of the Biden administration. <laughs> Tel Aviv does what DC wants them to do, or Tel Aviv does what DC allows them to do. It's both what they want them to do, but also what they allow them to do. Okay. Just so you understand. Ah, oh, you forgot to run the ads. I thought I did run them. Oh, you're right. I did forget. Thank you, Chatter. Here's the three minute ad break now. Here's the three minute ad break now. I'm going to tag IDF again. <laughs> I'm going to say. Bill Vogt, thank you for the five tier one gift of subs, allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour, by the way. <laughs> Once again. It seems like, I mean, with this affectation, I'm basing a character off of you for a script. Okay. You're probably banned from visiting Israel now. Oh no. What will I do? Oh. 
Oh man, what will I fucking do now? Oh. <laughs> the Israeli chatters that keep saying come to Israel are going to be so disappointed. Yeah. America says jump. Israel says how high. Okay. This has been proven over and over again. Even if, even if those inside of Israel refuse to reckon with that reality, those in positions of power do reckon with that. You have Gallant famously even allowed any aid to go inside, even with restrictions that they obviously very quickly implemented. When asked why, are we allowing any aid into this terror territory? Yoav Galan said, well, America asked us, what are we supposed to do? Say no. Palestinians are starting to realize that Western left to see them primarily as expendable shock troops in a war that Western left is warmonger for, but never actually go fight in. <laughs> Nonstop sirens going off in Israel. Fuck your ceasefire. Flatten Tel Aviv. What? I'm sorry, but who the fuck are you to say fuck your ceasefire? You're not even a Palestinian. Your life is not at risk. Your family isn't starving. I love the I love the genre of tweets of like um I love the genre of tweets as though like Noah Smith is on the side of Palestinians at all. Like he found one fucking random person with a real aggro perspective. He saw someone else from uh I assume potentially Palestinian uh Palestinian descent or Palestinian themselves or living in the West Bank or whatever saying uh understandably, what do you mean fuck your ceasefire? That's a ridiculous fucking position to have. The fuck your ceasefire position, I mean. Okay. And he went, yeah, this is, how the, this is what the leftists believe. They're fucking warmongers. Yes, dude, you're right. The neoliberal that champions U.S. foreign policy unconditionally, including with respect to Israel's offensive genocidal campaign, is not the warmonger. It's that one random fucking uh, uh, overzealous Twitter supporter. Come on, dog. Expendable shock troops in a war that Western left is warmonger for, but will never actually go fight in. Yeah, my favorite genre of tweet. Arguments with a figment of tweeters of the tweeters imagination. Yeah. Strikes me as odd. Have been launched since mid October. Thinks the broader Western left is against this position. Perhaps does he simply think the Biden admin for continuing Are you okay? Wait, why? Do I seem not okay? Context here is, though, talks in Cairo just started, and after the withdrawal, there's a lot of posturing from both sides. Netanyahu is posturing about a, a, a Rafah invasion uh, as a point of pressure in negotiations, so it doesn't seem like the move is Hamas is getting free shit. Hamas, on the other hand, is posturing that it's not impressed and is taking its time. Internally, both Ben Gavir and Smotsky threaten to, threaten to kill the government if the war ends without a Rafah invasion. Insane. You seem upset. Yeah, um, I'm covering a genocide. <laughs> it's kind of upsetting.
Anyway. Here's the Rafa invasion uh, plans that Netanyahu claims he has, but the State Department does not know when it will happen or how it will Prime happen. Prime Minister just said, like, in the last hour or so that a date for the Rafah invasion has been set. Um, have the Israelis shared that date with the U.S.? To my knowledge, we have not been briefed on that date. And given the Prime Minister just said, like, in the first and the round. The, the issue, the, 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 the situation of getting aid into Gaza remains incredibly difficult. Because the Israelis won't let you do it. Basically. The Israelis won't. By the way, to answer what that chatter was saying, or to, I guess, uh, compliment it a little bit with additional information, the demands made by the Palestinian envoys has been pretty clear cut since the last ceasefire, which is uh, the release of hostages uh, in tears uh, and a full blown permanent ceasefire executed over the course of the upcoming six months, which was like a couple months ago. So that date keeps changing. Okay. Netanyahu's government, on the other hand, has said no to those very reasonable demands. The step-by-step -step plan that Hamas had implemented for a temporary ceasefire that turns into a permanent ceasefire is pretty fucking reasonable. It got very little coverage outside of this channel. It got very little coverage in mainstream media. But that has been their position almost in perpetuity. Netanyahu, on the other hand, does not want to engage uh, in a permanent ceasefire. He wants the hostages back, and he wants to continue pummeling Gaza. Which is a wild thing to openly admit you want to do. Like, I feel like even lying about it would be better in this situation and be like, yeah, yeah, we will, we will do a permanent ceasefire and then not actually do it. Which goes back to what the chatter was saying, which is because he has a lot of internal pressure from the Israeli public and also specifically from his war cabinet to make promises that he will not, uh, he will not uh, end the war. It also corresponds to his interest of not losing power because he doesn't want the legal scrutiny that will inevitably come, considering that he has uh, been under uh, investigation for quite some time over charges of corruption and, and those, uh, you know, all of those cases were halted when he got back into power with this incredibly right-wing coalition. So... It is just as bad as you think it is. It is, this is one of those very few instances where there is legitimately a open and shut black and white, good guy, bad guy uh, situation. One party is the good guy here and one party is the bad guy here. As it usually, uh, as it usually happens with genocide. It's not that they won't let us bring aid in, but the process for bringing aid in is convoluted, it, it's time-consuming, uh, it's extremely difficult to bring aid in through the one commercial cro one crossing point that was designed for goods that is still opening. Once we've got aid into Gaza, there's the issues of, of distributing it around Gaza Strip. There, there are issues of availability of trucks, conditions of law and order on the ground, and our inability as UNRWA to distribute food to, to, to northern Gaza, which we've been calling for, which the international community has been calling for for several months, and all the more so since the reports on famine came out a few weeks ago. Well, I mean, what's happening with, you know, the, cro the crossing's supposed to be open now, isn't it? So wh why isn't... Crossings are open. Uh, the crossing, Kerem Shalom crossing in southern Gaza is open. It's not o open to the extent that is required to get in the 500 trucks a day that, that aid organisations, including UNRWA, say are required. It's but they said Erez was open then, didn't they? So, I mean, is it functioning? I mean, no, Erez is not functioning. We've seen the news plans to reopen Erez. Erez was also a, a passenger material, so the, a, a, a terminal. So the idea that Erez could, could substitute for the volumes of aid that needs to get in, and it's not just aid that needs to get in. You can't survive... You can, you can survive, but you can't live and you can't recover on a food parcel that UNRWA provides. We need the commercial crossings to open as well and the passage of commercial 
trucks to be allowed back into Gaza at the volume. I mean, the thing is, Israel wants... Why do we think Netanyahu genuinely wants the hostages back? No, no, he doesn't want the hostages back. If you think that Benjamin Netanyahu legitimately, honest to God, wants the hostages back, you might be, and I'm not saying this chatter is, but like anyone who tries to tell you that Netanyahu legitimately cares about the hostages or the safety and security of Israeli civilians uh, since October 7, okay, is the dumbest goof of all time. Netanyahu does not give a fuck. Bro, Israelis don't think Netanyahu cares about the hostages. Why do you think there have been massive protests in the streets? Like, people who love the pummeling campaign of Gaza, the bombing campaign of Gaza, do not love that, like, the, their family members are still trapped in Gaza. Even the fucking family members and their friends are criticizing Benjamin Netanyahu's actions. Like, they're like, dude, get the hostages out and then continue the fucking war. What are you doing? Like, people who genuinely do not care about... Palestinian lives at all who openly say like Benjamin Netanyahu is the bad he, he's not a good person to do this offensive campaign are angry at him because he's killing too many fucking hostages as I understand it what was discussed today was a twofold six week ceasefire without follow up which I won't go into because Hamas, of course, won't take it. The second was a broader framework for a three-step path to a perma ceasefire. The U.S. reportedly taking a more active role, trying to lock in an agreement on civilians return to north with keys for exchange. This is because Israelis are scared they'll lose leverage on exchange if civilians return early. Oh, yeah, lol is showing. Likud polls at 19 mandates, lol. It's pathetic. Yeah. He is completely cooked. He's cooked. But polls show Israelis prefer the genocide of the hostages? No. You're, you're missing the forest for the trees there. Israelis want the genocide to continue, but there is enough Israelis now that want to free the hostages before the genocide continues. The overwhelming majority of Israelis want it to continue. Okay? That is a given. With no care or consideration for the civilians, that's like 80% plus of Israeli Jews at least that have been polled that believe that this bombing campaign has to continue, okay? Uh, and, and, you know, the protests right now that you see in Israel are not about the genocide. The protests that you see right now in Israel are about the bombing campaigns that are killing hostages, Israeli hostages. A, a future without UNRWA at all. I mean, it says it doesn't trust you. Is that possible? I think right now, given the gravity, given the complexity, given the scale of the humanitarian situation in Gaza, you can't, this is not an organization that you can turn off. UNRWA is a lifeline to hundreds of thousands and millions of people inside Gaza. You can't replace that with anything else overnight. It's, uh, you starve UNRWA and you do, you do starve Gaza in many ways. And, and so what, what is the immediate need right now? The immediate need in Gaza is for the, for the bombing to stop, for a ceasefire to hold, for the release, unconditional release of hostages and for the crossings to open to allow UNRWA and other aid organizations uh, to Thank get you, aid report. to the people that, that need it. We need the crossings to open in a sustained manner. We need to be able to operate in a safe way. The, the tragic case of the World Central Kitchen uh, workers who were killed last week are yet more aid workers, Palestinian and in Palestinian who've been killed since the start of the conflict, almost 200, the vast majority of whom are UNRWA workers, many killed in the line of duty whilst discharging their humanitarian functions. Samros, thank you very much. News poll 12, half a year into the war, the state camp is weakening, the Likud and yes, Atid are getting stronger. According to the survey, Gantz's state camp wins 32 mandates and Likud 19. More in the survey, who performs better in a war cabinet and who's primarily responsible for the crisis with the U.S.? According to the survey, only 14% are sure that the Israeli government is doing everything to return the kidnapped. Holy shit. They do not... Th I mean, it's understandable that they don't personally think that 
Um, they don't personally think that Israel's doing everything they can to return the hostages. That makes sense. 14%. Those 14% are like the hogs, by the way, of Israel. Those are the guys who are the bibists. Half a year since the outbreak of the war in a News 12 survey that we published last night in the main edition suggested the state camp led by Benny Gantz would be the largest party in the Knesset with 32 seats if the elections were held today. Wait, hold on. I think. One second. Chat is one second. Fuck. What just happened? Sorry. And we turn now to John Kirby. He is the coordinator for strategic communications for the White House National Security Council. Welcome back. Thanks, Margaret. So uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu says Israel's one step away from victory, but they still plan to go into Rafah. Has Netanyahu agreed to President Biden's request to make this targeted and not a ground assault? We have been very clear with the prime minister and his team that we don't support a ground operation in Rafah, that there are other ways other options that they need to look at for how they're going to go after the Hamas threat that still is in Rafah. We had a virtual meeting last week. We expect to have an in-person meeting with Israeli counterparts in the next week or so. We're still narrowing down the schedule where we hope to be able to present in more detail our thinking, some of our alternatives, the kinds of things that we want them to learn from our own experiences uh, about how to do operations of this regard. So as you heard, the IDF says this is an evolution of the war to draw down some of these troops. Exactly what are they preparing for? Is this for another front in this conflict? Well, I, I certainly wouldn't speak to IDF operations or their planning one way or another. It's they a sovereign military. The, uh, the indications that we've uh, we've been getting from them this morning is this is really largely rest and refit for troops that have been on the ground consecutively now for four months and they need a chance to come to come out. Now, what they'll do with those troops after a rest and refit, I, I can't speak to. All I can do is say what I said before. We don't support a major ground operation in Rafah. That has not changed. And we're looking forward to having conversations with the Israelis about alternative to those kinds of operations. You know there has been a large amount of criticism and skepticism as to how Israel is waging this war in the wake of the deaths of those seven humanitarians this past week. Yes. You said on Tuesday the U.S. has not found any incidents where the Israelis have violated international law. How far-reaching is the U.S. investigation of Israel? I wouldn't call it a U.S. investigation of Israel. We have a normal process the State Department uh, runs and governs where they take a look at uh, incidents, particularly those that are being con uh, operations being conducted by partner countries, and they look at them and they assess them. Uh, against international law. And they're doing that in real time, uh, Margaret. So some of them they've, they've looked at and concluded, some they're still looking at. So they may be in violation of international thus law. Thus far, thus far, as I said the other day, we've not seen any indication that they have violated international humanitarian law, but we take this seriously. They take it seriously at the State Department and we'll keep looking at this. Well, the Secretary General of Doctors Without Borders uh, rejected Israel's explanation of what happened in that World Central Kitchen attack. Yeah because he, he lost staff in Gaza, as have other humanitarians, more than 200 dead to date. Take a listen. We do not accept it because what has happened to World Central Kitchen and MSF's convoys and shelters is part of the same pattern of deliberate attacks on humanitarians, health workers, journalists, UN personnel, schools and homes. This is not just about implementing an effective deconflection mechanism, our movements and locations are shared, coordinated and identified already. This is about impunity, a total disregard for the laws of war, and now it must become about accountability. This isn't a mistake, he says. This is a deliberate 
pattern, and he is not the only aid organization to say so. Well, we certainly Will there be accountability? We understand the frustration that they have. We share that frustration, and there have been too many aid workers killed by Israeli operations, and that is why the president was so firm with Prime Minister Netanyahu in their call this week about they've got to change the way they're doing this. And the deconfliction process does matter, because there is already communication between aid workers and, and the IDF. It's pointless. Clearly it's not working. This, it's clearly, clearly failing. Clearly this broke down. No question about it. We're not arguing that it hasn't. We're, our, our case to the Israelis is you got to do more. You got to do it better. It's got to improve. It's because we've already seen some aid organizations now pulling. Oh, we got to do better, man. We just got to. I don't know how, but we'll do it. There will be accountability, but it won't come from the West. I mean, there will not be accountability. Full context, Gantz had a high 40% uh, 40 projected seats a few months ago, and as his joining of the union cabinet was seen as a showcase of national unity. Ever since, his party co-leader Zahar split from the party because he wanted to leave the cabinet. Since his new party is below the threshold and in conjunction with calls for him to leave the government, he's been he's slowly been following. There are also massive changes on the far right and far left. And back, not just World Central Kitchen, but others. Uh, this is a time when the people of Gaza need food, water, medicine, fuel right. more than any. But so the president's own national security memorandum stipulates, as you know, that there can't be an impediment to delivery of aid. So is negligence, gross negligence, failure to communicate, failure to follow through to protect these aid workers a violation? Is there any certainly, accountability? Certainly those things are not acceptable. And again, that was the, the tenor and the tone of the conversation that Prime Minister, I'm sorry, the President had with the Prime Minister. They have taken some measures of accountability here in the immediate wake of the of the World Central Kitchen. Two soldiers. Uh, two, two were fired. Uh, we're going to be looking to see, well, first of all, we're going through the investigation ourselves right now. We want to reserve judgment until we've had a chance to look at their findings. And we certainly expect, and this is an important point, that the announcements that the Israelis have made, while welcome and important, can't be the end of it. Mm -hmm. We've got to see sustained changes in the way they're operating on the ground and the way they are allowing humanitarian assistance to get in unmolested. And, and as you know, the Israeli government says that had nothing to do with the president's calls. They had already planned to take some of these measures. The president specifically asked for the measures that we saw them announce uh, that later that evening and then the coming oh, day. Oh, God. So we'll see if they follow. Oh, God, it's so fucking cooked. It's so extra. It's extra cooked that, like, they're saying that the president doesn't even have a hand in this. It's just kind of happening on its own. That's crazy. That certainly makes things worse. Follow through. Um, the former defense secretary, who you know well, Leon Panetta, said on CNN, in the past, in my experience, the Israelis usually fire and then ask questions. Is the Biden administration position still that there should be zero conditions on aid military aid to Israel. I'm not going to get ahead of the president or decisions he might or might not make going forward. He was very clear in his call with the prime minister that if we don't see some changes in their policies in Gaza and the way they're prosecuting operations, we're going to have to make some changes so of our do, own. You do think these are Israeli policies then I'm, to block aid? They have, they have, they get to decide how they prosecute this war. It's their operation. We just talked about them pulling troops out and what that means. They get to decide how they prosecute operations. We get to decide how we're going to react to that and how we're going to administer our own policy with respect to Gaza. We make those decisions. And the president was clear with the prime minister. If there's not changes, if things don't get better, then we're going to have to make changes of our own. So the president is considering withholding, conditioning, I, I, doing anything here? Because for six months now, we have been hearing complaints like this. Humanitarians on this program telling us what's happening. Uh, look, again, we, we see it ourselves. We're, we're not blind to the risk that the aid workers are in, certainly not blind to the suffering that the people of Gaza are going through. And the president, again, was clear. I won't get ahead of him, Margaret. I won't uh, uh, prejudge decisions he will why or won't make. I have heard from but him we, on this. If he feels so strongly, why isn't the president out there talking about you this? You saw his statement after I the read a paper. Minute. Minister's call with the prime minister, and he will continue to talk to the American people and the members of Congress about what we're doing and what we're not doing. It is of direct national security concern, is it not, that 
As the director of national intelligence says, there is a generational impact from what is happening on the ground there. No question. That there could be an impact on terror recruitment no long term here. No question. I mean, so the, what is the U.S. policy other than wait and see? It's not wait and see. I have to take issue with, with that. That is not the policy at all. Two things can be true at once. You can still be a friend of Israel and make sure that they have what they need to defend themselves. And they do need things. I mean, we're talking about the war in Gaza, rightly so. Completely understand that. But they're under threat. They live in a tough neighborhood. They're under threat Absolutely. from Iran and Iran-backed groups all around. They still have a need to defend themselves. How they do that matters. Yeah. How they conduct these operations matters. And that's what we're talking to them about. And we need to see some changes in the how, or we'll have to make some changes in our support. Is there a timeline for when they need to, to act by? Because we're, these... we're, we're looking right now. I mean, again, they, they made some announcements in the, in, the, in the few hours after the call. They made some another announcements in the next day about opening up crossings. All that's welcome. But we're going to be watching this very, very closely. It has to be sustained and it has to be verifiable. John Kirby, thank you very much. One of the more uniquely evil individuals in this administration or in any administration is this fucking guy. I think that the fact that it is a relatively tough, like somewhat tough interview is kind of shocking. I guess like it spells that, that there's definitely an attitude change from mainstream media. Uh, like the, the situation demands that there is infinitely tougher questions being asked, but, um, I guess like if I if I pull myself out of like the immediate um uh, it is a uh, it shows that it shows that the the attitude from the state or at least like uh the mainstream media is changing as well. It's unheard of or unimaginable to consider someone like Nancy Pelosi for example uh demanding that America conditioned weapons shipments to Israel. And that's precisely what happened this past week. So I think that uh, many, many more people are coming to that same conclusion that we in this community were at already, that like Israel's actions are unsustainable. It is actually hurting Israel. It is actually uh, hurting America's interests in the region because they've gone above and beyond. <laughs> hurting Israel. Yes, it is. America wants Israel to continue. America wants Israel to continue being this, this apartheid state or whichever, like whatever, a, a destabilizing, a successful destabilizing force in the region. The problem is, the problem is Israel is making it virtually impossible for there not to be a broader conflict. One that, you know, opens up new fronts of war because they are so they've gone so above and beyond doing such unimaginable cruelty to this to this massive population that it occupies the territories of that it's getting to a point where it is virtually impossible to avoid it's just not you know it, it the and a broader conflict doesn't suit their interests it's like the trump equation with capital owners right there will always be people who can make money from a crisis Except too much instability, too much instability is not good for capital owners. So Donald Trump is only as good. Donald Trump is good when he is uh, deregulating and doing some crisis, but too much crisis is going to make it harder for capital owners to make money off of. Israel is behaving like Donald Trump. A little bit of crisis is fine. A little bit of destabilization is fine. It is permissible, especially when it plays into America's broader agenda in the region. Too much of it, and all of a sudden you have a broader conflict. 
when you get to a broader conflict, well, then that makes it all the more harder to make money off of. Especially if Israel doesn't exist. Hold on. Fuck. Okay. Fourteen point eight ounces of chicken. Straight white chicken breast. Today marks six months of war in Gaza, six months since the horror of October 7th and the deadly terror attack on Israel that killed more than 1,200 Israelis with more than 100 hostages still believed to be held by Hamas. It's also been six months of Israel's devastating response, causing widespread... Yeah, this is another thing that I think is very interesting. I noticed this in mainstream media. The coverage shifted quite dramatically where like for the longest time it was just like October 7. They only mentioned October 7. And it was atrocities in October 7 for months and months and months. Rarely ever talking about the atrocities occurring in Gaza. It does seem like that has shifted. It does seem as though uh, mainstream media still, of course, frequently mentions October 7 regularly. And yet... And yet, they do, uh, they do factor in what Israel is doing in direct, with like direct quotes. In a way that they never had before. Spread destruction across Gaza and taking the lives of more than 33,000 Palestinians, according to the Hamas run health ministry, and leaving the territory on what the UN has called the brink of famine. But it was the loss of seven aid workers this week that seemed to galvanize a new level of outrage. These seven individuals from around the world, including one dual American Canadian citizen, working with the relief group World Central Kitchen killed by repeated drone strikes of their clearly marked convoy, despite the group having coordinated their location and movements with the IDF. World Central Kitchen was founded by renowned chef turned philanthropist Jose Andres, his organization providing meals around the globe in the most dire circumstances, from the aftermath of natural disasters like earthquakes and hurricanes, to war zones from Ukraine to Gaza, where World Central Kitchen has served millions of meals to Palestinians. That work now paused after the attack that Israel admits was a grave mistake. So I sat down with Chef Jose Andres to discuss his emotional response to the death of his colleagues and what he believes both the Israeli and U.S. government should be doing to address this war's deadly toll. At what point did it sink in for you? the enormity of this loss? Well, has not sink in yet. I'm still going through the process. Um, but it's a lot of work to be done. We are a small organization, and right now we are in the middle of this. Bro, uh, so the people saying, start... like, the people that went in there are sketch. They're allegedly former MI5, MI6 contractors or whatever. No, dude, they're former fucking veterans. In a lot of instances... Former veterans provide security for uh, phil philanthropic organizations in, in conflict areas. Like, that's just, uh, that that is normal. I mean, I don't know if these guys have also done work or whatever, but, like, I don't know why people are so focused on the fact that they might be, um, you know, they might have worked in, like, uh, espionage of some sort. But volunteer, uh, veterans volunteer for, for aid organizations to provide uh, security all the time. And a lot of veterans themselves also do personally just volunteer in general. Like, they become aid workers. So, it is unsurprising. 
that those there were some people there that were uh, veterans. Sorry that we wish we were not part of. We are an organization that we want to go to difficult places and bring food to people and bring joy to people. Because people, when it's about food and water, they need you today. So for me, I think uh, the grief is going on, especially the members I knew closely. <laughs> so me, I spent a lot of time with her in missions. Um, she was always a joy and was a very beloved member of the community. She is like a sister. Uh, Damien, who was a newest member, and so this hits home because that's, uh, that's, that's people I, I, I serve next, next to, and, and they're the example of who we are, and that they put in themselves in harm's way to try to bring hope uh, and smiles to others. You wrote a very emotional tweet this week about, about Zomi, saying, I wish I never founded your organization. You would be alive somewhere today, smiling and making somebody somewhere feel like they were the most beloved person in the world. You said you wish you'd never founded World well, Central Kitchen. You know, um, I will forever have to live with this, as well as the families and all the members of World Central Kitchen. I, I, I founded it with one very simple idea. Can we provide food and water quicker than anybody else? Obviously, something like this makes you think. We did what we did because there's a lot of people that are always forgotten, people that are always voiceless. I know very often as many people that joined the organization because they saw me doing the work before. And this began being an organization of one that became an organization of millions. And these are seven, uh, internationals, um, six internationals, plus Saif, the, the Palestinian, who is buried, and I received the photo from his father, his family, on where he is already resting. And this has become news because it's six internationals that they've been uh, um, impacted by this war and where the dead now many are mourning. Indeed. This comes with, with, a, with a risk, and we try to minimize the risk. Who was going to tell me the day we were kind of celebrating that we had armored vehicles? Finally, armored vehicles that were very well marked, that we were doing the right protocols, that we were engaging with the IDF in the way we all should be doing. Like every new minute, everybody knew where everybody was. Who was going to... Is there an argument to say like Russia good or whatever? But when he was operating in um, Ukraine... His organization, when it was operating in Ukraine, they were attacked. Or rather, the area that they were operating in was bombed, but not deliberately. So, as far as, like, this being a unique phenomena, before Ukraine, I don't think that the World Central Kitchen had actually worked in conflict zones before. They were just more so uh, working with natural disasters. And they... Um, they recognize that, holy shit, like, you know, we are putting, um, we could technically be harmed in conflict zones in a way that is different than uh, natural disasters. Never directly and deliberately in this way, though. Like, I don't think he ever would have perceived that, I don't think he ever would have, like, he, he did not perceive that like Israel would legitimately fucking strike their cars. To tell me that these protocols will break in such a way. The initial report released Friday calling the drone strikes a grave mistake that should not have happened. Satisfied with that report? Well, I want to thank, obviously, the IDF uh, for doing such a quick investigation. 
But at the same time, I would say something so complicated, the investigation should be much more deeper. And I would say that the perpetrator cannot be investigating himself. But I would say we need more information. We need to see better quality videos. We need to be saying what was the conversations, the radio conversations between the different officers uh, and soldiers in charge of saying that those cars were a target because they were an imminent threat. Those weapons can only be used with very sophisticated drones. And we all know that those drones have high capabilities day and night with cameras that can see in very powerful way what's going on. That's one of the things that they said, is that they could not, because it was night, see the logo from World Central Kitchen, which was so clear on top of the vehicle. In the daytime, they said they couldn't see it at night. Do you buy that? Obviously, I would like to see high quality of the video, high quality of the images. I'm very sure that probably uh, those logos were visible. They were white cars. That logo is very colorful. Uh, even in a dark night, I guarantee you that those drones could be seen. They say that their drone video, and this has not been verified, this video, that they say shows Hamas operatives and they thought they one fired from an aid truck. Every time something happens, we cannot just be bringing Hamas into the question. I think IDF knows better than anybody that can be a better army. Yeah. Should be protocols, should be rules of engagement, that somebody has to be making sure that they happen in a war zone. It's way too many cases now of humanitarians dying. Many civilians, women, children, that the only thing they did was trying to get close by to somewhere that they were giving them flour or bread. This is not anymore about the seven men and women of World Central Kitchen that perish on this unfortunate event. This is happening way for too long. It's been six months of targeting anything that seems moves. This doesn't seem a war against terror. This doesn't seem anymore a war about defending Israel. This really, at this point, seems it's a war against humanity itself. That's why, yes, I'm requesting Israel, I'm requesting Prime Minister, I'm requesting IDF that this investigation and many others should be done right, should be done in an independent way. So not only for World Central Kitchen family, for the families of the deceased, but for every other NGO that has been targeted or has lost members to exactly understand how the IDF has been operating so IDF can learn from it. We can all learn from it. Jose, you said earlier this week in an interview, we were targeted deliberately nonstop until everybody was dead in this convoy. Do you believe at this point, from what you have seen, that they were deliberately targeted? Your aid group? That the convoy was deliberately attacked is obvious. Uh, the precision, uh, the continuous following over 1.8 kilometers until the three cars were totally uh, destroyed and all the members inside those three. Obviously, this was uh, a targeted. We could argue that the first one, let's say, was a mistake. The second, the third. Do you believe World Central Kitchen was targeted uh, on purpose? I, uh, my humanity tells me that obviously I don't want to believe that World Central Kitchen was targeted. And, and probably this was not the case. Because of sure they knew our movements, of sure they knew uh, our teams, of sure they were in direct yeah, contact. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, with the different people that coordinate. Uh, in these situations. But obviously this seems keeps happening. This breaking of communications keeps happening. Civilians must be protected. Humanitarian organizations must be protected. There are people that have names and last names. There are people that matter. They cannot be voiceless. They cannot be ghosts.
of wars that don't make sense. Obviously, IDF has a lot of questions to ask themselves. What exactly are they there for? Are they there really to bring home safely all those hostages that they still are suffering? I'm sure Israel had the right to defend itself. I'm sure what happened to, on October 7th to Israel is something that should never happen. That was an atrocity. Jose, we heard Benjamin Netanyahu first say before the investigation, it was a mistake, it happens in war. If we simplify things in such a way as Prime Minister Netanyahu has done, we are losing all the basis of what humanity should be there for. If somebody now suffering, that's the people of Israel. If somebody really understands the meaning of suffering, if somebody should be holding the highest standards of humanity, I would say that's also the people of Israel. Netanyahu says they will do everything they can to make sure nothing like this happens again. Do you believe him? It's a first step, but we know that leaders of the world and politicians, they give speeches that they never follow. These declarations of intentions needs to go alongside with real change of the people with boots on the ground. You spoke to President Biden. Did you say to him what you're saying to me now? I spoke uh, as a person. I spoke as the founder of organization. I spoke on behalf of the seven people who are no longer with us. I spoke about the hundreds of other humanitarians that they are no longer with us. And I spoke about the thousands of civilians that probably they had to be perishing in the way they are. You I say, President Biden, you, you, you can and America will stand behind you support the right of Israel to defend themselves on this massive attack. But at the same time, I, I will say that President Biden also can be defending and supporting the right of Palestinians not to die just trying to be getting a piece of, of bread. I think both truth can live in the same place. Oh. You can be a friend of Israel, and at the same time, you can be telling your partner in the Middle East, you cannot be conducting war in such a way. You cannot be destroying every building, every hospital, every school, every university. You cannot be destroying just the future for decades of more than two million Palestinians. And in the process, leaving them hungry, leaving them without water, or what is even worse? you shooting them in the middle of the street in the process of trying to have access to food. So what the White House did this week, it seemed like a very significant shift, saying there would be consequences if they didn't allow essentially more humanitarian aid and, and take more care uh, with civilian lives. Were you satisfied with that statement? I think there will be consequences is part of the problem. Should be already consequences. Support Israel right to defend itself, but you cannot be used given weapons that they are killing American citizens who are humanitarians. You can be supported. This is really good to hear, bro. It, it is really good to hear from someone like him because dude, even someone like him who wants to defend Israel, like really fucking bad like very obviously wants to defend Israel and has defended Israel really fucking bad since October 7 is coming to the recognition that like you can't fucking blow up hospitals you can't blow up universities like what the fuck are you doing like <clears throat> people that will never listen to me that think I'm a fucking terrorist Islamist fundamentalist will absolutely listen to Jose Andres okay this is a guy who has direct access to Biden, direct access to Obama, direct access to Netanyahu. And they lost him. Here's a guy who is still saying like, Israel has a right to defend itself. But what the fuck are you doing? So you need to understand like from the framework of a lot of normies, they don't see what Israel is doing as a continuation of it, its apartheid state. They see this as like, somewhat of an aberration it's different it's somehow different and it is different because it's like the same kind of severity but ramped up dramatically but it's good to see the normie perspective shift on this issue okay obviously it's the situation is is 
war crime after war crime uh and and it's a you know it's unconscionable fucking disgusting that tens of thousands of kids murdered in carpet bombing and none of these scumbags spoke up he needed his friends to die before he would buck the propaganda machine it doesn't matter i still i don't care i'll take any fucking allegiance i can get in this situation like i i i recognize that i understand that I mean, dude, aid workers, as far as aid workers goes, Israel killed 200 aid workers before everybody, everybody was like, whoa, 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 what the fuck's going on here? Let's calm down now, Israel. What are you doing? 200. Israel killed 200 aid workers this October 7 chat. But this is really, really important for two reasons. One, to understand the broader liberal position on the matter because we do live in a country where uh no people aren't fucking uh, uh rugged anti-zionists and two it's it's important to understand that uh this is a is a turning point for um liberals in general Bro, what's the purpose of your stream? You don't eat, say anything for half an hour, watch your phone, get stun locked on purpose to get the crowd going. I wonder where did the money go to your head? Mr. West Hollywood, just explain. Um, yeah, you got me. Uh, I apologize for not pausing and like dunking on Jose Andres as he's like crying and talking about how emotional his experience has been. Um, well, the real point of the stream is to serve you a three minute ad break. At the top of the fucking hour. That is the real point. You ain't hungry no more like you were when you was young, right? I can't tell if he's just trying to fucking bait or if he's just like being a dickhead. You gonna you gonna pause for three hours? This fucking guy can't is. Bro, he can't even get his fucking dumbass opinion straight. On on 4-7, he's mad I'm pausing too much. Now he's mad I'm not pausing enough. Half of the stream you eat or watch uh, uh, on your phone, like girls sending you news while people donate money they can't afford. That's pathetic. Wait, what do you mean girls are sending me fucking nudes and I'm looking at news that girls are sending me? While people donate the money they can't afford, that's pathetic. Okay, Mr. Big Shot, maybe humble yourself. Your ego is sky high. I like that, once again, the mind of a fucking dumbass uh, conservative is, uh, is always phenomenal. He's just like, dude, I've imagined that, like, girls are sending you nudes and it's making me angry. Anyway, my point is what? Dot, dot, dot. Well, it doesn't matter. The point is at the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free, baby. Here's the three minute ad break now. You were so up your own ass that you think people here don't matter. It's so crazy that you think 21,521 people in the chat right now are all fucking idiots. Like, you're the only smart one who figured it out. That, like, the 21,000 people in here are just, like, so fucking stupid. They're just, like, captive. Enslaved by the enchanting mouth sounds that I make on the one hour time frame that I do eat food. You know what I mean? Like, only you know the truth. None of them actually fucking don't get it. They don't get it. They're just captured here. No, this is not an ad bait, bro. This person is, like, legitimately just a mentally unhinged person. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah, these guys don't understand. They're so stupid. They have no way of... Uh, they have no way of dealing with anything. They just, like are in here captured by you, spending their last dollars on you. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, following for four days, you used to be like this. Well, that guy, we already know who this person is. This is a person who has been banned from the chat. So we made a sock account and then followed on the same day. April 4th account creation, following since April 4th. He just got banned for being a smarmy little dipshit. And now he is continuing that exact same energy on his new account, which will also be banned as well. He was so stupid that we, at least in the chat, thought, I guess maybe with a little bit of charitability, that he's just baiting so that he can hit a uh, three-minute ad break debate at the top of the hour. Look, see, last time you cried that 13K viewers were not enough, huh? I don't dislike you, but you got it in your head. I think I'm, what? But I got, it got your head. I think I'm not jealous. What are you saying, bro? This is also a false narrative. My, me being upset about not having, me being upset wasn't about having 13,000 viewers. Me being upset was about the fact that this community doesn't enjoy things beyond politics, beyond the media politics. I do recommend you take your medication though, Chatter. This is a D fan loser. Yeah, probably. That we are normie repellent, as I said. That when we do stuff that's not immediately political, people have this like weird reaction to it. You need to figure out what you're uh, hating on. Anyway. Hopefully you get better though. It's a waste of time. You don't like politics? Well, interact with your viewers instead of ignoring them like you the messiah. Okay, dude. I'm going to ban you right now. How does the son just ignore me? What is he, my therapist? Good one, Miss Kiff. This guy literally is upset that out of 23,000 people in here, he's like, well, he is also not even being ignored. He doesn't get enough. He doesn't get enough attention from daddy. King Israel, right to defend himself. But at the same time, you can be asking Israel to conduct themselves at the highest possible human level. They opened two more yeah. crossings. Uh, the Israelis Especially announced, in a community is that, that enough? Obviously, it's a first step to open new entry points into Gaza. But at the same time, to make sure that they're open, and hundreds of trucks can go through each one of them. Um, this will be a first step. But at the same time, how we do it that is safe? Let's the humanitarian aid flow. Let's make sure that the IDF has a real reckoning on how they conduct war. Who are the enemy? Who really are they fighting? Jose, not only have you suffered this tragedy and the loss of your employees, you care so much about getting humanitarian aid in there, about getting food in there, and you can't do it right now. So how and when can you come back? We need to make sure that the humanitarians doing this work are safe. Hundreds have died, close to 200 already. Um, uh, in a way, I'm, I'm sad that there had to be the killing of six foreigners that brings all this outrage. Sometimes history is written, unfortunately, in moments like this. But if it's anything that the lives of these six heroes, brave souls, can bring, it's just the real understanding of what's really happening in Gaza. The answer of why all the destruction cannot be because it's a Hamas operative in every building. We cannot be winning a war destroying the livelihoods of two million people. This is not the way to create safety for Israel. This is not the way to create safety for the Middle East. This is not the way to create safety for a better tomorrow. I don't believe in higher walls. I believe in longer tables. What is good for me must be good for you. Your CEO said this was unforgivable. Despite what happens with the investigation, despite however more is done, is this unforgivable? 
It is unforgivable. Um, I will have to live with this the rest of my life. We all will have to live with this the rest of our lives. I've seen firsthand what has been happening in Ukraine. Entire towns and cities being wiped out by Russia and by Putin. What Prime Minister Netanyahu is doing is exactly the same. The best future we can be providing for our children is when we provide for the children of the people we don't know the same future and the same hope we are trying to provide for our own. What is so difficult to understand about that? Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking. This is good. It is good. Overall, you- it's a good thing that Jose Andres is out here fucking complaining the, about <clears throat> Israel's conduct. Losing a guy like Jose Andres after fucking hiring him specifically or bringing him in specifically to um, Ben Gavir now has full control over home demolition, demolitions in Israel. Check previous messages. Nice. I do love that domestic Israeli policy is just like moving along, trucking along in the most fascist ways possible uh, in the foreground of this uh, ethnic cleansing campaign. It's great. All right. Now we're going to watch Norm Finkelstein versus Alan Dershowitz round two. You lock two million people in a concentration camp. Don't react with shock at what happened on October 7th. All they war crimes. Ultimately we they are not war crimes at all. But we're not letting Dershowitz. you impose a double standard on me. No, I'm going to finish my statement. It's an abomination to even suggest that martyrdom could justify what happened on October 7th. Shame. This is Jewish pure science fiction. Which have, no, everybody's listening now. Body. Here's Morgan it's has a very large audience. Here, please tell him to, to stop. You, the issue of settlements, I think, is it's pretty much indefensible. There's only one legal international yeah. legal body that, what? that says the blockade of Gaza is not comp- uh, collective punishment. You would not condemn the Nazis, Hitler, Goebbels, and Goering, because they too went through suffering after the end of the First World War. It's despicable. One of the things I'm told most often in debates about the Israel-Hamas war from both sides is that history... Bro. That's so funny. His argument about not defending Hitler due to the suffering after the First World World War literally is better suited for israel you dumb fuck why does israel always make like why do israeli de- uh, israel defenders always make arguments that immediately to like any kind of onlooker that understands it a little bit makes sense when better deployed against israel It is so odd to just be like, oh, yeah, you would defend Nazis, too, because they suffered uh, during World War I. Making that comparison as though, like, Norm is defending Hamas on October 7 because of the suffering that they engaged in. Bro, Hamas is retaliating against the apartheid state, dumb fuck. Not, the Jews were not responsible for the economic hardships after World War I. The fuck do you mean? Like, that argument only works if you legitimately believe Hitler, I guess. That you think, like, yeah, post-World War I, actually, the Jews did do all of the bad things that Hitler said they did. And they were actually responsible for the fucking um, atrocities. Not atrocities, but, like, the economic hardships uh, that, that the Nazis or Germans at the time were facing. And that's why they were just uh, retaliating against the Jews. didn't begin on October the 7th, and that is true. There's no context that justifies the Hamas terror attack that day, but it's wrong to deny that any context existed 
before that, six months on from the atrocity, we're debating that context here in more detail. There's not an argument about 3,000 years of ancestry and who got there first, but it is about the conflict and conditions over the last century that frame almost everything about the war that's raging today. My two guests are scholars with deeply opposing views, and a feud that's well documented has its own Wikipedia page. But they've agreed to debate with this uh, today with me over the ideas, I love this. not the individuals. Author and political scientist, Professor Norman Finkelstein, and the lawyer and author of War Against the Jews and former Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz. Well, welcome to both of you. Um, I thought we'd start uh, this, because it's, it's something that comes up all the time, where people say to me, it didn't start on October the 7th. And of course, I realize that the conflict uh, between Israel and the Palestinians is not something that began just a few months ago. Um, and you could argue it goes back thousands of years, but I'm not going to get into that part of the argument. What, what? I want to do is take as a starting point for the modern era of conflict, 75 years, of 1947, when the UK turned the Palestine problem over to the United Nations, who decided to split Palestine into two different countries. Let's take that as the catalyst for what has followed in the next 75 years. And what I want to do is give each of you... Wasn't this guy all over the Epstein dogs? Why, yes, that is esteemed tenured Harvard professor, um, and of course, more famously, Jeffrey Epstein's lawyer, Alan Dershowitz, a defender of not only Jeffrey Epstein and O.J. Simpson, but also a defender on the, according to him, the constitutionality argument of lowering the age of consent. That right there is Alan Dershowitz, of course. Now, one must ask themselves, why is it that every single fucking weirdo, why is it that Israel only has the weirdest motherfuckers defending it? Well... To be fair to Israel, it is quite hard to defend genocide publicly. At the start, two minutes or so, to just outline what you think happened at the start that has basically been the catalyst for what follows. So Norman Finkelstein, let me start with you. Just outline from 1947. That's the only reason why they can get like dudes who got banned off of fucking Twitch. People like Divorcelli, kick streamers like Divorcelli. And the likes of Alan Dershowitz. It's quite difficult to find a normal person with a conscience to defend the unjustifiable acts of Israel. Especially nowadays. It's funny because like, it's not like there aren't liberal Zionists out there. There are plenty of liberal Zionists out there. To be fair to the Dersh, Israel will literally be the only place he can hop on, to, on a jet to if he gets criminally implicated in the Epstein stuff or any underage sex stuff he's definitely involved in. Allegedly. Allegedly involved in. We were not going to say definitely, okay? Very litigious man. Listen, the guy who got famous debating white guys saying the N-word and how incest was morally neutral is now defending the genocide in Gaza. I'm shocked. Yeah. hi yi 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 But like I was saying, there are obviously like telegenic liberal Zionists out there. Why the fuck aren't they defending Israel is a question you might be asking yourself. And that's because... Well, yeah, it's currently incredibly indefensible. They know how to read the fucking room. They recognize... There is no defense for Israel's atrocities, uh, which are slated to only get worse, judging by what Israel has done so far. So those guys at least want to be able to preserve their media careers and, uh, you know, and be able to, to show their faces in public. If you're Alan Dershowitz, you don't care about that sort of thing anyway, because you are a ghoul. And people oftentimes, uh, oftentimes, oftentimes react to your face with, ah, and disgust. So he's the perfect guy to do it. What happened then that you believe created really the problem that followed? I think the problem that followed can be very easily summarized by two statements of the chief Israeli historian, Benny Morris. 
Statement number one, he said in his comprehensive history of the conflict, he states, one, that the fear of Arab displacement and dispossession was the chief motor of Arab resistance to Zionism. His second statement is the idea of transfer, which is what the euphemism for expulsion, the idea of transfer was inbuilt and inevitable in Zionism. That to me is the starting point. The fear, the rational fear of the Palestinian people that should the Zionist idea be realized, it would result in their territorial dispossession and displacement. It's no different than the fear of our own, meaning the US, Native Americans, that the success of the Euro-American enterprise in the United States would be at the expense of our native population. The fear, the rational fear of territorial displacement and dispossession. Okay, that's very clear. Alan Dershowitz, would you actually disagree with that in terms of an assessment of how this made Palestinians feel? And were they wrong to feel it? I wouldn't just, <clears throat> yes, uh, and, and yes, uh, I, they felt <laughs> and they were wrong to feel it. <laughs> I wouldn't disagree with that. I mean, yes, I do disagree with that. Anyway, um, I love that there was a chatter in here. It was like, N-word manifesto, context, please. Brother, no amount of context is going to help you understand the world like that, okay? That world is, is uh, indecipherable if you are even a little bit normal. Like, you might spend every goddamn waking moment of your life online, and that will still be fucking impossible to, to contend with. Just a lot of dudes out there online that love the notion, the idea, the freedom for white men to be able to say the N-word. It's like the most important thing for them. I have to go back just 10 years earlier. 1947-48, the Peel Commission was set up by Great Britain. It recommended dividing the mandate into a tiny little sliver of land uh, along the Mediterranean for a Jewish state where there was a Jewish majority, and the Jewish majority would what? determine how that was governed. Uh, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, the leader of the Palestinian people, said, rejected it. He said there's no such thing as the Palestinians. We're just greater Arabs, and, uh, and, and we don't want there to be a Palestinian state. We just want there not to be a, a Jewish state. And then in 1948... Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, the the Grand Mufti was like, we, I am the speaker of the Palestinians. He said he loves Adolf Hitler, okay? And of course, he was speaking for all Palestinians when he said this, famously, and wasn't just like simply a, a British colonial, um, like, a, like a British colonial position, appointment position. Um, he said, I speak for all Palestinians. When I say Palestine as a state does not exist, we are all Arabs. We would love to live in other Arab nations in the region. Like, for example, if there was, I don't know, another nation that was created sometime in the future, we would love to live there. You know what I mean? We'd love to go up north or we'd love to go to Egypt, as a matter of fact, or we'd love to go to uh, Jordan. Conveniently, this is what I believe. I love believing as the Grand Mufti with all the power. I'm saying this with every single, well, every single Palestinian who also agrees with me that we are just a united monolithic Arab. And the real reasons why we hate the 1947 partition is because we hate Jews. That's what he was saying. <laughs> yeah. He also, yeah, he also goes through uh, Mein Kampf. Isn't that strange how the Grand Mufti had so much foresight to, to basically prove all of the uh, arguments that he is about to launch? All of the arguments that he's about to launch about how, one, Arabs are monolithic, and two, there is no Palestine or Palestinian identity, and three that uh, they are actually motivated not by a, a, an interest in developing a nation state for themselves, but instead out of Jew hate. 
So strange. Okay, let's hear what uh, Norm Finkelstein has to say about this argument, which is beautiful. He, he hit all of the notes. When divided, again, giving the vast majority of the arable land, the land that's usable, to the Arabs, the, again, the Israelis accepted it, the Arabs rejected it. Again, there was a Jewish majority in the area that was set aside for Israel. But the Arabs attacked in a genocidal war and tried to destroy Israel. The key point, may have been motivated by fear, is that the Arab and Muslim uh, people desperately didn't want there to be a Jewish entity. For the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem was religious, that under uh, Islamic law, you can't give any land that was Muslim land over to a Jewish land. And then since that time, 19... What is he saying, bro? Wait, what? It, what? <laughs> bro. I have no idea what the fuck he's, he's talking about. He's like, no, 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 you don't understand. The Grand Mufti, who is a very important figure in this process, very important. Please don't look into it, okay? Please don't look into... <laughs> whether he was important or not, okay? He is the most important guy in Palestine, which doesn't exist. He admitted that it doesn't exist. I've also never heard that, like, Muslim land can never be given to non-Muslims or whatever the fuck. I've never heard that before, but maybe there's some, like, weird r slash atheism Andy out there who will explain to me that actually, as a matter of fact, some surah was misinterpreted as such or whatever the fuck, and that means that it really is a thing. But I'm pretty sure he just made that up. Which is weird because he's like adding a religious justification to the Mufti who like uh, I, I feel like he's adding a religious motivation to why the Mufti did not want um, uh, Jewish people to have a land or whatever. When he could have just kept it at like, yeah, he doesn't like Jews. He's anti-Semitic. Why did you have to add, like, uh, some Islamic scripture interpretation into it as well? I thought the original argument was that, like, Palestinians don't want an Israeli state because they hate Jews. 67, uh, 2000, 2001, 2005, 2007. Israel has been willing to accept a two-state solution, and every Arab leader has rejected it. And uh, Israel abandoned the, the Gaza Strip. Uh, in 2005, took out not only every living person, but every dead person who was buried, left behind hothouses and agricultural equipment. Yes, they had to protect their borders, and they only had the blockade, the major blockade, after Hamas took okay. over and we're getting a little bit. I'm stop you there, just we're getting a little bit ahead of where I want to get to at the start of this debate. Yeah, by the way, it is weird. Even before Zionism, you're absolutely correct. Jews owned property in historical Palestine and all over the Ottoman Empire, which I guess the the... <laughs> They, they just didn't know. Christians did, too. So strange that, like, uh, the Ottoman Empire personally, uh, you know, having uh, control over the caliphate, fucked that part up, I guess, and weren't being a real one to the Muslimic law and the Muslimic code of conduct, according to Alan Dershowitz, who knows better than everybody else, of course. Sure. Um, you've outlined your response to, to what Norman said there. Norman, in 1948, we had the NABCA, the catastrophe, as Palestinians call it. It's because the UN <clears throat> couldn't get people to agree to the proposal. Israel declared itself a state. War broke out. Uh, Israel gained more land. Special taxes on Jews were a thing. Not just on Jews. Special taxes on non-Christians were a thing. It was... Uh, they also... <clears throat> yes, it's called jizya. In the Ottoman Empire, there were special taxes specifically on non-Muslims, okay? Christians and Jews were made to pay jizya. It was in place of serving in the military, with the exception of, of course, Dev Shirme forces, which were, uh, you know, Janissary, like the highest, uh, not only the highest paid, but highest trained units in the Ottoman military. Uh, Muslims could not be Dev Shirme. Now, that tax was abolished, but regardless, if you ask the uh, Jewish people at the time, they much preferred living under Ottoman territory rather than a place like Spain, for example, as many Jews had fled Spain and come to the Ottoman territory at the time because they were not being murdered. So... You know, on the one hand, you have Inquisition and pogroms. On the other hand, you pay a tax, but you have property ownership 
and have basically all the fucking uh all the same amenities and all the same rights <clears throat> you need to relativize history i mean in some respects i guess you do um Yeah, Jizya is also less than Zakat, uh, percentage-wise, I think. But it doesn't really matter. Anyway. The Jews fled Spain in, 19, uh, in 1492 after the crowd banned them. Before that, they were growing in equality, slowly but surely. Yeah. During the Reconquista, the Spanish let Muslims convert and simply killed Jews. Bro, you can't fucking say that, like, the Jews would have... You can't do revisionism on uh, on Spain, right? Like, saying that, no, 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 you don't understand. The Jews were surely about to get equality. When historically, this also predates... This literally predates uh, the Holocaust. We know what happened to Jews in Europe. Like, that's a wild, and that was much closer to today than, you know, the Spanish kingdom. So, like, obviously, I don't think anyone would make the argument that, like, Jews were pretty safe in Europe. They were not. Yeah, not the, not, I'm going to issue a spoiler alert here and offer you a little bit more clarity on, on what happened throughout history. But that's wild to even consider. There has never been historically a greater enemy to Jewish people than various different Christian sects. One hundo p. Like not even a not even a question. Anyone who disagrees with that, in my opinion, is revisionist. Straight up. Christians in general just don't really... I know that a lot of people say like, oh, Muslims hate non-believers. Like they want to kill the infidels or whatever. It's in the Quran. But like historically, historically speaking, and even in contemporary society, like especially when you factor in the, the Crusades and whatnot, Christians just really fucking don't like non-Christians. We don't really care about that sort of thing anymore. We've moved beyond it. It's more of a, you know, a, that killing is now conducted in the interest of capitalism. One could maybe make the argument that it was in the interest of plunder regardless. But like the galvanizing factor was definitely Christianity. Christians don't even like other Christians. It's true. There is that too. But I guess you could say the same about Muslims, I guess, when you talk about, like, uh, Saudi Arabia versus Iran, like Shia Sunnis or whatever. But, like, even then, that's marginal in comparison, in my opinion, to um, Christian infighting. And I think this is uncontestable, than the UN originally assigned, mm -hmm. and many Palestinians were forced out of their homes. It's also true that at the same time, many Israelis were forced out of, or many Jewish people were forced out of their homes in Arab uh, country. So there was a lot of displacement going on on both sides. And I would ask you, if you look at that in totality, some people have said to me, you know, if you actually go back to this period in time, both sides have a legitimate cause for complaint. Would you agree with that? I can't agree with that because we have to stick hard and fast to the factual record. The factual record is fairly clear on what happened in 1947 to 49 in the case of Israel and Palestine. Roughly 750,000 Palestinians uh, from what became the state of Israel were either expelled or fled in fear and ended up... I went to a Jewish museum in Granada, Spain. They said the Jews were always treated well, especially in comparison to the Christians after the Inquisition. Wait, what? I mean, I guess after... What happened before and during? Can confirm I was told the same in Spain. <laughs> but even then, I don't agree with it. Um, <clears throat> in 
In Al Andalus, we were treated well, but that was Muslims too, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Spain, and I don't remember there being any Jews in Spain. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. Much to consider. <laughs> I went to Germany and saw that there weren't that many Jews in Germany, which is really confusing when you think about how many Jews used to live in the region, in the surrounding region. I'm sure something must have happened that caused many to flee. The refugees. Now, it's important to keep in mind, Pierce, yeah, because Poland you and I well. think generously agreed to talk about the background. Frankly, I think you're the first person mm -hmm. I've noticed willing to talk about the background. That 200 and about 270,000 of those Palestinians who were expelled during the first uh, Arab-Israeli war, they ended up in Gaza. So if we want to take the point as a point of departure, 1947 to 49, the point of departure for Gaza is exactly the same. That's how Gaza became Gaza. 70% of the population of Gaza were, became Palestinian refugees. Now, as to the question of what's sometimes called a population exchange between the Arabs who resided in, excuse me, the Jews who reside in the Arab world versus the Arabs who resided in what became the state of Israel, there really isn't, I don't want to get involved now in a scholarly debate uh, because it's simply not the time and place, but there isn't any good scholarship on what happened with those Arabs, Arab Jews in 1948. Some like the Yemeni Jews, everybody agrees they came willingly. The, the question of the Iraqi Jews, it's kind of a blur what happened. I'm not going to take one position or another on it. But I don't think those other aspects of the conflict ought to uh, distract us from the fundamental question that you asked. And I think it's a very good question to look at the back. Bro, literally, I'm sorry. It's really funny that you just said something where you sent me the Wikipedia page of the museum and you were like, this is the museum. And like the Wikipedia page very openly has this right here. What do you think this is? The Sephardic Museum in Granada, the officially, officially the Jewish Quarter Museum, is a small museum in the city of Granada, Spain, dedicated to the recreation of the culture, history, people, and traditions of the Sephardic Jews of Jewish Granada. The museum, a private initiative, occur, uh, occupies a typical house in Realejo, the Jewish Quarter of Granada, before the expulsion of the Jews in 1492. Like, you know. Like, it's. That's it. That's like, that's the point. I mean, I'm not making fun of that chatter, by the way. I'm just saying that, like, even the. The, the obvious. Uh, you know, the, the regardless of what the, uh, the museum says, like, it's built after some stuff happened, you know? Anyway, let's get back to the fucking actual main point here, which is Piers Morgan trying to both sides the expulsion stuff. Background. And the background to what happened, what happened on October 7th, it began with the expulsion of about 300,000 Palestinians into Gaza, and now they, comp they comprise about 70 to 80 percent of the population of Gaza and their descendants. Okay, well, Adam Dershowitz, you're, you're disagreeing with, with what you're hearing there. Why? Fundamentally, the Nakba was a self-imposed wound. Ben-Gurion, when he announced the establishment of Israel, welcomed all the Arabs. Isn't it crazy how Arabs just keep hitting themselves, dude? Palestinians specifically. I have to say that Norm here is wrong on this specifically. Yemeni Jews weren't expelled, but they didn't leave in a vacuum. In December 1947, there was a pogrom in Aden. That the Jewish community from which half my family comes from was devastated. That was background of the immigration. Yes, I I am not a denier of of some of the uh, or or many of the uh, Jewish communities that came from other uh, surrounding Arab countries uh, left on their own. Even though Avi Shleim specifically talks about Iraq and the Iraqi Jewish community. Um, there is obviously, there were a lot of expulsions that happened during periods of nationalism, post-colonial states, 
uh, becoming Nakba denial. Yikes. No, that's not Nakba denial. What the fuck are you talking about? You're misunderstanding the point. No, Jews were forcibly expelled, uh, expelled from uh, many of the surrounding Arab countries. This, none of this, of course, justifies Israel's ongoing apartheid regime or ethnic cleansing campaign, but that is a historical fact. Obviously, it's not the same, and there are differences between different countries, but most of it, if you want to have a, a, a reductive, broad, uh, if you want to have a, a broad generalization over the Arab countries and the expulsions that occurred uh, and the voluntary uh, uh, voluntary immigration into Israel from some of these countries on top of the expulsions, the major role that play the major factor here was Arab nationalist movements as as uh, many of these countries were becoming countries as we know it now, becoming states as we know it and as we understand it now. Like, as far as I understand, as to my knowledge, and I might be wrong on this, a lot of the Jewish community in Turkey. And there was a big uh, Jewish community in not just the Ottoman Empire, but like in Turkey proper, right? What we know as Turkey. Um, they voluntarily left to go to Israel. Many people. They did not leave because they were being uh, forcibly removed or anything like that, but they voluntarily left to go to Israel. There are examples like this as well. There's still a very small Jewish community in Istanbul and in Turkey in general that remained. But plenty went, uh, plenty left uh, for Israel voluntarily. In Iraq specifically, there's also collusion there with the Zionist agency, but I haven't heard that about other places. It absolutely is not the same as Nakba, but it's still, it's still immoral. And yeah, my paternal grandpa came from Turkey voluntarily. Yep. Did you know any Jews growing up? Um, No. I don't think so. I don't think I ever met a Jewish person until I came to America. Go kill yourself. Hassan is a spoiled brat. You suck. Go kill yourself. <laughs> Bro, your username is Twith Thoughts. Between you and I, who's closer to fucking offing themselves, you think? Like, honestly, I'm going to unban you because I need you to address this real quick. Like, who do you think lives a happier life? The Twitch streamer whose chat you're writing in or the guy who has an anonymous account dedicated to telling Twitch streamers to kill themselves, whose username is Twitch Thoughts? Jesus Christ, man. Please fix your life, dude. You have only one life. You said you. Okay. Well, let me help you. Okay. You have one life. We have a finite amount of time on this planet. Do you think one must ask themselves, do I think this is the best use of that time? Because every moment that you are wasting doing this shit you could be outside, you could be fixing whatever the fuck is going on in your life. You could be fixing yourself, maybe going to the gym, maybe touching grass, spending time with some friends, which I don't know if you have many, if you're, this is how you spend your time. You know what I mean? Says the person who can't take criticism. Bro, what criticism? You said you suck and you should go kill yourself. I think this is the issue that many people have online. I think that's not criticism. <laughs> that's just you mean, that's just you being kind of a mean person. Do you think this is criticism? Like what's your criticism that I'm alive and thriving? Northern line was so right. Oh yeah. No, the whole like, Oh man, why did you say that? Why did you ban me? I simply had a a fun, cool little criticism for you. Constructive, as a matter of fact. 
the criticism is that you're alive and breathing and having a good time. And uh, I think that you should stop being alive and breathing and having a good time and kill yourself instead. The cult of Hassan. No, my man. I do think you might be in a cult. A cult that fucking despises me and thinks I'm the great, the greatest danger to your mode of existence. But honestly, which, what do you think is more cultish thinking? A group of individuals who think saying you suck and go kill yourself is, is valid criticism or people that look at that and go, ew, that's gross. This dude thinks women on this platform is bad for the platform. How pathetic is that? Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to help you out, brother. Copium. Your followers are brain dead. Okay. This guy's good. I'm going to keep him. Can we keep him? I think we should keep him for now. Copium. He did say a bannable offense, though. Yeah, I mean, but that's a site-wide bannable offense. He'll probably get banned from the site. Ah, you did it, Brave Warrior. You definitely broke through today. You definitely successfully broke through to a lot of people by saying, I'm coping because I can't reckon with your genuine constructive criticism. Arabs to stay. He didn't want to expel a single one, but the Arab countries engaged in a genocidal war designed to kill every Jew and destroy Israel. It was as a result of that invasion that Palestinians left or were expelled. Now, I happen to have studied the situation with Iraqi Jews because I was one of those people who helped draft Resolution 242 at the United Nations, and we looked at great detail into the history of Jews in places like Iraq. In Iraq, there was a Nazi pogrom during the Second World War, and there were additional pogroms in other Arab countries in which Jews had no choice but to leave. And there was an exchange of population, much as there were in Sudetenland, much as there were in Pakistan and India, and every other country in the world. The refugees were incorporated, assimilated into the society. But UNRWA, this horrible, horrible organization, was set up to keep the Arabs refugees, to keep them in camps, to make sure there was a festering wound. The Jews were integrated into society. No, they weren't first-class citizens in the beginning, but now they dominate the country. The same thing could have happened to the Arabs who left Israel. They could have been integrated into the surrounding countries in Instead, they were kept in camps and told that they had to destroy Israel. They had to have a right of return. They had to go back. That history can't stop and you can't move forward. You have to only move backwards. So the sole fault for the refugees was the attack by the Arab countries designed to kill Israelis. That's when the expulsions and the leavings occurred. So I'm <laughs> designed to kill Israelis. Before Israel even existed, but mind you. Before I go, before I go, back, to, leadership. Before I go yeah. back to Norman uh, for response to that, yeah. from your understanding, how many Jewish people were displaced from their homes in this early period? Because I've heard it was, it was actually a lot. Be, it was between seven and 800,000 with probably a trillion dollars worth of wealth. These were people who had lived in these countries longer than the Muslims. They had lived there since the Babylonian exile. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, 2,000 years earlier. They had been full citizens. They were Demis. They were second class because they were not, not Muslims. But they lived in peace. And once this happened, uh, many were expelled. Some left voluntarily. I can see that to uh, Mr. Finkelstein. But many left. About the same number were left voluntarily. Remember, too, with the Arabs, they were told to leave and they would come back victorious after in Haifa, for example, many of them wanted to stay and many did stay. But the Arab leadership said, leave, we'll come back victorious, you'll have everything back. This is a complex situation. It's 75 years ago. There is a statute of limitations on things like this. Um much of it was a reaction to Arab nationalism in conjunction with Zionism. I mean, Arab Jews who were locals for centuries were seen with suspicion ever since Balfour, and especially the 1929 riots, even more so after the Biltmore Declaration, a which side are you on kind of thing. Whether or not they'd be included in the Arab nationalist project, IG, the answer became no in regards to Aden. I think one of the funniest arguments that a lot of Zionists also uh, point to with respect to like Palestinian Muslims and Christians being somehow different from 
the Jews that lived there 3,000 years ago is that many of the Palestinian Muslims and Christians that they're fucking killing are direct descendants of the OG Jews that just stayed there and converted. So that's also another very weird part of this, like, this is actually 4,000 years of history that you're denying uh, argument. Like, you're literally killing your grandparents. Like, the descendants of your grandparents. So there is that, too. There is that aspect to this uh, conversation as well. A moral statute of limitations. Move on. Establish yourselves in the countries that you left and went to. Get rid of these refugee camps. Get rid of UNRWA and become full citizens of the countries you moved to. UNRWA. The way my grandparents became full citizens of the United okay, States let me, let me after to... pogroms had made them leave Poland. Okay. I come to Norman Finkelstein. Your response to that. Okay. Thank you, Piers. First of all, as a general point, I agree with the notion of a statute of limitations on your claims to a parcel of land. The first time I came across that expression was reading Arnold Toynbee's great history of the history of the world, actually. And he makes the point in his history that isn't there a statute of limitation on the claims of Jews to Palestine? He said that claim was made 2000 years ago. And it's claimed that even today it's claimed that based on what happened 2000 years ago, there's a large portion of Israeli population who believes they have title to the West Bank. They have title to Gaza because of that claim 2,000 years ago. Isn't there a I statute of that. limitations? Allow me to complete my thought, and then you can disagree. Isn't there a statute of limitations on a claim from two to 3,000 years ago? Now, yeah. I want to focus on Gaza. I, want, I would like to focus on Gaza. The population is expelled from Israel into Gaza. Now, if you look at Benny Morris's history called Border Wars, he says that between 1949 and 1953, literally, listen closely, about 2,700 to 5,000 Palestinian expellees, that's including in the West Bank and in Gaza, between 2,700 and 5,000 Palestinian expellees were killed by Israel when they tried to return home. Now, Benny Mara says 90% of those killed were unarmed. They were what he called economic infiltrees who wanted to see their homes. They wanted to see yeah. their land. They wanted to see their neighbors. They were brutally, if you believe Professor Morris, brutally murdered between those years. It it's not just Professor Benny Morris. Professor Benny Morris is one of the people cursed, or I guess blessed, with uncovering the truth early on as a part of the New Historians. But since then, many more investigations were conducted, uh, which is ironic because the investigations I'm talking about weren't like, I don't know, uncovering some secret tomes or anything. It was literally just asking the, the, the early Zionist brigades and the veterans of said early Zionist brigades what they had done and then having them openly describe how they shot Palestinians that were trying to return to their homes under the directive from the Israeli government or even before then uh, the, the brigades themselves that were supposed to after the forcible expulsion was completed, not allow Palestinians to return to their homes. So Norm is talking about this part, um, and he mentions Benny Morris. True. But there's even more evidence than uh, simply Benny Morris's writings on this. 1956, as you know, Piers, England, France, and Israel invaded Egypt, including at the time, Gaza. What happened then? According to Benny Morris in the book Border Wars, he said between 470 and 500 Palestinian men were lined up and shot down. Now let's bear in mind, Piers, this is long, long before this entity called Hamas came into the picture. Now if we fast forward to 1967, after Israel occupies Gaza, there are new assaults on the people of Gaza, this time carried on by, at the time, defense, no, he wasn't defense, agricultural minister, Ariel Sharon. Now, without getting sidetracked, I do have to say, Professor Dershowitz, every time I listen to you, even when we debated each other in 2003, I guess, or 2004, I can't recall, you keep escalating your claims about having written UN Resolution 242 or contributed to the resolution. Professor Dershowitz, mm -hmm. I understand people have fantasies and I understand that people have failings of memory as they get older. But Professor Dershowitz, when we had a by the way, for those of you who don't know the background, I guess the short and sweet of it is that Norm Finkelstein 
um, found the academics claim uh, the academic claims made by a uh, Israeli scholar at the time or someone writing about Israel at the time to be fraudulent. Um, he cooked it. He he absolutely destroyed this other scholar at the time. Norm Finkels or not Norm Finkels, sorry. The Dersh then took the fraudulent scholar's work and plagiarized it in his other book. So then Norm turned around and very famously destroyed Alan Dershowitz for not only using uh, Joan Peters was the was uh, the the original uh, author. Yes. So then Norm Finkelstein basically cooked Alan Dershowitz for one using faulty data from Joan Peters from Time Memorial. Thank you guys for helping me with this. And then and then doubly cooked him for plagiarizing the faulty data uh, that uh, he was uh, that that uh, Alan Dershowitz was using. Now, for this crime, Alan Dershowitz, who had a shit ton of social capital in uh, at Harvard and and everywhere else, really very famous, very famous professor and also very famous defense attorney, turned around and got Norm blacklisted from every single uh, institute of higher learning, pretty much. Yeah, plagiarizing a fraud, I think Norman called it back then. They debated on, uh, they debated on democracy now. Norm is obviously, uh, you know, he, he's an interesting guy. He's very spicy. You might not agree with his style, but there's one thing that he's very good at, which is he's a stubborn guy. He's a very honest guy, honest to a fault and stubborn to a fault. And he is a phenomenal chronicler of the truth, especially as it pertains to Gaza. But there's another part that he's, there is another part that he's a phenomenal chronicler of the truth on. And that is the many misdeeds of Alan motherfucking Dershowitz. So in many respects, he's great at having this conversation with Alan Dershowitz because goddamn, he's had this conversation a million times over and has cooked him. A lot throughout that entire time. In our original debate, you didn't even know who wrote for, uh, UN Resolution 242. You had all these names. It was Lord <laughs> Carradine. Anybody who was involved in the process would know that. So let's, make, let's agree on one thing. We both, both of us, should agree <clears throat> to only state facts. And if we have any doubts about the facts, let's set them aside and try to give viewers listeners as accurate a record as possible we can disagree but when you engage in your fantasies it really to me is very disturbing and disorienting okay well let me ask professor Dershowitz to, to, to respond well first of all let's get the facts straight i was arthur goldberg's law clerk arthur goldberg was the united states representative to the united nations he asked me to come down i actually moved in with him at the waldorf astoria towers and work with him on on 242 yes i confused the name carrington with something else but i worked closely in fact i was partly Lord responsible for changing Carradine. the words I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I worked on the matter. I didn't work with Lord Carradine. I worked with Arthur Goldberg. And together we managed to get rid of the word Palestinian before refugees in order to make sure that the resolution applied both to Palestinian refugees and Here's, to this is Jewish pure science refugees. Fiction, which now, I you're can easily now you're, interu now you're mm -hmm. interrupting me. So let me finish. This is a detail. It's a fact. Now let's talk about what happened involving the Gaza Strip. I agree there's a statute of limitations. I'm opposed to any biblical claims on Israel. I believe Israel has a, a political and moral claim to the land. There have always been Jews living there from the time of Jesus and Mohammed to 1948. And wisely, the British decided for a compromise plan for, for division. And that plan was accepted by the Jewish and Zionist leaders. It was rejected by the Palestinians. And then, as you know, Israel tried to give the entire Gaza Strip over to Egypt, back to Egypt, during the Camp David Accords. It almost caused a breakdown in the Camp David meetings because the Egyptians didn't want it, and Israel very reluctantly held on to it. And then in 2005, Israel abandoned the Gaza. And only when rockets and a bloody coup occurred did Israel respond by having border controls. Let me tell you one thing. They weren't strong enough. If there had been better border controls, Hamas would not have been allowed to bring in concrete, which it used to build tunnels, to bring in weapons, which it used to murder all these people on October 7th. So Israel was not strong enough. It should have had far better border controls, as other countries had, in comparable situations. And so, one more point. It's hard to, it's hard to enact really good border controls when your borders are just, like, expanding, though. You know? Willy-nilly. That's what it is. <laughs> just, like... Because they have some ambitious borders, you know? And sometimes they extend quite a bit. 
Toynbee and, and, and Benny Morris both are regarded as kind of one-sided uh, uh, historians. There are claims uh, uh, that dispute both of them, particularly Toynbee. Toynbee was an overtly anti-Zionist historian who didn't believe that the Jewish people had any claim uh, to Israel. There's also a statute of limitations on that. And so let's move forward. And moving forward means... Wait, what, do you, what does he mean there's a statute of limitations on, like... This is such a dumb fucking conversation. I think Norm did a pretty good job of, like, ta casting aside the historical claim, like, the statute of limitations on, on what kind of, like, historic claim you can lay to a, a piece of land by saying, if, you, if I am to believe, and this is the, the never-ending argument with Zionists and anti-Zionists, which is that if you have a statute of limitations uh, that, that extends to the claim that, like, Jews historically deserve that entire land, including Judea and Samaria, which is known as West Bank, Okay, that, that like, if that's the historic claim, then what about the fucking Palestinian people that currently are existing there that have a very real, very valid fucking historic claim to all, histor all of historic Palestine? Like, that's ridiculous. How am I supposed to fucking not see that very real, very valid, very ongoing uh, uh, evisceration of the Palestinian population and, and think much broader, in much broader terms, as though, like, your claim is stronger. It's so dumb. Means potentially uh, a solution where Hamas is no longer in control of Gaza. Uh, remember, too, you're absolutely right, Norman. Uh, terrorism began way before Hamas. Terrorism was an essential part of the Palestinian leadership. The U.S. Damn, I thought he was going to say about the, for the Israeli government like in its formation i thought he was going to be like yeah we did terrorism king david hotel baby olympic uh, uh, nope i was wrong uh, massacres that occurred way before hamas uh the, the the terrorism on airplanes the blowing up of airplanes the hijacking of airplanes the problem is that the world rewarded terrorism and it's rewarding them again um by allowing hamas it is the world is rewarding terrorism that part is true that part is true it's just israeli terrorism is what the world is rewarding which is why israel keeps getting crazier and crazier in its actions and expanding greatly on the targets that it declares uh you know defensible murders the infrastructure that gave pal refugees weren't just shot every time a violent crime was committed the idf would go would do reprisal operations throughout the 50s where they go to suspect villages and shoot up a dozen civilians they just mentioned ariel sharon wouldn't you know oh the kibia massacre during operation shoshana was a reprisal operation that occurred in October 1953 when Israeli troops under Ariel Sharon attacked villages of Kibia and the West Bank, which was then under Jordan's control and killed Palestinian civilians. Israeli forces massacred more than 69 Palestinian villagers, two-thirds of which were women and children. 45 houses, a school, a mosque were destroyed. The attack followed cross-border raids from the West Bank, and Israel framed the Kibia massacre as a response to the Yehud attack, in which an Israeli woman and her two children were killed. The act was condemned by the U.S. State Department, U.S. Security Council, and by Jewish communities worldwide. The State Department described the raid as shocking and used the occasion to confirm publicly that economic aid to Israel had been suspended previously for other non-compliance regarding the 1949 Armistice Agreements. It's shocking like the top of the hour ad break is shocking to you if you haven't been in here long enough. And you haven't seen that this is just like the modus operandi. You know what I mean? At the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free. It'll be shocking to you to recognize that there's a three minute ad break at the top of the hour, right? If you haven't been paying attention, but there is one. And here it is, as a matter of fact, don't let it, don't let it catch you off guard. Subscribe for $5 or for free. And there won't be problems like that. Anna bought 5,000. Thank you for the five gifted subs, allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Rich, from that guy talking about terrorism, when Irgun killed two British sergeants and hung their booby trap bodies in a eucalyptus grove near Netanya. <sighs> you killed that one like Dershowitz allegedly killed his wife? <laughs> yes. A millionaire crying that working a nine to five is harder than streaming. Brother, do you have a fucking Motorola Razor phone? That was already like, that was fake discourse from like three weeks ago.
Are you tweeting this? Are you are you writing in the chat from Motorola Razor from your Motorola Razor phone? What's happening? I'm gonna unban this guy. This guy's awesome. Okay, we can't be banning people like this. We need to be unbanning them. My well, man's like, remember when a lot of people maliciously clipped you out of context to make it seem like you said a nine to five job is much easier than Twitch streaming? which is a position that I don't know if you hold or not. And I'm not even going to ask you if you hold that position at all. But even though that was like four weeks ago, do you feel like Keemstar is an honest arbiter of the truth? Uh, no, I reban him just to unban him. To free uh, hundreds of okay. people, legitimately many convicted, not all convicted, many convicted, in exchange for a small number of completely innocent hostages. You can't compare completely innocent hostages with convicted murderers. Okay, look, Norman, respond to that. But also, uh, I also want to move on, yes, yes. Once, you respond, once you responded to it, also move on, if you will, to the issue of settlements. Because one of the things I find hardest to have any sympathy with Israel about is the continued expansion of settlements. I agree. Uh, and in particular, agree. the West Bank. And I think we may find some... Is he... Under the camera, is he unwrapping a chocolate or something? What's going on there? I feel like there's a very specific wrapper. It sounds like a very specific type of wrapper. Consensus here. But first of all, Norman, your response yeah. to uh, what Alan Dershowitz just I can't believe your base put you through that for nothing, Lamau, useless. What? My base? Said, but also then move it to settlements. Yeah, well, I would like to try to... You know, actually, I can bring it up to the settlements uh, on the case of Gaza. Yeah, so it sounds like I would a like Werther's original. I left off with, so to speak, at the risk of being boring, the timeline. And uh, I said in 1970, there were uh, atrocities committed in Gaza against the people of Gaza by the uh, agriculture... headed by the agricultural minister at the time, Ariel Sharon. In 1987, as you perhaps remember, Piers, the first intifada broke out. It was overwhelmingly... Here I quote Danny Morris from his book, Righteous Victims. It was an overwhelmingly nonviolent civil resistance to the Israeli occupation. By 1990, three years after the beginning, or really two years, because it began in December 7, 1987, by 1990, Israel started to institute, again, I'm sticking strictly to Gaza, what it called a closure policy. And the closure policy was basically to seal off Gaza, okay? By 2002, 2003, if you read uh, Baruch Kimmerling, he was a senior Sony sociologist at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, he described Gaza as, quote, the largest concentration camp ever. Now, you might say Baruch Kimmerling was a person of the left, and I will grant that. But then we have Giora Island. Giora Island at the time was the head of Israel's National Security Council. He said in March 2003, and now I'm quoting him, he described Gaza as a huge concentration camp. So you can say there is a consensus among knowledgeable people, sociologists at the Hebrew University, head of the National Security Council, that Israel had turned Gaza into a concentration mm -hmm. camp. In 2006, in 2006, there was an election in January 2006. Hamas wins the election basically on the platform of reform because the Palestinian Authority is proverbially corrupt. It comes into power. Immediately as it comes into power, Israel institutes this brutal economic blockade on Gaza. And at that point, uh, uh, there have been various descriptions. I'm sure, Piers, you wouldn't disagree. You wouldn't call The Economist a left-wing magazine or anti-Semitic. It described Gaza as, quote, a toxic dump. And uh, at that point, it had a high, it, slowly, just to give you one example, Pierce, and your listeners, because they should have a sense of what this blockade looked like. Israel's explicit policy, its explicit policy was to keep Gaza on the precipice of economic catastrophe. That's how they described their policy. They prohibited baby chicks from entering Gaza. They pr prohibited chocolate from entering Gaza. They prohibited potato chips from entering Gaza. They pr pr prohibited any spices from entering Gaza. And it prohibited any exports from Gaza, except at some point, occasionally, things like strawberries. So what had happened to Gaza? It had, on the eve of 2007, it had the highest unemployment rate in the world. It was about 60% unemployed, 50% uh, for the population as a whole, 60% for youth. The people in Gaza were left to languish and die. No past, no present, no future to languish and die in the concentration camp. That was their prospect as of October 6, 2003. Excuse me, yeah, 2023. May I Sorry about that. May I respond? Well, I'll tell you May what, yes, actually, I, actually, on that point, Professor Dershowitz, you respond to that point briefly, if, if you could. And then I want to come back to Norman Finkelstein to move it on to settlement. So, Alan, just respond to what... Uh, oh, I mean, just respond to that suggestion, sure. which has been cited by many people, that the conditions in Gaza, in the period that Norman Finkelstein has been referring to, have been described by many people as bordering on a concentration camp. And at the very least, a form of occupation where Israel wielded far too much control over what could come in and out of Gaza, including people. Our base defender of Palestinian emancipation, Pierce Morgan. 
My goat. My king. The issue is so one-sided that, like, anyone that consistently wants to hold these debates ends up coming across like they are defenders. Like, ardent defenders of Palestinians. Even if they originally did not have that intention. The speculation that I have here is that Pierce Morgan is a mercenary. He's a mercenary who only cares about one thing, which is improving his social standing, improving his clout, making more money. I think Piers Morgan found out after October 7 that there's a lot of interest and a lot of momentum on the, the Palestinian conversation. He saw the ratings, he read the room, and he basically kept, you know, hitting that vein over and over again. Ever since you wanted a show, uh, I noticed that you weren't as brutal about making fun of him. No, I mean, I, I mean, guys, I called him a, a, a gorilla in a suit, which is definitely the, the same perspective that I have for any and every one of these Western clowns. They wear suits to present themselves as anything but barbaric, even though their actions are barbaric. That's the truth. And I'm currently very politely describing. Oh, I didn't say gorilla. I said baboon in a suit. And I'm very politely describing what he's doing here. It's not because, like, he himself personally had a slight change of heart. I think... I think personally, he saw the writing on the wall and changed course only a little bit in an effort to maximize on the view counts. That's it. So that people were very interested in listening to a conversation amongst two people about Israel, Palestine. And that's why he keeps hitting that vein over and over again. <laughs> Well, they're right in the description that it was a toxic place. Uh, it was a toxic place because Hamas took over and because Hamas robbed the people of Gaza of their food. It took the material that was sent from Europe, from countries around the world, and took it away from the children and took it away from the hospitals, took it away from the schools, and, and gave it to their fighters to build 350 miles of tunnels. Uh, imagine what could have been done with all the resources that had been sent to Gaza. There was plenty of food in Gaza, except that Hamas was using it. There was plenty of material to build hospitals in Gaza, but instead Hamas was using it. It's Hamas that turned it into a, a toxic, toxic place. When Israel, in fact, uh, occupied it, actually occupied it, it was in much better shape than when Hamas took it over. And so it's Hamas's fault. Hamas turned Gaza into this horrible place. And let's remember, Israel has been prepared to give up Gaza over and over again. It tried desperately to give it back to Egypt in, in, during the Camp David. It tried desperately. Yeah, dude, it's Hamas that has been bombing the hospitals and, and the schools for the past six months every single day to allow for a t the, the 2007 Omer plan. Gaza is given to a Palestinian state. The 2000, 2000, 2001 Bill Clinton plan. Gaza is given over. They rejected it. If it was a toxic concentration camp, the guards were not Israelis. The guards were Hamas people who were throwing gay people off the roof, okay. who were murdering Palestinian <laughs> Authority people. They were throwing gay people off the roofs. Okay. And who were denying women the right to live their lives decently. People still, dude, this is awesome. Like, Alan Dershowitz gives a fuck about gay people. Come on, dude. Come on, big dog. Recently, okay. yes, women. Gaza was a terrible place, completely the fault of Hamas. Can we reach a point of agreement on the issue of settlement? I, I suspect we can. So, so normal figures, I don't want to keep responding. Me, I don't want you keep responding one, to each other about, about that. One what, sentence. I, what I would like you to one do. Sentence, what is it? What I, oh, okay, give me one sentence, but then please address the issue one of settlement. One sentence. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, a thousand humanitarian and economic organizations have all reached the same conclusion. It's very simple. The main cause of the disaster in Gaza is Israel's illegal blockade of that parcel of land. Full stop. That's wrong. That's wrong. Um, did that ever happen? Throwing gay people off the roofs? No, that's a ISIS thing. But it works really well. I think ISIS did that one time. And it, it, it works really well for... It works really well for people that it's just Islamophobia because you're like, oh, ISIS did that. So that's like definitely what all Muslims do. That's definitely what Hamas is doing. By the way, 
Like, what's the argument here? Hamas is fucking throwing gay people off the roof, so Israel is actually doing a humanitarian bombing campaign by fucking, what, blowing the gays themselves? Like, blowing up the gays themselves? Like, what the fuck do you mean? Like, it's so fucking stupid. There is no argument there. It just doesn't make any sense. That's wrong. That's false. Who's wrong? Who's wrong? Aren't that is wrong? wrong? The World the, Bank the, the is wrong? Blockade, the International the Monetary the Fund is wrong? They're yes, all wrong? Yes, Are yes, they all anti-Semitic? Yes, is that what's going on? I didn't say that. I didn't say that. They're wrong. I have no, they're just wrong. I mean, so why are they the all wrong? Any of them. That, because the blockade was completely lawful. It was designed to prevent the importation and then the use of rockets okay. against Israel. It's perfectly lawful so for a country to engage every, in a blockade. Every, that is, okay. you're not, let me finish. Okay. You can't have a double, Look, Israel Dershowitz. is exposed to a double standard, but Professor we're not letting Dershowitz. you impose a double standard on me. No, I'm going to finish my statement and you're not going to interrupt me. So understand me. The, 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 the military occupation was lawful. The blockade was lawful. Every country has the right to defend itself from rockets, from terror tunnels, huh. from people coming over the border, murdering huh. and kidnapping people. Those are all lawful. I'm telling you that as an expert in international law and the law of war. Okay. If you want to dispute me, get an expert who knows something about international law. Okay. Not a, not, not a polemicist Professor, like Professor you. Professor Dershowitz. That's so awesome. The only thing Professor Dershowitz is an expert in is lowering the age of consent laws, okay? He's only an expert in knowing what the age of consent laws are in each individual state. And also, furthermore, an expert in constitutionally uh, advocating to lower the age of consent laws by making the most idiotic argument, uh, argument towards abortion. If 16-year-olds can get abortions without their parents' consent, they can consent to an abortion, they can consent to being fucked, is what Alan Dershowitz's constitutional argument was, famously, just reminding everybody that, you know, uh, just never forget that. He has defended that as recently as like a couple of years ago, for the record. Oh, he said 15 actually. Fuck. Well, I'm not an expert in remembering Alan Dershowitz's uh, weird, perverted fantasies. He's also an expert at pulling his pants down for a massage. He's an expert in uh, being friends with Jeffrey Epstein and receiving massages with the pants on at all times, he said. Um yeah. Okay, Professor Dershowitz, just as a matter of fact, I teach the laws of war. I've been teaching it yeah, for the last five years. It. To, to yeah, my, to my understanding, you're, you're biased. You're, okay, Professor Dershowitz, okay, Professor Dershowitz, let's agree. I'm completely ignorant. Let's take that as a point of departure. How does it come to be yes. that every humanitarian and political body in the world <laughs> has yeah. declared that the blockade of Gaza constitutes collective punishment? Because they're all ignorant. They're all ignorant. Only I know the truth. <laughs> Only I know what international law looks like not the guys who write the international law by the way not the not the international organizations that are supposed to be tasked with defending international law only i know punishment and therefore is a violation a breach of international law a war crime under international law how did that come to pass they're wrong how is it you're that first every, of all you're wrong I, they're all you're, wrong no you're not you're, you're not wrong. right, you're not right. no 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 Except you're wrong sir, you're wrong sir. in describing you're, you're wrong in describing yeah, every group one, there are many name groups me one, okay professor Dershowitz, name me one legal international yeah. legal body or human rights organization name me one i'll take the pause name me one that what? that says the blockade of gaza is not a collective punishment name me one the law the Lawfare Project in the United States. Um, the, law the, uh, the Lawfare uh, Project, I said, name me one the, international the, legal or political body. It is, one. it is. Everybody's no, it is listening now. Body. Piers Morgan it's has a very large audience. Name me one, it's, name it's me one international, international or legal, legal or political body that says. <laughs> uh, I'll have you know, uh, Norm Finkelstein, sir, uh, the Friends of Israel's Not Doing a Genocide Project is actually a very reputable think tank based out of Langley that is being supported by American citizens that also have, you know, uh, Israeli nationality, but American citizens nonetheless. And they have declared as the internationally renowned humanitarian organization that what Israel is doing is pretty pog. Okay, that's right. The Lawfare Project. Founder Brooke Goldstein is an American nonprofit think tank and litigation fund that works to protect the human and civil rights of Jewish and pro-Israel communities worldwide. The project funds legal actions to protect free speech and civil rights, challenging anti-Semitism and discrimination against Jews. <sighs> the world's only international pro-Israel litigation fund. 
<laughs> Bro, I mean, I was joking when I said, like, the Friends of Apartheid Foundation, but it's not even fucking off base, dude. He's like, uh, the UN? Wrong. The United Nations? More like united in their defense of Islamist fundamentalism, actually. <laughs> That's awesome. In June 2017, the law firm project, the law firm Winston & Strawn, filed a lawsuit against San Francisco State University on behalf of a group of SFSU students and members of the local Jewish community alleging that the public school had fostered a climate of anti-Semitism marked by violent threats to the safety of Jewish students on campus. The suit alleged that the school has violated the plaintiff's constitutional rights. In addition to the federal lawsuit, the law firm project, the Winston & Strawn, filed a second lawsuit in February 2018. So what happened? What happened with the lawsuit? Why does this not have a conclusion? They fucking prepared a lawsuit against the Irish Occupied Territories Bill, which enacted would criminalize trade with Israeli settlers. It argued that the bill violates European Union trade regulations. Remember, Israeli settlers. Like, you have to keep doing trade with Israeli settlers living in occupied West Bank. Seems like a really, seems like the, the arbiter of truth and justice, uh, if I do say so myself, seems like this is the, the, the international, this is the international community, uh, finally sticking it to the man. The, the blockade of Gaza is legal. Name me one. It, 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 it is legal. One. And every, or, every organization that I have been associated with, the Lawfare Project, the project run I by a woman that. named Leitner, and the international that. project, were yeah. all... All, have all concluded I, that the blockade I is legal. legal. Also, the Israeli Supreme... The, let, let, me, let me finish. The Israeli Supreme Court, which is above... Norm is approach. biased, though. Yeah, whereas Alan Dershowitz is not biased, uh, seemingly. Yeah, of course Norm is biased, bro. Yeah, he's biased. He's anti-genocide. The fuck do you mean he's biased? Like, you can say that about me to be like, Hassan is Muslim, he's biased. Oh, he must hate Jews secretly or something. But, like, Norm Finkelstein is Jewish. He's a descendant of Holocaust survivors. You know what I mean? I think that's why he frustrates people to no end. That and also because he's like incredibly stubborn and does say a lot of stuff that like I would never say. You know what I mean? I said to agree, bro. Yeah. And which is much fairer than the International Court of Justice has also, with limits, has said that blockades designed to prevent the bringing of rockets to Israel is lawful. Also, use your common sense. What possible reason would there be for allowing a, 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 a group in Gaza, a group of Hamas, to send rockets without trying to blockade them from bringing the rockets in and building tunnels? Use your common sense. Of course it's unlawful. Okay. Every really good, really good solution to this. Are you ready? End the blockade and end the apartheid. And then the bathtub rockets that they're fucking lobbing over the border that you put up will cease to exist. Wait, did he bring up the Israeli Supreme Court to say that it's, it's, <laughs> that's an international body that does not think? <laughs> no, did I misunderstand? Did you say, did you? Trying to blockade me for bringing of rockets to Israel is lawful. Also, it's, has said that blockade and which is legal so, or the Israeli Supreme. The, let, let me let me finish. The Israeli Supreme Court, which is above reproach, and which is the Israeli Supreme Court, bro, that's literally being like, I don't understand. Why are you telling me the the Holocaust is being uh, the Holocaust is abhorrent? The Nazi Supreme Court decided it was legal and valid. Excuse me. Um, here is an internationally recognized legal body that everybody thinks is infallible. The Israeli Supreme Court. That's awesome. That's a claim that... Why do they need a pro-Israel legal fund? That's a claim that needs to be proven. Can't just say it.
You weren't even joking about the bathtub rockets. They really do DIY snipers and bombs. That's crazy. I thought Iran gave them everything, but they actually make their own shit using the materials they find alongside Iranian resources they get. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Is an endless testament to Palestinian resilience, honestly. It's just crazy. He doesn't need to feel silly. What? It's much mean? fairer than the International Court of Justice has also, with limits, has said that blockades designed to prevent the bringing of rockets to Israel is lawful. Also, use your common sense. What possible reason would there be for allowing a, 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 a group in Gaza, a group of Hamas, to send rockets without trying to blockade them from bringing the rockets in and building tunnels? Use your... I'm glad that the Israeli Supreme Court decided that the uh, that the Israeli blockade was totally valid. Surely, surely they would have said something if they didn't think that it was valid. This is just common sense. Common sense. Of course, it's unlawful. Okay. Every country in the world would do exactly the same as Israel okay, did. Listen, I, think we've, I think we've exhausted this part this of the debate. From being I do want to, before we run out of time, we only have about five minutes left. I do want to get into sure. settlements. And I'll start with you, Professor Engelsley. The, the issue of settlements, I think, is, is pretty much indefensible, actually, what's been going on, and particularly Ooh! in recent years. Wow. Is it pretty much indefensible? Oh, no. The liberal Zionist has spoken out. That's right. The settlements are pretty much indefensible. Deus Ex rocking ya. Yeah. Thank you for the five tour and give the subs. Uh, on the West Bank. But what is your overview of the settlement issue? My overview of the settlements, as in all topics, is what international law says. Under Article 49 of the Fourth Geneva Convention, it's illegal for an occupying power to transfer its population to occupied territory. Now, when that issue came before the International Court of Justice in July 2004, every single judge, every single judge, including the American judge, Mr. Bergenthal, 18.7 million watch women's NCAA finals, but nobody cares about women's sports pecker. The fuck? Are you okay, dude? They all agreed on that one point. The settlements are illegal under international law. Now, under the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court, those settlements constitute war crimes. So what we're talking about now, since the settlement activity began right after the June 1967 war, what we're talking about is a protracted war crime over a period of a half century. And that's sometimes missed. When we talk about what's happened to Gaza, we're talking about two decades. If you go back to the closure in 1990, we're talking about the martyrdom of a people over three decades. Those young men who burst the gates of Gaza on October 7th were born into, to use your phrase now, a toxic concentration camp. They were born into it. And that settlement activity, which under the Rome statute is a war crime, that's been ongoing for a half century. Okay, let me get, let me get Professor Dutch to respond. Let me respond, please. Yes, let me respond. Yeah. First of all, Finkelstein and Hamas regard Tel Aviv and Jerusalem as settlements. So you can't take them seriously about anything. They regard all of Israel as, as settlements. And yes, I disagree with uh, settlements on the West Bank. I have since 1970 when I debated Noam Chomsky. I called for a two-state solution. I agree with a military occupation designed to prevent rockets and prevent terrorism, but I disagree with civilian settlements. But the poor, core point I want to mention Are they war is crimes? ultimately we've gotten to this point. Wait a second. No, of course, of course not. They are not war crimes. Wait, what? Why are they? Oh, so you just have a simple disagreement. Like what? Did they look ugly to you or something? Like, I don't get it. He's like, I agree with a military occupation to stop rockets. Rockets aren't being law from the West Bank, by the way, but you know, they should be occupied anyway. I also don't, uh, I don't. I disagree with the settlements because, like, what? There aren't enough, or something. I, I'm confused. <laughs> it's like I disagree with the settlements because there should be way more settlements. No crimes at all. They are disputes over what constitutes the UN Resolution 242. The UN, says they're, the UN says they're illegal. Where does that leave it? The UN says a lot of things. The UN, if you. Oh, if you he's there wrong. The UN is wrong. Excuse me. Excuse me. I would like to go back to my previous point, uh, the Israeli Supreme Court. Now that's an infallible institution. The, the, uh, the ultimate facilitator of truth and justice. Okay, fuck the UN. They're Hamas. Hamas. Let me, let me uh, refer to you to my... Let me refer to you to my... Uh, <laughs> to my completely unbiased, impartial, international legal institution, uh, Settlements or Poggers Fund. That's right. It's comprised entirely of Christian Zionist funders from Dallas, Texas, 
And uh, they have declared that the Israeli settlements in the West Bank are actually not illegal and very cool. I disagree with them, of course. But aesthetically, they, I, don't, I think they should be using brutalist architecture and not whatever the fuck they're using right now. The UN also called Israel Zionism racism. The UN has no authority to define international law. The UN can who give advisory opinions. Who does? Who does? Let, me, let, me, let me please, let me finish. So remember who appoints the justices. Countries appoint the justices. So when Lebanon appoints a justice, it's Hezbollah's appointing the justice. The International Court of Justice <laughs> is an ill- Yeah! <laughs> Hezbollah justices. Hezbollah judges, dude. Hamas judges. Legitimate court. It is dude, every argument... Every argument from an Israel defender inevitably devolves into just like unrestricted, unadulterated racism. Okay? It's fucking awesome. It's always just like, uh, can you really trust Arabs? I mean, they are fucking freakish terrorist monster barbarian rapists. Like, even when they are internationally renowned legal scholars and shit. You know what I mean? That's awesome. It's just pure bigotry. It's not a real court, but I want to get to the core point. What Thomas Burns is not a real court. It's run, it's run by Hamas and other Arabs. Oh, says, Thomas wait, wait, Burns let me finish, please. Judge. Let me finish. Said let me finish. What, what, Finkelstein, what, what Finkelstein is finally saying is that these people, he called them martyrs. I was at Beira. I was. Yeah, by the way, that's, that was J uh, Benny Morris's argument, too. Remember when he was like, uh, excuse me, they put a Syrian in charge. <laughs> You can't trust the Arab mind. The Arab mind is fickle. They're very clever dogs, those Arabs. Basically. So, like, that's the renowned, you know, that's the renowned scholar of Israeli history saying that, okay? The blockade stops rockets. Funny, June 2009, Haaretz investigation showed that the security establishment calculated a humanitarian minimum for food entry. After much denial and three years of legal battle, Gisha uncovered a Kogat uh, presentation with calculated red lines for food items, a leaked cable from the U.S. Embassy in Israel said the policy was to keep Gazan economy on the brink of collapse without quite pushing it over the edge. Also, uh, fuck, I forget who originally said this, but like, they also jokingly mentioned uh, calling it putting the Palestinians on a diet as well with their uh, restrictive choices of what kind of food is allowed in to uh, the Gaza Strip. At the Nova Music Festival, I saw the remnants of where a woman uh, named Vivian Silver, a peacenik, who used to go over and bring Hamas and, 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 and Gazan people to hospitals, was burnt to death. I saw where people were raped. There is no justification for collective rape. There is no justification for murdering a peacenik. Collective. This woman was probably murdered by the very people she brought to hospitals because they knew exactly where she lived and where the hospitals. It's an abomination to even suggest that any kind of martyrdom, dispute over land, dispute over any, could justify what happened on October 7th. Shame on anybody who thinks that oh, civilized human up, beings dude. should shut be praised or even justified up. for shut doing the what up. they did. I met a man whose son had been beheaded, and Hamas then took his head, brought it back to Gaza, put it on sale for $10,000, and this father had to bury his son without a head. That's what Hamas did. And not only Hamas, but people, ordinary civilians in Gaza, came over the border and participated in these rapes and murders, and shame on anybody who doesn't unequivocally condemn it. There is no justification for what happened on October 7th, no matter what the history is. The hi Dove Wiseglass, the senior advisor of the government, said that in 2006. History is disputed, <laughs> but I want to hear Norman Finkelstein say unequivocally, no matter what the history is, there is no justification for the massacres of October okay. 7th. Okay, we're going to we'll, we'll end with Norman Finkelstein's response and answer that question. My, 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 res question. my, res my response is exactly the same one I gave you the very first time I met you, Pierce. There were atrocities... Yeah, who the fuck has $10,000 in Gaza to purchase a head, by the way? I don't know what the fuck that's about. Large atrocities that occurred on October 7th, I think it's indisputable. You then asked me, would you consider it terrorism? I then replied to you, I think atrocities denote terrorism. However, I said I take the same attitude towards the perpetrators of those atrocities as, I, as the abolitionists in the United States took towards the Nat Turner Rebellion. Nat Turner... So you justify them, so you praise them, so you glorify them, and you honor them. That's Pierre, the Pierre, reality. Pierre, Pierre. Shut up, bitch. Let him finish. Pierre, can I finish? Yeah. He's can cooking. Finish? Yeah. Uh, Nat Turner and the slave revolt committed horrible atrocities. The ab abolitionists said horrible things happened, but they never condemned Nat No, they Nat don't happen. Turner. They what are they perpetrated what they by did people. Was, you're justifying they, what they did was, Finkelstein, allow me to this finish. is the lowest point Pierre, you've ever gotten to, and you've gotten to low points, but this is the lowest point you've gotten to, comparing these rapists... Bro, trust me, if there's another thing that Alan Dershowitz is an expert in, it's low points, okay? My man has a fucking entire career filled to the brim with low points. Uh, OJ, J. 
Jeffrey Epstein, uh, being on the Lolita Express, uh, advocating to, I mean, allegedly murdering his uh, wife, uh, <laughs> advocating to lower the age of consent, uh, advocating to lower the age of consent from a constitutional argument. So I don't know what the fuck he's talking about here. Low points. This is your low point, bro. You have debased yourself professionally for years and he's actually been he's actually been rewarded handsomely for it too let him finish what he's trying to say sure okay, okay let me have by the, the way word. matt turner's rebellion okay in matt turner's rebellion they committed horrible atrocities including beheading babies that's a fact however the and you're justifying that they did and you're not justifying that they did not please pierce can you please tell him i think stop. let him finish the point he's making and then, then he respond okay thank you thank you okay. so much However, the abolitionists did not condemn the perpetrators. The abolitionists kept saying, we told you so. We told you so. We told you so. If you treat people like that, what happened with the slave revolt inevitably would happen. And I say, if you lock two million people in a concentration camp for 20 years, half of whom are children who were born into that concentration camp, don't react with shock and dismay and disbelief and indignation at what happened on October 7th. I have well, spent I the last react. 20 I, years, I have spent the last 20 years of my life studying what's been done to the people lying. of Gaza. And each time I reread what I wrote, I'm more firm than ever before. I will not condemn those people, even as I acknowledge that massive, unspeakable atrocities occurred on October 7th. Okay, Alan Dershowitz, you'll, you'll let find me have my last point. Norman Finkelstein, you would not condemn the Nazis, Hitler, Goebbels, and Goering, because they too went through suffering after the end of the First World War. They too tried to justify what they did as inevitable because of the inflation, because of living under terrible conditions. They inevitably voted for Adolf Hitler. They inevitably built gas chambers. They inevitably built concentration camps. And you, Norman Finkelstein, who claim your parents are Holocaust survivors, you, Norman Finkelstein, by your logic, would justify every single one of the six billion Jews who were murdered because the Germans who did it don't deserve condemnation because they were victims of the Versailles Treaty at the end of the World War I. That's the situation you're in, Norman Finkelstein. It's despicable. Okay. Uh, well, we, well, we started, uh, I think, in a reasonable show. I hope that Pierce doesn't fucking end it there. Come on, bro. Pierce is like, all right, good take. <laughs> Moving on. And we ended in a place where the final word is despicable, which is a shame. But I understand that passions run high. I think you both argued your case extremely eloquently and with great uh, verve. And I personally have sat and I've learned a lot, which is what I hope to do with these, with these debates. So thank you both very much indeed for joining me. Professor uh, Finkelstein, Professor... He said, bro, you would have defended the Nazis. It's like, bro, you're defending the Nazis right now. Sweatshirt just came in very comfy. Let's go. Poggers. Thank you, Pierce. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Piers. Thank, thank you, you Piers. As always, you were very fair. I respect it, and I feel obliged to acknowledge it. I appreciate that. I try to be. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you. I agree. You. I agree. Uh, BBC News has confirmed a ceasefire. Yeah, let's move on to some real ceasefires that have happened. Okay. J. Cole, who has now officially apologized to Kendrick Lamar for the diss track. Which is crazy. What brand did you use for clothing? What do you mean, what brand? It's my brand. Anyway. Um, it's Jover for the coal heads. Uh, it's Jover for the coal miners. Okay. Is Jover. Uh, Kendrick Lamar, for those of you who don't know, Kendrick Lamar, for those of you who don't know, popped off on J. Cole, Drake, and wait, who was the third person?
it, it, it just, you know, it was Kendrick opening up against someone like J. Cole. I mean, I feel like Drake is a little bit, Drake is a little bit more understandable. And then you're in black people's business, tread carefully. No, this is fucking far beyond. Come on, dude. Both of these rappers have incredibly, uh, I mean, this, these rappers have a lot of white people in their fan bases, okay? I, I wouldn't say this is black people's business at all. Kendrick fans are pseudo-intellectuals. Come on, bro. You can't be a J. Cole fan saying this. Anyway, it's crazy. It's crazy that you said that. Anyway, let's move on. So then, then, then J. Cole releases a diss track. Okay, he releases a diss track against Kendrick Lamar. In this diss track, it's called Seven Minute Drill. And we'll listen to it as well. Like it's PWC, it's a cold world. Keep the heat under your seat. I got a phone call. They say that somebody dissing. You want some attention? It come with extensions. My dog, like, say the word. He on bullshit. He itching. Those do Melon's uh, analysis. On Herbert it. Coleman, the second junior, responded to Kendrick. Lamar in the form of a brand new track, the closing track on a surprise release from Cole. Uh, I'm not going to lie. It, from what I understand, it just feels like this was just a tack on like uh, last second edition project titled might delete later. Before I get into the lines right off the bat, I'm going to say instrumentally, this track is weak as hell. No, no sauce, sauce on this beat. beat. Why is Cole firing back at Kendrick with this pew, 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 like synth trap beat? Especially considering that um, Kendrick Lamar's opening shot comes with an insane banger album by Future and Metro Boomin. Which, by the way, I'm more surprised that Drake hasn't really said anything. I guess, like, he has a lot more openings for rap beef. Like, I don't know what you have on Jermaine Cole other than just, like, he's boring. Uh, and, and you know, he he's just boring. That's it. Whereas, like, Drake, there is so much you can say about Drake. So, like, if Drake even opened his mouth, he would get fucking pummeled. I don't even, I don't even follow rap music like that, and even I know all of the fucking tea associated with Drake. Uh, high school picks, you was even bad then. That's it. That's, like, bar number one, Okay. The the uh, shitting on Megan the Stallion, Kendrick Lamar could very easily turn around and get Megan on a track and start fucking ripping into Drake. Okay, the whole the the whole saga about I mean, there's so many. There's there are so many avenues of attack. There are so many avenues of attack, especially because Drake has been literally attacked so hard that he had to reveal that he has a child so yeah, millie bobby brown that's another great one thank you that's that's another great one it's kind of crazy because like drake himself has already been owned as we know owned so hard that he had to reveal that he has a child but beyond that ownage, there are still an infinite, like it's a, it's an untapped vein. There are so many like pedophilia jokes that you can make. There's Gamba jokes you can make too, but I don't think they give a shit about that as much. But like the pedophilia jokes is like, you could just do so much. There's so much there. 
Drake's response. The name rapping's my game. Yeah, K Doc, more like K Not. Yeah, I see England, I see France, I see Kendrick's underpants. Kendrick Lamar, more like Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> the name. <laughs> That's crazy. He, I didn't know he had bars like that. I didn't know he had bars like that. His dick pics, bro. I mean, I guess his dick pics is like a redeeming quality for him, I think. Stay in your lane, please. Stay in your lane. All right. This here. does not sound hard, convincing, and even Cole's vocal delivery off the bat in the song is half-hearted and underwhelming. He clearly didn't want to do this, which will be further illustrated by the bars on the track. Let's go. Light work like it's PWC. Cole is telling us this is going to be easy. Uh, it's a cold world. Keep the heat under your seat. It's not a J. Cole song unless he's doing some kind of coal world, cold world pun. We've heard it a million times. It is not clever. It was never clever. What Whatever a we be still mad about the yay review says little bro about to delete this review when he went, finds out j cole did a thought crime we be come on come on dude you don't have to like every single person that i criticize okay jesus christ jesus fucking christ we be we get it you're a yay stan you're a brett cooper stan you love Bill Maher. You just, if there's a guy out there that's in the wrong, Weeby is a defender of those people, okay? Heal it had has lost its luster over the decade you've been using it. And this is the chorus, by the way. I got a phone call. They say that somebody dissing. Uh, you want some attention. It come with extensions. My dog likes say the word. He on some bullshit. He itching. I mean, the rhyme scheme is not bad, but it's a very wordy chorus. And when you actually listen to it in the context of the song, it's utterly forgettable on impact. Like, clearly Cole is not trying to sell us on uh, the appeal of this track being catchy. Uh, he's still Still doing shows but fell off like the simpsons i mean not only oh. does this <laughs> simile not hit hard at all but isn't this like a really weird admission even in its fallen off state the simpsons is a massively popular and influential show that uh, still to this day is the archetype for every other animated this bald fuck is literally extremely biased towards kendrick though like elite level dick eating oh my god sitcom comedy style show on television and i predict a similar thing with kendrick lamar even if 10 20 years from now he's coming out with records that aren't as good as good kid mad city because of those white people's fred hampton what cole could have said there's three things i would actually diss kendrick lamar about if i was j cole but bro you're already j cole like you're literally j cole. stop all right number one we got working with kodak black Kodak Black not only had multiple allegations against him, he was found guilty of many questionable things. And I'm talking like sexual abuse type of things. So for Kendrick Lamar to work with him is just like, I don't understand why he would do that. I don't know if there was some sort of like artistic cancel culture message that he was trying to make by doing that. And even if there was, it wouldn't make it okay. Like we really shouldn't be. Yeah, bias towards Kendrick, like Hazanavi's bias towards LeBron. Exactly. You can't be bias towards goats okay i'm sorry it's ridiculous oh wow i'm sorry that i fucking appreciate one of the greatest athletes of all time okay oh yeah pulitzer prize winner uh a phenomenal phenomenal talent kendrick cole kendrick cole kendrick lamar shit dude be giving someone like that a platform after all of the abuse now let me tell you again. okay let me tell you let me tell you like lebron is a little bit different okay lebron a little bit different the you just made everybody mad i don't really understand why people shit on lebron i don't get it he is the best i find it very silly to i think they just hate him because they're racist that's what it is i think it's because you're racist it's fine. I mean, everybody has a little bit of racism in them, I guess. He does not support Israel. Stop. He literally elbowed the the IDF guy. Okay? He is not. Stop saying he's a Zionist. He's not. He, I have it on good authority that if he could, he would be delivering aid personally in Gaza right now. 
See, see your lies. See your lies. People are believing you. He's a fucking Zionist. What the fuck? See, people are believing your lies now. Le lies, le fib. Who's fibbing now? You. He elbowed a guy for not being Zionist enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, you cannot be, you cannot be like anti-Zionist. You cannot be critical of Israel. <laughs> How about LeBron's charter school? Okay, now we're just straight up extra special lying. He does not have a charter school. He's a public school. That actually is part of the reason why I think he's the GOAT. And that's, okay, okay, all jokes aside, he does not have a charter school. He literally personally chose to fund a public school, so... At least he didn't affiliate with P. Diddy, right? Yeah, exactly. That was AI. You guys are doing AI hit pieces on a man who never hung out with P. Diddy or ever wore a fucking shitty fedora while simultaneously talking about how sick P. Diddy's parties are. Ain't no party like a P. Diddy party. Like, that's not real. That's AI. We've seen it. Okay? Also, counterpoint, most points ever scored throughout a career have you guys heard about this i'm just saying maybe you should look it up think about that that's my counterpoint all right let's continue it's women like and it's not just like allegations like he was found guilty of this stuff <laughs> so like we know he did it number two i got that one lyric that he had on the black of the berry I think y'all know the one that I'm talking about. You know, the whole song he's talking about. I'm the biggest hypocrite of 2015. At the end of the last verse, I guess to really drive this hypocrite point home, Kendrick Lamar says, Why did I weep when Trayvon Martin was in the street? When gang banging make me kill a nigga blacker than me. Hypocrite. So I think Kendrick's like already like apologized or addressed that lyric, but there's so many things wrong with this. Kendrick is basically equating the violence that the state commits against us. To oh, typical J. Cole fan, bro. It's just boring and wordy. Don't care. All right, let's continue. Those classic influential moments in his back catalog. People are probably still going to listen to his new stuff, even me. Your first shit was classic. Your last shit was tragic. Good Kid Mad City classic. Mr. Morale tragic. How? It was one of Kendrick's boldest, most experimental, most adventurous albums yet. Your second shit put dudes to sleep, but they gassed it. Deepab! Being boring is like the core criticism you could make of most of J. Cole's catalog. So in a yeah, him, him saying that Kendrick Lamar is boring is kind of a wild thing to say because like, I feel like in all of my experience, once again, not a big music listener, but every coal miner I've ever encountered out in the wild will always stop rolling their roller backpacks to immediately inform me that like, actually, I don't have the intelligence required to appreciate j cole like they 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 almost like ride that he's boring like they like that he's boring it's like a it's like a it's like a thing you know it's like a point of of pride almost the way this line is kind of projection your third shit was massive and that was your prime i was trailing right behind i apologize to the coal miners in the chat i know it's fine. I'm sorry that you got bullied for listening to J. Cole while also simultaneously rolling your roller backpack to school. It's fucked up. It's fucked up that I even mentioned that. I shouldn't have brought that up. That's trauma. You know what I mean? It's like, it's old stuff. You don't want to relitigate those moments in your life. Those are your lowest moments, okay? <laughs> I'm on something. I can't take this harassment kind and i just now hit mine okay now i'm at the front of the line comfortable lead how ironic soon as i got it now he wants something with me well he caught me at the perfect time jump up and see well in kendrick's defense uh whether i vibe with this as a stance or a general attitude from him or not uh he has a history of being like you know kind of aggressive with some of his contemporaries and just like kind of throwing shots out there as a challenge. I don't know if he's simply doing this just because you've gotten to a certain level of popularity. Uh, boy, I got here off bars, not no controversy. L L really? I mean, while Kendrick has had these moments where he has been polarizing and has like stirred the pot, I, 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 I don't know. I think it's pretty safe to assume that like the core appeal of Kendrick 
is uh, his albums and the artistry that goes into them. Sure, while this recent Metro Boomin diss uh, was very much discussed, and obviously fans remember the control verse, uh, it's it's really Good Kid Mad City, it's T-Pab, it's Damn, it's those classic records that stand tall in his catalog and remain his most popular, most discussed material, not just the disses. I take solace in knowing that this chat is mostly white and their opinions on rap doesn't matter. In parentheses, J. Cole is from North Carolina. I am obligated to defend. Oh, no. Further down, he says that Kendrick averages uh, one hard verse every 30 months, and that if he wasn't dissing, then we wouldn't be discussing him. Which, I don't know if Cole has gone on hip-hop Twitter at all lately, but uh, even when Kendrick has not dropped, people are talking about Kendrick, and it, even even when that dude farts or posts a random picture to his, uh, you know, burner Finsta account, um, it, it, people are talking about it. Closes the verse out with a meme reference, boring chorus, and then we go into verse two, which has a beat switch into a Conductor Williams instrumental that frankly is way better than the beat the song kicks off with. Like if Cole was going to give us a diss track or a response track, it, it, it should have been with this instrumental off the bat. However, when we go deeper into the second verse here, the tone is changed a little bit. A lot of Cole's references to the diss are like, I don't want to respond, I'm a guy of peace, but if I have to, I will, I'll get violent. I mean, he does say your arms might be too short to box with the god. Kendrick Lamar. Famously short king. Five, six. Criteria is criteria. But yeah, he goes on also about uh, my text uh. flooded with the hunger for a toxic reply. I'm hesitant. I love my brother, but I'm not going to lie. I'm powered up for real. That shit would feel like swatting a fly. Okay, so what is Cole saying here? That like this response isn't actually the diss. This isn't him like really coming at Kendrick in the way that he could if he wanted to. I mean, maybe that's true, but but it just kind of feels like cope because if you could go harder and if you really could like snuff Kendrick out lyrically, I would think that even like the little tastes here that you gave us or the shots that you put out there preliminarily uh, would be a bit stronger and would amount more to like your last album was tragic and your second album was boring. And what is this Eminem ass bar over here? Fly pebbles at your dome. We the stone temple pilots. Now I got to imagine J Cole vibing to STP in his nineties rock mix. Like, Ready on, here on a Sunday afternoon. It's crazy because he said it was a warning shot and then literally backed down. Like that makes it so much worse. Which puts his fans in a bind because like if they wrote about how fucking excellent his diss track was and lied to themselves and other people, now they have to fold again. Like folding laundry and turn around and fucking say he's actually so he's actually so mature like I, I guess you guys don't understand the intellect required to appreciate j cole i say as i roll away in my roll with my roller backpack j cole fans haven't been bullied this hard since high school yeah, being like, oh, it's coming. Yeah, warning. Warning, I want to piss my pants. <laughs> Look, it's a cute bit of wordplay. I would laugh at it probably in another context or see it as cute, but this is like not tone of a, a diss type writing. This is just a little silly and goofy. This is a warning shot telling you guys to back down. Watch out. There are more Stone Temple Pilots bars where this came from. I mean, he might throw out a push or a Vaseline reference. Your career's cobained as I've reached Nirvana. Watch what I do. The audience applause while I fight this foo. Switching sides like the tassel on the cap and gown. Okay, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm done here. This is a weak diss. Clearly, J. Cole did not want to do this, and yet he did it anyway. I mean, I sort of get it. The, the, the hip-hop fandom is toxic in such a way that if J. Cole did kind of come out and, and, and was serious and was real uh, about how he actually felt about this and was just like, I don't want to do this, guys. I think it's kind of lame. I, I'm, I'm obviously not really 
with dissing and fighting and arguing like this. That was literally the point of the line to begin with that Kendrick is responding to in an unnecessarily aggressive way. Like, that would be valid. That would be real. That would be true. That would be so fucking down to earth and and honestly just reality. But if J. Cole, <laughs> J. Cole fans be like, yo, I'm in my bag. They got bullied and stuffed into their roller backpack. Roll out. <laughs> did that, if he actually said that in response, like just kind of put it out there uh, boldly and plainly, uh, all, all the fans would clown him and just be like, oh, you, you're lame. You fucking pussy. With I feel kind of bad. I do. I, I do feel kind of bad for J. Cole. Because I do think it's a why you say fuck me for type situation. Like the thing I, the, the shots against Drake, I understand. But like, like uh, here, this is all I will say. I think I, no, don't feel bad. Come on, dude. It's like, even before the apology, like even before this, uh, this, this weak retaliation, it does seem kind of like a, it does seem kind of like he just caught a stray. I don't think he hates Kendrick Lamar. I think he probably stands Kendrick Lamar a little bit. And then you're just like getting owned by a dude you love. J. Cole is 39. What the fuck? I mean, it doesn't matter. It's just like... It's just like he got, you know, he got owned by someone he probably really appreciates. Culturally in rap, you can't just not respond when someone comes at you. And Cole didn't want to respond, but the culture demanded. He should have just not said anything, honestly. With, at, with a lot of the cats now, like the J. Coles of the world or, or yeah. Drake's of the world, where are you guys at Same now? Same place. Same place. Mm -hmm. This is all I love from I the that. moment I did the verse to after the verse. You know what I mean? I think hip hop is, is a sport, so you're gonna have these little spits and spats. And it's all good because personally I respect these dudes as, you know. This this video is old. Uh, yeah, I mean, sure, it's old, but like I mean the sentiment probably still remains. As, as people, you know what I mean? So outside of that, it's really nothing. Specifically where are you at like with the J. Cole? Specifically where are you at with a Drake or so on and so forth? I respect the music. I like that. For sure. I respect them uh, as individuals and creators. And um, I think what the media tried to do is, 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 is insane because they take these black, you know, young brothers and really try to clash it and make right. bump heads. And um, that's not right. Right, that's right. That's how I look at it. I think it's not right. And I think that's why it's great to really show people how we support one another because hip hop was something that wasn't supposed to be here for this long. I'm mm -hmm. sure you know, Big. Yes, sir. And the more we do that, the more they'll try to tear it down. I heard. All right, let's hear what uh, Jeremiah had to say. So I'm so proud of that project, except for one part. It's one part of that shit that make me feel like, man, that's the lamest shit I ever did in my fucking life, right? And I know this is not what a lot of people want to hear. I know I can hear my niggas up there right now like, nah, nah I don't do that. But I got to keep it 100 with y'all, right? I damn near had a relapse, right? Because y'all heard some shit that happened two, two, three weeks ago, however long it was. Y'all heard that bazooka that was dropped on the motherfucking game, right? So all of this time of me moving on my own accord, for the first time I was tested. Why am I tested? Because I got the world, and I got my niggas like, what you going to do, Cole? <laughs> my niggas like, bit boy, I must have had a thousand missed calls. Oh, my fucking God. Text flooded. I couldn't even answer my shit. Nigga, it's... He didn't even say anything that bad. Like, he, he just said he was boring. Like, it's crazy how he's like apologizing. <laughs> that's that's crazy. War time, right? Niggas want to see blood, and and I was conflicted because one, I know my heart. You know what I mean? And like, I know how I feel about 
my peers, these two niggas that I've just been blessed to even stand beside in this game, let alone chase, chase their greatness, right? So I felt conflicted because I'm like, bro, I know I don't really feel no way. But the world want to see blood. I don't know if y'all can feel that, but the world want to see blood. So I say all of that to say, in my spirit of trying to like get this music out, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I moved in a way that was, that I feel spiritually feel bad on me. Like, like I try to like jab my nigga back and I try to keep it friendly. But at the end of the day, when I listen to it and when it comes out and I see the talk, that shit don't sit right with my spirit. That shit make me feel, that shit disrupts my fucking peace. So what I want to say right here tonight is in the midst of me doing that. He's not apologizing for dissing him. He's apologizing from deviating from who he is. He's not the dissing type. That's crazy, dude. That and, and in that shit, trying to find a little angle and downplay this, this nigga's fucking uh, catalog and his greatness. I want to say right now tonight, how many people think Kendrick Lamar is one of the greatest motherfuckers to ever touch a fucking microphone? Oh, no. Dream oh, no. They're all fucking celebrating it, too. That's crazy. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> dude, it's worse now that I saw the okay, video. Kendrick Lamar, correct? As do I. So I just want to come up here and be like, publicly be like, bro, that was the lamest, like, goofiest shit. And it make, I say all that to say, it made me feel like 10 years ago when I was moving incorrectly. And I pray that God align me back up on my purpose and on my path. You know what I mean? I pray that my nigga really didn't feel no way. And if he did. Bro, you are so fucking cringe. No, you're cringe for thinking this is a good bait at the top of the hour. No, I'm not going to talk about. Yeah, no, I got it. Oprah, FT, Winfrey. I, I know. I know what you were trying to do here. I know. At the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. And some of you chatters are cringe. Okay. You think this is a good debate. And it's not. That's the real Oprah, by the way. It's crazy. She's a fan. Even crazier that she hasn't gifted a ton of subs to others in the chat. So they avoid seeing the ads at the top of the hour. Here's the three minute ad break now. Just saying. I my nigga, I got my chin out. Take your best shot. I'm going to take that shit on the chin, boy. Do what you do. You know what I mean? Like, all good. Like, it's, it's love. And I pray that, you know, I pray that y'all are like, forgive a nigga for like the misstep and then, and then I can get back to my true path because I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Past two days felt terrible. Like, it let me know how good I've been sleeping for the past 10 years. So all of that to say, man, I wanna, I wanna now perform the song that's a reminder to me of getting back on the right path and getting in tune with God in the name of the Okay, this actually I'm excited about. Video of what this f academic said he sent drake the video j cole apologizing and drake said i can't believe you would say some shit like that to me you must not oh, know me did. said well please don't do no shit like this please don't apologize or do no weird shit i've defended you i've oh, argued oh that's so sick okay this will actually be interesting and fun okay this will actually be interesting and fun I love that DJ Academics is like also pumping Drake. God, oh my God. The number one Drake Glazer of all time. Because I've liked your music for over a decade. Please, please don't do no shit like this. And it's the only thing I'll say. Drake blasted me. <laughs> He said, he said, I can't fucking believe you would pull up and say some shit like that to me. 
You must not know me, nigga. It's like investigative reporting, okay? Push bodied him so hard, he bullied him into being a dad. Yeah. And his retaliation was like, oh, I wasn't hiding a child. I was hiding the world from him or some shit. Facts, you are hiding a child. Let that boy come home. Deadbeat motherfucker playing border patrol. Ooh, Adonis is your son, and he deserves more than an Adidas press run. That's real. He just doesn't stop. He doesn't stop after that. He just keeps He just keeps going and going and going and it's so crazy that he just Oh my god. Love that baby, respect that girl. Forget she's a porn star. Let her be your world. Yeah. How dare you put yay in my verses? I'm selfish. I want all of the curses. I'm pre-booking the churches. Me versus three hearses. If we all go to hell, it'll be worth it. Already aligned with the greats. And on that same note, the only ones I chase are two ghosts. Still giving you classics. That's the only thing that dates me. Over your 40, hunched over like he 80. Tick, tick, tick. How much time he got that man is? Sick, sick, sick. I got the devil flow, nigga. Oh yeah, Ovio 40 had cancer, right? Didn't he Didn't he also come for his Was, was that what it was? He, he had cancer? <laughs> or MS? That's Oh my god, it's so sick. I forgot about that. That's really, that's fucking insane, dude. Jesus Christ. 
Oh my god. That that is fucked up. Yeah. Anyway, that was a that was a surgical summer with it. Anyway, that was um huh, such a such a crazy that was awesome. He released it on MS Awareness Day too. Wait, what? No, that wasn't deliberate, I don't think. I will concede that Drake knows mainstream audience is better than anyone alive right now. Yeah, but like he still has limitations. Limitations to his skill, his ghostwriters have limits. And beyond that, he also has so many openings. Like, since this, since this happened, there is a, a metric ton of shit, like new information that you can use against Drake. I would say that his stock has fallen since then. Anyway. Yeah, the, the pedal stuff is just like a massive opening. A massive opening. You can tie that to Diddy, potentially, you know what I mean? They're coming after Diddy. They're going to come after you next. Like... I'm just saying there's like a lot of there's a lot of stuff. There are so many openings for Drake. But yeah. Cool. You think the Bobby Altoff stuff had an impact on him? What do you mean like an impact? I personally think Drake has a gambling problem. Okay. I think that's the reason why he keeps pumping out more music over and over again. I feel like he works like a man with a gambling problem. It doesn't make any sense. And I'm not simply saying that because he's like sponsored by stake.com, the crypto casino, but it would be pretty funny if, um, if, if, you know, Kendrick Lamar made fun of him for that. Just saying. Like tie that back into like the the uh, the Dersh will defend Drake for the Millie Bobby Brown stuff. <laughs> yeah, J Cole was also transphobic on his new album. Yeah, I I know. Kendrick making an entire entire song coming to accept trans people versus J Cole doing this really shows the difference between them in terms of how in touch they are with social issues. Cole cares more about seeing as the savior of hip hop actually making a difference. Yeah, he. Yeah, I mean, it was, um, I'm seeing hints of a trans fella in cancel culture's vicinity. He's no killer. Trust me. Beneath his chosen identity, there's still a pussy, period. I, I can't believe people are saying that that is like a Tom McDonald bar. I mean, Tom McDonald is, come on. Like in order to shit on, in order to shit on, on J. Cole, you don't have to, they plead the fifth. I'm seeing hits of a trans fella in cancel culture's vicinity. He's no killer. Trust me. Stop. Like Tom McDonald is still infinitely worse. Start the track with Aiden's voicemail glazing up Drake's hog. Oh my god.
I don't think he's transphobic. I just think he has that lyrics miracle, lyrical miracle brain rot that made him think that was a bar. I don't think I don't think J. Cole is gonna fucking be like a right wing grifter for the record. I think you guys are going above and beyond. I think it's funny to think that. What is this? We need Logan Paul and KSI to come in and save the rap game. I think it's crazy I'm the one who they labeled as controversial when Cardi B is the role model for 12-year-old girls. Is the title true or not because the eclipse just happened hours ago or is it views for... Is it just for views, no hate? What is the title? The rapture is upon us. Brandon's America eclipse watch. Do you think I genuinely think that the rapture is upon us, chatter? Is that a real fear that you have? I think there's a lot of non-black people having black people conversations just saying, oh, come on, dude. I think a fucking like two day rap beef between J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar, it, 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 considering that as black people conversations is like insane. We're not having like a conversation about Dr. Umar, okay? There are an insane amount of white people in both fandoms. Yeah, like the BBC reported on it, dude. That's it goes way beyond, I think, at that point. Anyway, um, here's Logan Paul kind of popping off. He brought in I show speed. By his <laughs> the cap flew off, dude. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. Scripted as fuck. Oh, I have to say, not going to lie, Asan, you have the smartest, most stupid community ever. I know. They just like, they just can't have fucking fun ever. Like everything has to be, everything has to be analyzed from the framework of, is this moral from the, the, uh, the ethics of being a fucking no fun leftist. Y'all just suck so much. Prime kind of fell off. They always have it stocked up at my local discount store. Did it? Bro, my cousin in Turkey has a son. Okay? I forget how old he is. He's like a little, he's like a little baby or some shit. I don't know. I think he's not a baby anymore. He's like 10 maybe. He fucking is always demanding to drink Prime. Okay? Not the cousin that's here right now. His sister. Like, you guys are crazy, dude. Prime didn't fall off. They just up production and output. That's why the shelves in the U.S. are no longer empty. Yeah. I think Prime is, is insanely popular. Have you seen Tim Pool on John Oliver yet? Wait, what? Tim Pool on John Oliver? The fuck? Is Redneck anime? It's annoying how much Twitch reviewers think they're above wrestling fans. You're both in pajama pants with cartoon characters on them all day watching scripted content. Embrace it. True. Randy Orton helps a woman. Man helps up lady on ground powerful. <laughs> My six and seven year old are obsessed with prime. The nutrition facts and the ingredients aren't bad. Not the energy drinks though. The sports drinks like Gatorade, no artificial colors. Yeah. It is a redneck anime slash soap opera. It's awesome. I I had a whole arc. Some of the old heads remember. I had a whole arc where I like learned about wrestling. First, I I enjoyed it from the perspective of like uh, looking at all of the very problematic, but like enjoying all the very problematic aspects of like old school wrestling. Um, we've also covered uh, the obviously really shitty parts of wrestling, like the sexual assaults and whatnot. 
We've also covered the labor rights aspect of wrestling. We've covered wrestling quite a bit on this broadcast, honestly. But on, but yeah, I mean, it's just... The crowd chanted Gatorade during the Logan match. The thing about Logan Paul is that, like, he does a lot of stupid shit. But he is, in my opinion, an objectively good wrestler. Like, he is very good for WWE. He is. If he just stayed on that, if he just only did that, thank you, Anonymous user, for the five, get the subs. If he just did only that and like none of the other fuck shit that he does, like he'd be, people would be willing to forgive him, I think. Cage Cam One, thank you for the 10 tier one, give this subs. This photo from the eclipse is funnier when you realize that the pyramid is Bass Bro Shop. It's beautiful. Inshallah, brother. Mashallah. Always remember that 25 years ago in 1998, the Undertaker threw Emmett, uh, mankind in a steel cage in Hell in a Cell. Speed died. You know, y'all you know I got RK by uh, Randy Orton. You know, I'm be honest, everything is real, man. I got a fat headache right now. Uh, my neck is kind of it's very stiff. It's like cramped up. I got a bad, bad, bad wind knocked out of me. But y'all, I might. I'm gonna just be in the hospital for one day. I'm gonna be okay. I'm not dead, so I don't, I don't want to think nobody's dead. But I got RK by Randy Orton, so uh, my head is hurting so bad, man. Dude, honestly, Speed is also a fucking freak. Uh, like, he has... I mean, look, I, I'm not exactly a fan of him. I'm not 10 years old. Um, having said that, however, he is so fucking freakishly talented. Like, he's an incredible athlete. Although he is mad annoying, for sure. I'm 32 years old. Come on. There's no way I'm going to fucking find his content consumable, nor even, uh, you know, palatable. But he is unimaginably athletic. Like, I have seen him just casually do, like, a full flip before. I don't know if you guys have that. Um, I don't know if you guys uh, have seen that video. He's out of control. Put Randy Orton in an octagon. It wouldn't last 30 seconds. What is happening? Actually, what is happening? Are you guys okay? Like, yeah, man, it's fucking fake. Why are you guys being so goddamn annoying? Look at this, look at this, look at this. And he's in the fucking, like, ugly-ass Yeezy loafer slippers, too. Look. Bro, he has hang time, dude. Literally, look at this. Like, he has hang time. I've never seen something like this. My boy Brian, phenomenal athlete, one of my trainers. You guys have seen him on the stream before. Um, he was here for Kaya's birthday party with his dog, Finley. He does flips regularly on command. It's super easy for him. I have, however, never seen Brian execute a flip like this with this much hang time. Like, like, look, I'm gonna do it again. I'm, I'm. You have to see this again. That's crazy, bro.
No, he is not. He's trash at football, not the American one. Backflips are not a measurement of being athletic or good in any sport. No, backflips are a measure of being athletic. You definitely can say that. Yeah, this is the video I saw originally. No, I think a, a, a casual backflip like this is, is insane. And it is a measure of being athletic. Bro, it's just like, looks like it's out of this world, bro. Look at this. Speed versus arguably the best cornerback in the world. I show speed versus NFL Pro Bowl cornerback Sauce Gardner. Now, I already know what you guys are thinking. For all the fans, the, the fanboys of I Show Speed, wow, he should be in the NFL. He's so much more better than Sauce Gardner. Hold your horses. Look at them shoes. Pay attention to the shoes. This guy's shoes are, Sauce Gardner's shoes are not even all the way tied. Wait, what do you mean he's wearing loafers, bro? He's fucking wearing slippies, dude. Are you crazy? He's, he's like, oh, look at Sauce Gardner's shoes. How about Speed shoes? He doesn't even have fucking shoelaces, man. And he, he doesn't even have shoelaces. He's got slippies on. He's wearing sweatpants. He can't even extend all the way. So after that. I think people are so silly. People think that like someone casually being able to do this in fucking slides is like normal. That seventh or eighth step that I show speed, I had on him. That was it. You know what I mean? He came. Yeah, doing a 10 foot backflip and outrunning NFL guys is no big deal. Being able to fully rotate like that without having to tuck your legs back uh, into you is extremely hard. Like, that's a whole different rotation than a normal backflip. Thank you. That's the other thing. The fact that he just doesn't just flip, but he flips with his legs out is insane. He's doing a standing back layout. Most people can only do a backflip because of the knee pulling momentum. Speed's body's completely flat. Is raw ass power. <coughs> he is. First bicycle he, backflip kick made by Speed. I've been in this, man. Like he is, he is very impressive. He is very, very impressive. He's very impressively athletic. No Anyway. Wrong Ronaldo? I mean, so what? <sighs> Kaya confirmed Swagapino? What do you mean? What is this? Get you some of. <laughs> okay, take it back. It's not impressive. <laughs> I can't believe what China did this. Chairman, he acknowledged Taiwan. Activate the ray. Oh, they fucking cooked his hairline? Oh, no. President Xi activated the bald beam. <laughs> so fucking dumb. All right, inside the messy battle for the biggest swing state in 2024. Fuck, we didn't do the interviewing. Oh, I wanted to hear the streamer 
Johnny Somali. Johnny Somali has been arrested in Israel for harassing a female police officer. Uh-oh. Context. This is the same streamer that has been causing havoc in Japan last year. He was arrested and then released last month. Hero. What is this context, bro? What is does he have an AI voice? Hiroshima, Nagasaki. Oh, you a bad bitch. I swear to God. You a bad bitch. I'll take you to dinner. I swear to God. I swear to God. I'll change your life. I'll change your life, baby. Baby, I'll change your life. I promise you. I don't understand why he's like, I mean, this is the rarest of Israeli W's. I'm going to be honest with you. There is no, there is no rarer Israeli dub out there. Like they're like, sure. Genocidal apartheid state. Sure. All of that. But like they did fucking, if they put him in jail, then, you know, big W. What I don't understand is that like, why is this dude, why is this dude just like doing IRL sexual harassment? Like, why does he think that this is, like, something he can get away with? I just don't understand it. You a he's, bad bitch right he's here. fucking around. He's fucking around. Oh, I changed your life, baby girl. You ain't got to work for oh, these niggas no He's about to, he's he's about to find out. I'm, I'm, I'm in the sidewalk. 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 What the fuck? What the Oh man. Oh man. This is the same dude. Got Brother, you watched the other kick streamer doing internet sexual harassment and creation slash distribution of CP. Kick streamers are not the brightest. I know, but it's like, dude. There has to be a level of like self preservation involved. Like, it is just the most, bro, fucking feral animals have a, a, like the interest of self preservation in mind when they avoid human beings. You know what I mean? Like, like we're talking about something that is just like antithetical to like being a living organism. Okay. This isn't, this goes far beyond like stupidity. Like, the other guy. The other guy, the, the CP guy, is like, oh, he loves CP. You know what I mean? He just loves CP so fucking much. It's just like... This, this definitely does not make sense. Kick does not give a fuck. This is one of Citrus's emotes. What the fuck? Just straight up Hitler? Like, what, what do you mean? The services slash people enabling his content might be a bigger problem. I just, I like, do you guys get what I'm saying? Like, it just doesn't make sense to how he thinks. It doesn't make sense how he can, like, um, just, like, consistently do this stuff. Like, how he consistently thinks he can, like, get away with his behavior. It just doesn't make sense to me at all. You know, is Citrus, you know, Citrus now works with XQC, right? It's legit. Who the fuck? I don't know who the fuck this guy is. I have no idea who the fuck this guy is. You guys are saying he's like Aiden Ross's assistant or some shit. You are thinking and that's why it doesn't make sense. It's just, I don't understand it. Oh shit. What am I going to do? America. I'm from America. I'm from America, USA, USA, <laughs> USA, I'm from America. <laughs> bro, bro, didn't get the memo. Israel does not give a fuck about America, okay? Let me tell you.
it's also additionally insane that he was like, oh, dude, this country is actively doing genocide. Let me go over there and fucking be annoying. Like, who the fuck thinks like this? Sidra stream with Fuentes like two months ago. He's full out, right? Yeah, kick is kind of weird because... Kick is, kick is kind of weird because, like, back in the day, these guys used to do this exact same shit on YouTube, right? Like, I remember because they all fucking hated me back then, too. Where, like, Nazis would collaborate with, like, um, you know, centrist content creators and whatever all the time. And that's how, like, the right-wing pipeline exploded on YouTube. Like, that rabbit hole was massive. Many of you probably are aware. Many of you might have even been on that pipeline. And, and like, nowadays, kick basically is just completely unchecked. And only funneled by Twitter as well. Obviously, its impact is softened because it's, like, a standalone thing. Like, it's just basically out there, and it's it's in its own little, like, circle. <laughs> Johnny, I'm from the USA, Israeli police. Me too. <laughs> USA! Oh man, yeah. what are they saying? Is that like a slur? I don't know. Fuck yeah. I mean, I don't know why you would go over and do that. What an idiot. He deserves it. Yeah. Anything bad that happens to him, I won't care. That's the truth. I don't think anybody will. He goes in there and he's doing it on purpose. He's trying to make people mad. And then he does. Oh my God. He's like openly fucking. He's openly trying to. To like grab her ass. Like wh who behaves like this? Yeah, I mean, at least he's annoying the IDF instead of random Japanese people, but, like, the IDF is, is going to pack him up real quick. Here's Train uh, talking to Aiden, telling him he needs to chill with some content. The downfall of Kick? Wait, what the... So right now, like, the conversation of why is this... Why are you sending me a fucking Destiny clip, bro? What the fuck? This community is so goddamn cooked. It's like, it's like bad the worst. His name is Ramsey Khaled, by the way. They're going to torture his ass. Oh, translation is just get him in the car, get him in the car, no slurs. Oh. He's doing anti-Zionist action and you're sitting here being on the side of the IDF. Come on, man. Yeah, bro, I'm sorry to say this, but critical support to the IDF in, in jailing uh, that fucking nuisance, dude. Honestly, like, this is the one time. This is the first and last time I will ever say these words. But, like, sometimes, you know, the, the enemy of your enemy is still your enemy. But, like, they might be doing something that's not that bad. Exact content. And not only are they doing it, they're bragging that they can do it and nothing will happen. You know how disgusting that is? Right, Aiden's friend. You know how friend. fucking disgusting that... No, no, no. No, I don't think you understand. Oh, it is disgusting. It is disgusting. It is trash content. It is disgusting. Yeah. You're, honestly, y'all are lucky I don't have any power in the moderation team. I would permaban all of you. What the you fuck? You understand me? It's, it's like, brother, like, you need to understand yeah. the line. We're giving, we're giving every creator freedom... To create without fear, as long as they don't cross a heinous, disgusting, extreme line. And they're all cross. It's crazy to me that, like, uh, when you give power and creative freedom to the, to the creators, they just choose to almost always go the pedophilia route. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's weird. It's like pedophilia... Rampant sexual abuse and sexual harassment. Uh, just fucking unadulterated slut shaming. 
I warned Train about this. I did. He didn't fucking listen to me. I told him. I literally told him. I was like, listen, I want this to be successful because it's good if there's more competition in the marketplace. But you cannot do this no moderation, no TOS bullshit. Because if you don't do that, your platform is going to be infested with Nazis and pedophiles. And sometimes they're going to be pedophile Nazis. And guess what? Lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. Kiki's ruining Gen Alpha brains too. What the fuck is this? Bro, on God for real, lady, yo, you're fucking capping, <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> I'm 14. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. How the fuck? How? Bro, you are nine. What are you doing? Guess how long his ban is? I don't know. 10 day ban? Okay, well, you cucked yourself because you immediately leaked it. Is that a fan out about you shirt chat? I can't tell. Fan out about you me. Is it is that a fan out about you shirt? Bro. It looks like it. Fan out about you. 1907'de doğdu aşkımız sarıyla lacivert akar kanımız I have a I have a Fenerbahçe family. I don't really give a shit about sports. Don't yell at me. I don't give a shit about football, but my whole family is Fenerbahçe, ride or die. Don't even fucking start with this Galatasaray bullshit, dude. Okay, all right, here we fucking go. Here we go. That team walked off and field in the protest the other day. They did. <laughs> Yo, what is this, bro? Does he think he's that fucking fetal alcohol syndrome kid with the fucking bouncer? That's crazy. What's the what the the fetal alcohol syndrome kid? What's his fucking name, bro? They brought his ass up on the on the fucking podcast I did with Graham Stephan too. Oh my god. What is it? It's the No Jack Doherty. Yeah, that's the one. Arkadaki sarı lacivertli formalı Türk nasıl karışmamış? Abi biliyorum dedim ya Fenerbahçe forması giyiyor. Hold up. Hold up. Yeah, shut the fuck up. This is in Miami. Most creek streamers are in South Florida. Yeah. 
going to be real funny when Ron DeSantis does a statewide ban on kick streaming. There's a clip of this little kid hitting a blunt too. I mean, the amount of power demonstrated by that lady in not just kicking this fucking this little shit's teeth in is is phenomenal. Can you pull the chat on who they think that would win the fight? Little boy, grown women? I think the grown woman would beat his ass. That's literally just Nick's Mer Nick Merckx. If you remember a thing when he was 13? No, I don't think Nick Merckx would do this kind of shit when he was 13. The blunt is what got him banned, by the way, not the hands and the food. It is kind of crazy that you guys are so fucking tapped into this nonsense. I guess people do watch this shit. Because, like, I am legitimately shocked that you guys know what the fuck's going on in, in this side of the world. Well, we covered it. Nah, they watch other people talk about it because they addicted to drama. Yeah, I think like, sir, you know Costco boys lore? Yeah, because Costco boys are the fucking goats. What do you mean? That's so funny you guys are like, oh, dude, you know the fucking Costco boys lore? Yeah, dude, because the Costco, the Costco boys are actually awesome. They love, they love eating double chalky chocolate chip cookies. Like, they're sick. Yeah, they're Costco guys, you know? Of course they're going to have the double chocolate chip cookie. Those guys are, yeah, a beacon of light, dude. Honestly, I don't cover the Costco guys enough, in my opinion. In my humble and honest opinion, I do not think I cover the Costco guys enough And I should be covering them more. What is this? Kaya Sinat next year? <sighs> the second I see a video of someone on the street with a mic or being recorded interacting with the public, I skip it because it gives me anxiety. I don't know how people watch this shit. Northern lies on the opposite There's side. There's people who have like fucked up their life, but when you look at what they were doing to fuck up their life, you're like, I bet that was kind of fun while it lasted. But then there's always like the dude in high school who's like, how much will you pay me to drink poison? And then someone is like, $5. And he's like, deal. And you're like, how did he die? He drank poison for $5. Like that's what looking into the eclipse is like. Everybody knows you shouldn't look into the eclipse. Oh, God, it's just like these boomers, man. They just don't want you to have fun, okay? They don't want you to unlock the secret powers that come from looking <laughs> directly at the eclipse. <laughs> Staring directly at the sun. Tucker Carlson opens at a Kid Rock concert? What the fuck? Oh my god. The Welcome, follow. thank you. <laughs> you. You may be asking, what am I doing here? And I would not ask that question, honestly. It's just like, that's his crowd. Kid Diddler Rock. I feel like that's so perfect for Tucker. That makes the most sense, honestly. Many people should be asking, how did this not happen beforehand? And you know, I don't really know. <laughs> Thank you. So I wound up here tonight because I was having dinner at my house with Kid Rock. And a few months ago, and he said, and I think he likes my house because you can smoke in my house. 
Uh, <laughs> but he said, you know, you should, you should come and. <laughs> Joey, see the dwarf psychic at Kid Rock is the one who said the statutory line. Kid Rock, make sure he died. Made sure he died for it too. <laughs> what the fuck? Kid Rock killed him. <laughs> I mean, he wrote the line. It is funny that these guys are like, Tucker Carlson was hanging out with your buddy. Who's my buddy? Tucker Carlson to kill yeah. Tony last night. <laughs> Tucker Carlson had no idea. How'd you set it this up? This is I set it up. I'm hanging out with Tucker. We're talking about the club. He's like, I think it's amazing what you've done here. I go, you want to come to the club? Kill Tony's on tonight. Does he have any idea what you're the, talking about? No idea. And he goes, how much can comedians make doing comedy? So, so I say, <laughs> kill Tony sold out Madison Square Garden two nights in twice, a row. Twice. In an hour. Uh, he goes, what? I go, really? I go, I'm going to take you to kill Tony right now. So in the middle of the show, the show's already going on. I text him. I'm coming over with Tucker Carlson. He goes, jump on stage. I go, fuck yeah. Tucker doesn't know this. So I'm in the backstage, <laughs> right behind the curtain. I go, this is the crowd. I go, you hear him out there? He goes, this is amazing. I go, we're going to go on stage right now. He's like, what? And so Tony goes, my two favorite people just dropped by, Joe Rogan and Tucker Carlson. We go to the curtain. Holy <laughs> shit. Everybody goes nuts. It was hilarious. Wow. Ew. Dude, if your entire comedy club is celebrating... If your entire comedy club is celebrating fucking Tucker Carlson as an appearance, throw the club away, dude. Start again. Brother, uh. Brother, uh, brother. Shut up. Shut up. I know at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. Shut up. Stop. This bait is so fucking annoying, okay? If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. I get it. We don't, we don't care. Cover the news. Like, you got me, dude. Cover the news like how at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break, right? Yeah. Guess what, dude? You're fucking banned for an hour. I hope you enjoy that, okay? You're suspended for one hour, 60 minutes, okay? Get better fucking baits at the top of the goddamn hour. And don't come at me with some weak ass shit. You did it fucking eight times too. You added me eight fucking times. You're such a spiteful bitch. I'm sorry. Don't have spite for me. Don't have spite for the top of the... Don't have spite for me. Have spite for the top of the hour ad break and subscribe to avoid it. For $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account through Twitch account, you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. Hopefully, that's me. I feel like we celebrate Tucker agreeing to come on the show to be clowned on. First of all, if you think this community would celebrate Tucker Carlson coming on the show, you're wrong. They would be fucking going crazy mode. Nandre, oh my God, that's a fire suggestion. You fucking freak. This is from three months ago, too. Inside the White House with President Joe Biden by Architectural Digest? God damn, that sounds awesome. Can we ban second message ad baits? It's too meta. It was way better when we had to weave it in. Yeah. Oh. Ken Patterson goes, my grandma hates you. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, fuck nigga, you good? Hell yeah. Cam Patterson and Tucker Carlson high five and this is Yeah, it's crazy. My grandma hates you, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Is it crazy? I don't know who Kill Tony is. No, it's not that crazy. Kill Tony. I only know who Kill Tony is because I used to be a massive Joe Rogan head. Um, there's also what's the fucking other guy? Brian. That's Brian. These are the these are like all the Joe Rogan OG Brian Redban. Yeah, they are the OG. They're the OG orbiters uh, of Joe Rogan in the extended Joe Rogan cinematic universe.
Yeah, kill Tony and Brian Ribbon episodes equals skip episodes for me and my peak listening. Same. <laughs> That's so funny. I, I did listen to Kill Tony because uh, I did listen to Kill Tony a little bit. I mean, Tony Hinchcliffe was my least favorite part of Kill Tony, though, which I think many Kill Tony fans will probably also agree. Um, it's cool to have like seasoned veteran stand up artists, like stand up comedians, uh, basically refine uh, openers and their bits, like their tight fives, basically, or not even tight fives, like a, I think it's like two minutes or whatever. Um, so I think the concept is really good. Right, his whole shtick, Kill Tony, is Tony Hitchcliffe's uh, show, comedy show slash um, podcast, where you bring in randoms usually, or he used to bring in randoms usually, uh, people who are amateurs, no experience whatsoever, and they would roast their like open mics. But it's also good because it's like open mics. A big problem with open mics is when you're first starting off, like if you want to do comedy, you have to fucking be in front of an audience. That's the only way to refine your bits. There's no other way to do comedy other than to just do it. Right. And you're going to suck at first too. There is no like special secret sauce that allows you to be like naturally funny. So Hassan, the stand up knower. Yes, I do know a lot about stand up. Dude, I'm fucking telling you about Kill Tony. Come on. Um, so, in order to get good, you just have to be in front of an audience. There's nothing else you can do. You have to make an audience laugh. And Kill Tony is actually really valuable for that reason. Not because, like, actual, actual, uh, uh, stand up comedians like seasoned veterans get to like critique your one minute bit, but also it's really valuable because you get to have a massive audience that you're appearing in front of. Because most of the open mics are so fucking sad. If you've ever been to an open mic for a friend, if you've done it yourself, it's so bad. It's just literally other comics that are waiting in line to get in front of the same fucking audience full of comics waiting in line. And they pay like $5 to do it too. Half the time is so depressing. So this way you actually do have an entire fresh audience. There's plenty of comedians in there too, but you have a real audience that will laugh at your jokes. And it's not just comprised of like straight up fucking other shitty open mic comics. I love the non-PC culture they harbor, free for all. Yeah, I mean, that's just normal. That literally is every fucking... Non-PC culture is not even a thing in comedy. Like, that's ridiculous. Of course, there's no fucking PC culture in comedy. I think it's like... I don't care about non-PC culture in comedy. I care about people who are just, like, not very funny and can't make bits work, so they just do, like, right-wing grifting shit, like Steven Crowder. You know what I mean? It's, it's very um, bottom of the barrel. And the more, the more someone is, the more someone is a shitty comic, the more someone is a hack comic, the more they'll get duped by people like that. No disrespect to Joe Rogan. He's massive. And he's very important for the comedy scene in general, whether we like him or not. But ultimately, his, his uh, I guess, his skill set makes him so easily susceptible to the likes of Milo Yiannopoulos and, and others where he thinks that, like, oh, they are being kind of funny and being kind of clever. <sighs> Non-PC is fine, but punching down on the same group is what gives old Chappelle... Yeah, I mean, we're talking about just like a comedy, uh, a, a a place where comedy is made. There's no PC there. It's crazy. Um, the other show that I used to like a lot is, I mean, obviously the the what was it, the roast. Before it went on Comedy Central, it was I think in the Belly Room, 
Uh, and I would go and watch it sometimes in person. Uh, Brian Moses. I think I'm saying it right, right? No, Jeff Ross isn't like... No, Roast Battle was Brian Moses and, and Jeff Ross as well. But on Comedy Central, it was on... Uh, Jeff Ross was like brought on, I think. Your biases towards the people you like are insane. You can like them. It doesn't really mean they're doing... They're objectively good at stuff. Do you think I like any of these people on stage? Are you all right? You like Rogan? No, no. What the fuck are you talking about? Bro, how many fucking YouTube videos have I made on Joe Rogan? Dude, genuinely, some people, ugh, I don't even know. I actually you know what? I don't even know why I address this. I have nothing to say to you, man. No, not like his politics. You mean his stuff? What stuff do I like from Joe Rogan? Like, historically, his podcast and shit. Yeah, listening to Joe Rogan in, like, 2014 doesn't mean... Listening to the Joe Rogan podcast in 2014 as a fan of his, it doesn't mean anything in 2024. We're talking about a fucking decade-old... You're so fucking stupid, dude. Please stop. Oh... As a communist, I don't support YouTube, so I don't know how many videos you have on there, but I wish you had less. Is that why you support me on Twitch, an Amazon-owned website? I feel like... And this is not even a joke. I feel like a lot of people do unironically think like leftism means like you just have to be a humorless fuck. You know what I mean? No humor whatsoever. And and you just literally have to you have to wipe out the part of your brain that allows you to understand nuance and context. And you have to constantly be antagonistic. And it's actually not your misunderstanding and your bad. It's actually the other person's bad that they open themselves up to even be misunderstand misunderstood by you. Actually, that's like half, half of the motherfuckers are left is for that reason, I think, just to be able to do that. Just let the negative be. They're trying to scare you. They're coming at us with all this bullshit all at once. Oh, this big eclipse. You better wear your glasses so you don't go blind. <laughs> Nobody's ever went blind ever fucking looking at an eclipse. That's right, baby. Tell him, tell him how it is, partner. He's so right. God Never damn. happened. Show me the proof. Show me the evidence. When the hell have you ever been, had all these warnings about an eclipse in, in your entire lifetime? It's never happened, man. <coughs> Shutting down schools for days on end and bringing in police and National Guard and, and the media it's in Niagara. Call you think you're not constantly antagonistic? I am. But I think I'm antagonistic to those who diver deserve it. So you said this just now. Whose side are you on, honestly? In a situation between me and that previous chatter, do you think you agree with me on that issue? Or do you think you agree with that chatter on that issue? Quick, think quick. And if it's me that you agree with on that issue, especially because I'm literally currently explaining to people how they shouldn't be constantly antagonistic towards those uh, that, uh, you know, don't deserve it or whatever. Oh. Why did you decide to be antagonistic towards me? Hurry up. All a state Wait. of emergency. They didn't call that for the eclipse. They called that because they didn't want a big bunch of people over there protesting. It's an I am definitely staying here till after the eclipse. See what happens on that day. I just got here. You're so fucking stupid, Chatter. Jesus Christ, what a fucking idiot. I just got here. Why the fuck did you chirp then, dumb fuck? Why did you fucking chirp then? You just got here. Wasn't really taking a side yet, to be honest. Shut up, bitch. You said you think you're not constantly antagonistic. What do you mean? What the fuck do you think that is? Stay here till after the eclipse. See what happens on that day. <laughs> yeah.
I have a video to show you that's going to open up some of the most annoying discords we've ever seen, and it'll be clipped and become a thing, but not in a way that is focused on you, just an annoying debate. I will not send it tonight. Just let me know next time you're really bored and want to start a dialogue with the world. Wait, what is it? What is it about, M. Hud? It's so weird. Chad will come in here and be like, you're a fucking piece of shit. And then when I, when I repeat that energy back at them, they're like, whoa, why do you say that? Why did you say it like that? Yo, chill, bro. I didn't mean it. I was just like coming in. Okay, morality. I don't fucking understand. I need to know now. What? In April 1791, he charged up Beacon Hill to get a good look at the solar eclipse and wrote, hurt my eyes much by observing this same eclipse without a glass. Five months later, he was still complaining that he was almost blind and his eyes never fully recovered. I wonder if my eyes got fucked up from looking at the eclipse today. I don't think they did, but who knows? Let's do it. Let's do the fucking annoying. You did what? I did. I looked at it. I mean, I looked at it for like a second. I can't see shit without my glasses, though. That's the problem. So I'm already fucking blind. You seriously looked at it with no protection? Yes, I did. I don't think you guys understand. If you if you weren't under totality, then you indeed damaged your retinas. Bro. Chatters. I have looked at the sun before. Okay? You can't actually look at the sun. Your eyes protect yourself from looking at the sun. And we didn't have even remotely anything close to the totality. The problem is if you look at the sun, thinking that you can look at the sun, so your eyes don't fucking, I guess, flex to look at the sun. I'm explaining in this stupid way. Um, your eyes don't flex like you are looking at the sun directly and shield it because it's under almost totality. And then the sun still is powerful and it zaps your fucking retinas. This is a man who's been getting free food at hundreds of places for four years and doing it in a taunting way to his haters. The discourse will be on whether he has the morally right to do or it's a victimless crime. Free time. This is for all the haters. What state am I at? What the fuck is this? My way for a double whopper. What is, what is it? It's a number two with no mail. Just ring up whatever you need. Tell them about the customer recovery, okay? It's a number two with no mail, no salt, and the french fries. Anything else? Uh, it was a large drink, large fry. So now we're good. We're back in order. Okay. I'm fine now. Here we go. To go. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Hey. <coughs> He's full screen on his rumble chat. What? Oh, fuck. I can't believe I was... Dude. Broy. I'm not blind. I swear I'm not fucking blind, bro. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Fuck. Shouldn't have looked at the eclipse, dog. It's not the eclipse. It's just like my brain is zapped. The eclipse zapped my brain, chat. It's not the eclipse. I'm just fucking stupid, okay? I'm a stupid person. I'm not a smart person. I'm a dumb person. I hope that clears every... Uh, I hope that clears it up for you.
What's your BK order? I do. I will never order from BK. BK sucks. So this guy will learn the name of the manager who's there in the afternoon and go in the next day saying they agreed to do a remake meal. And most people are so disarmed by him being kind of dumb and sounding polite and they just do it. He's even done it at Red Lobster. Oh, wait. So he actually ends up paying for the Whopper one time. And then, and then that's it. Oh, he just lies and said they would do it. He's got 600 plus videos doing this. That's awesome. I kind of like it. I, I mean, hold on. I got to pee.
Yes, one eight four. I need another part. If I wanted five minutes of dead air, I'd turn into a tune into a J. Cole album. What the fuck is this? I hate this video. What is this? What are you watching? You're watching a legend. This wouldn't work at the BK I used to work at. We had a binder of all the remake meals that the supervisors slash managers would document in before making them. Jesus Christ, the penny pinching. That is crazy. Thank you. A remake meal, I guess, is when like somebody fucks your uh, order up. And then you have to, um, and then like you tell the manager, I guess, and then they come back and they're like, oh yeah, sure. We'll give you a remake meal, right? How does he have 600 successful attempts at this? I mean, swag, I guess. I don't fucking know. I want to know more about like the process a little bit. Do the free time at McDonald's. So let's make this happen. I love comment. Oh, uh, yes. Um, I came by about 10 days ago. There was a mistake made on my order. Uh, I was supposed to get a number six. And said I got an egg muffin. So you need a sauce, egg, and cheese with grill? Yes. That's what you're missing, right? Yes. That's it? That's it. Wait, no questions asked? Uh, I mean, the grill. You want it with the grill, right? Yes. Wait, he didn't even have to do nothing for that one. Thank you. That's Welcome. it? <laughs> Damn, his thumbs are busted. They don't have time to argue, bro. Free time. Okay, this one was even better. Let's see what the... Free time at KFC. We're I wish you would talk more because he's beautiful when he talks. Kaya, come here. And say to the comment, please give me a subscribe and a thumbs mm. up and hit the notification bell. Thanks for your time. Hi. Hello. Hello, baby. Hello, beautiful. As someone who used to work at McDonald's, yeah, we don't give a shit. We don't want to deal with an argumentative customer. It costs us nothing. Time. 
Yeah. Why spread this even more? Wait, what? This is fucked up? Who gives a shit? Please don't talk about music or artists that you don't know or listen to considering you don't even listen to music and you just follow whatever narrative your colleagues push. You just biting content from shit you got no info or idea about is very cringe even though I got love for you. Oh my god. I'm I apologize to the J. Cole heads, man. You guys are I know it's been a tough couple of days for you. I know it's been a tough couple of days for you. Okay. I know your feelings are hurt right now. You you wished you wished that Jermaine Cole popped off way harder. And then he apologized. He made made you look bad after you tweeted. On Nandi Sadija Music Seviurum. A Turkish J. Cole head. It's okay, man. He's not big three. It's just big me. That's what it is. to a Betty yeah. about doing a remake. Huh? I talked to a Betty about doing a remake. Yeah. So what's the name? Mike Wilson. And that was for what? It was for a two-piece. Yeah, let me look. He also, like, here's why he's kind of good at what he's doing. He keeps it small. You know what I mean? Like, he's not going in and being like, I need a bucket. You know what I mean? Like, it's nothing over, like, fucking... It's always like a $10 max situation. I've yet to see him like hit. I've yet to see him ask for something that's like so much that it would, it would be, you know, it would be a little bit harder to, to, to go about it without, you know, looking for more proof. Smart. And what's that supposed to be in? A leg and a thigh or what? Yes. Okay. Original. Here's your tray. Can I get huh? French fries and a coleslaw? It only comes with one side. Oh, okay. What side do you want? Coke French French fries. Not even ketchup, bro. He doesn't even want ketchup. Like, that's... I've never seen the insides of one of these places. I usually just door dash. Like, okay, dude, shut up.
This isn't BK. There you go. This is KFC. Have a good day. Thank you. You're welcome. I think it's fine. I mean, I don't think this is that immoral. Like, I don't even know if there will be that big of a conversation surrounding this. I feel like it's fine. Who cares? You know, he's just getting, he's just getting his licks in. I don't even know who hates him. Like he, he's making it seem like people are out to get him or something. Like this is for all the haters. What state am I at? You know what I mean? He's not yelling at the workers. They don't, therefore, I don't give a flying shit. I don't even think the workers will give a sh uh, the. Why would the workers, why would the, would the workers get in trouble? We don't have time no more. We don't have time. If you live in the city of Dallas, Texas, if you live in the city of Dallas, Texas, there is a massacre that is about to happen on the city of Dallas. Y'all, we don't have time to be playing. We don't have time to be worried about any of this stuff. No, no. I was really concerned because I thought she was talking about some type of mass shooting that was going to happen in Dallas. Y'all, she was talking about the eclipse. She thinks that a massacre is going to occur somehow from this eclipse. Christians really need help. Like, as a Christian myself, we need help. That girl is going crazy. Oh, I mean, this is literally like, okay, Kaya, place. No, place. I feel like nationalist Christians in Dallas are insane. I, I just, I feel like we are we're devolving. This is like a worse situation overall than like being a medieval peasant. Y'all peeps are out here. Like the moon governs everything and people go crazy on full moons. A lady, I think it was in Florida was arrested for shooting at cars. Cause the eclipse told her to. Did you watch the speed dating follow-up? Wait, there was a follow-up? No, I did not. Hello, my love. Hi, Mom. I'm currently filming a YouTube video. Um, <laughs> and one of the challenge cards was call your mom and tell her about the other person. So I'm with, okay. I'm with Nick right now. Yeah. Good seeing you. All right, so. Drinks? Drinks. Yeah. What are you thinking? I think I might do tea and wine. Okay. Because I, cause I might as well do both, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Should we start with the tea? I met Nick a few weeks ago on a video. It was a Tinder swiping in real life video, which was an interesting experience. Okay. Oh, thank you. It's going to be really delicious. hot, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, these are the same people from yesterday. It's a follow-up chatter. I actually saw her walk in, and I immediately, like, my eye caught her, I guess. The lineup was going, and it was taking quite a while. And I was like, okay, I think that's the person I'm going to try and swipe on, and we'll see if we get lucky. We were asked to reshuffle at one point, 
and I kind of stayed where I was. <laughs> and he came to like the second spot and that was where I was at the second spot. And so I was just really hoping that the two people that were right in front of us would both go, because otherwise the whole thing would get messed up again. We'd be, one of us would be way at the back, one of us, so yeah, it was- Damn, she had her sights set. It actually did work out like that. We both swiped yes, and kind of throughout the video, we just talked, we went on a date, and that's basically how we met, was on a YouTube video, so kind of interesting. Okay, cheers. Cheers. I'm not gonna start with that, because it'll be too hot. That's okay, oh, let's see. Yeah, that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> You wanna grab Should it? I pull it? Yeah, you pull it, you start. Okay, this is a perception box question. Okay. Ooh, what do you imagine other people assume about you? Wow, that's a lot to unpack, because I feel like I think a lot about, I overthink, you know, about my, my own self-perception, and I usually assume kind of the worst, and mm. which is not always the best thing, yeah. you know? I always assume that people, I mean, I think people like me, but I don't always assume that people's perception of me is um, super high or like all the time. I, I just judge myself a lot, you know? What about hmm. you? Um, a lot of people kind of assume I'm just like happy all the yeah. time because I think I give off a pretty happy yeah, energy. Yeah, I would say and you I, do. You do yeah. give off a happy energy. Yeah, and like I am generally quite a happy, yeah. bubbly person, but I also have so many feelings, so. Um. Oh, I mean, I kind of, like, I'm kind of the same. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, you're so happy, dude. Like, you must never feel sad. If only sad. you knew what was going on You must on never up there. feel sad or anxious. And I'm like, really? That's what you think? Yeah. We got each other's number and we kind of were texting, but we didn't have a ton of free time. And we're like, we definitely need to hang out soon. So we eventually did, and we even, like, filmed a TikTok about it. Um, and posted it on her channel. We went to like the flea market and it was so, it was like so funny because we got recognized and I was like, what the f That's really weird. And then we were together last night because, <laughs> because it made sense locationally, okay, guys? <laughs> it just, it made sense locationally, okay? So, yeah. Next oh, question. God. A challenge oh. card already? Already. Oh no. <laughs> oh God, okay, all right. Together, pick a song to dance to. What if I made you dance to How would you feel about that? I could, I could dance to Do you have a song that you that know I really That I particularly like? enjoy? Let's see. Some girls, they want the moon. Handed down by this week. Bro, please stop watching this. This makes us depressed. Wonder what music they're gonna replace that with. It better be, but it's not gonna be. Sadly. Okay. That's okay. Another perception box question. <laughs> This isn't a funny question, but okay. what is your most consistent and greatest fear? <sighs> Sorry, Whoa. I didn't mean to laugh, it just... That's okay, that's all right. <laughs> I guess people call it FOMO, but like missing out on things. Like consistently, I'm like... That's a great consistent fear. Like honestly, it's like... Yeah. I don't like missing that I have out. this feeling and I've been trying to like work on it, you know, like mm -hmm. be like... Be like not worried about it. But you know, sure. obviously the feeling comes up and it's like, I don't want to miss out on things that maybe my friends are doing. Um, what about you? We need a drama couple, none of the safe shit. Do they, do they, oh, is it just the update on this couple? Oh, boo, I wanna know about like, I thought this was like, I thought this was gonna be fucking like some real shit. Hoscord loves us on. Thank you for the tank community. Give the subs.
Bro, you all right? Like, you're giving 30% right now? I'm just fucking tired. Bro, I've been live for eight hours, man. Where, are we doing Discord TikToks or was that yesterday? We did that yesterday. 79k likes for a fan cam of yours? Oh, yeah, I saw this one. Yeah, I'm tired, chat. You know what? I'm going to fucking, I'm going to call it a night at eight hours, half day today, half measures. I've fallen off. I'm washed. I apologize. Um, we'll do the Tim Pool on John Oliver tomorrow. Oh, man. All right. All right, everybody. Here we go. The most difficult job in the world, yet another day. All the shadows trickling in. Anyway, all right. Love you all. See you tomorrow. And bye bye. Peace. The starlight to the starlight to the dark just begun. There he is again. Her side is streaming. Her side is streaming. There he is again. Her side is streaming. Her side is streaming. Reviewing the P.O. Box. Uncle Uger's face. Sad in this gold chip prop, gray names take on breaks. Tiny Bernie Sanders, LGBTQ Air Force. The hole left at your fingertips, on a at your door. The crowded update the Young Turks online show. Three full fucking years of this, plenty more to go. Ninety day fiance talks of champagne, bourgeoisie. A Trump rally live reaction on mass riot at DC. There he is again, her son is streaming. Her son is streaming. There he is again, her son is streaming. On a streamer, reading live stream fail comments. Austin show chat bites, and all the ways the right wing pipeline can suck you in the line. JCS React Lord frame is broken. Cover blown, a full blown mass pandemic monster streaming at your home. Total radicalization coming out to fight. The system you were taught to trust in was broken the whole time. All these daily streams 
Whether big or whether small, I've helped me in so many find a meaning to it. Oh, oh.